All right, hey folks. So as the title of this video implies, in this run, I'm going to be doing a 1 to 60 Goblin Rogue, specifically Outlaw Rogue, speed run on a fresh World of Warcraft account. Now I'm using the term speed run loosely because I'm doing this with no heirlooms, no gold mailed over, literally nothing. I don't even have Chromie time unlocked in this account. And it's a brand new character. And just to show you, I'm not getting anything set up ahead of time. You're going to see me actually create it, right? So this is going to be still timed, so you can see how long it takes, but it is probably going to be slow. I might even need to do a bit of editing as we go on. But obviously, as my channel has gone on, I've done a bunch of different World of Warcraft speedruns. They've been usually very, like, well-prepared ahead of time. I'll have all my heirlooms set up, I will have a bunch of stuff mailed over, and this is going to be pretty much the complete opposite of that. You can see it's a, a fresh WoW account that doesn't even have Dragonflight. I've leveled up a few different characters here uh not gotten them to 60 because if you hit 60 you unlock chromie time and i don't want to do that but i've done a bunch of testing close to 60 basically to get a general idea of how the questing process is going to go and i will also not be hitting 60 in this run i'll be getting very close like basically a bar or two away from 60 at level 59 is where we'll be stopping because i still have more testing runs to do in the future so this is obviously going to be the Horde testing run, but I still need to do Alliance, and I will probably do at least one more run for Horde and Alliance uh, that will actually be posted online. Obviously, none of these runs are ever going to see YouTube. They were usually done while I was watching Netflix on a second monitor, so I have a lot of testing left to do, but I'll at least upload a few more. And those, once again, will probably be put up to a poll. If you did not see, this run was decided by a poll. I had one on my YouTube channel. It was an option between Shaman, Warlock, Mage, Priest, and Rogue, and Rogue 1. So here we are. I uh, have a lot to talk about, but the nice thing about this is I don't really need to do any setup beforehand, so we're just gonna enter world. Now, one major thing that I will say right now, obviously you'll get to see it as the run goes on, uh, to clear up a major misconception is that this run will not just be me doing BFA which is what a lot of people have said. I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying they don't really think it would be interesting to watch a fresh account speedrun. Uh, some people may not. Uh, oh yeah, there's there's a script that I need to run to unlock edit mode, and I'll be damned if I'm going to play this with the default crappy UI. World of Warcraft, so we're seeing this all in real time. I'll, I'll even start the timer here. Just include the time it takes me to figure out. Uh, Exiles Reach Edit Mode. There is a script, right? Uh, why is edit mode disabled? Yeah, here we go. You have to do slash run, show UI panel, edit mode, whatever. So I'm going to put this in slash say chat. Do that. And that'll open up edit mode. I can do that. And I think these bars are, they're good. Okay. So I should be fine at this point. Got my UI. I will never understand why Blizzard has edit mode disabled in Exile's Reach. It's like the thing that people interact with the game with, the user interface, you're not allowed to change in the starting zone. It is just a baffling design decision that uh, I, whew, uh, this company sometimes. Uh, but I think that is everything that I need, at least for now. There's probably more settings that later on I'll think of. And uh, when we get there, we'll get there. Uh, all right, so obviously going to be a very long run, so I'm going to have a lot to talk about. Uh, one thing I do want to quickly note, one of the reasons why Rogue was voted for, and one of the reasons why um, uh, I even put it on the poll in the first place, for this type of run, as mentioned, it's going to be slow. It's going to take a while. Uh, my usual time for these types of runs of like 1 to 60 would be somewhere around five hours, give or take, uh, with Darkman Fair, which I will be getting Darkman Fair, right? Because I'm going to be doing anything that a fresh account, like the one I'm on, can do. Uh, fresh accounts can access Darkman Fair. What the hell just happened to my bars? Why is my bar up there, Blizzard? What in the world? <laughs> I, I don't understand. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, uh... I, you know, if I had known that the UI was going to break like this, maybe I would have done a bit of testing ahead of time, but I did not anticipate this stuff happening. All right, we're doing it live. Um, hopefully, when I land on the shore, I can access edit mode again. 
Oh, now it's fixed. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I don't fully understand what's going on, but you know, it, it's working now. I also have, I have a Wowhead tab open in the background, which Wowhead, unfortunately, sometimes, what the hell? Xerath Mortis Puzzle Helper is preventing me from using my Goblin Racial. Oh boy. <laughs> Xerath Mortis Puzzle Helper. We're off to a great start. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Rogue is... Uh, I do want to give a disclaimer, because whenever I say, like, X class is bad or whatever, uh, a lot of mains of that class will jump on me and be like, no, it's amazing, you're just playing it wrong. When I say Rogue is bad for leveling, uh, I mean that in terms of, like, raw leveling speed and ability to pull a bunch of stuff and kill it really quickly, Rogue is generally regarded as the worst class. Um, I, I think it is pretty safe to say that Rogue overall across all specs is pretty bad. Like, I've heard mediocre things about most Warlock specs, but Affliction is actually quite good. So Affliction alone, like, if you want to level a Warlock, just play that, and it kind of solves your problem. And a lot of classes will have, like, a standout spec. Like, Shamans aren't amazing for leveling, but from what I've been told, Enhancement is pretty good, which is one of the reasons I wanted to try it. Uh, but the other specs, maybe not so much. Um, Priest, obviously, you have two healing specs, which aren't pretty good, and I would have said for a while that Shadow Priest was actually, uh, one of, if not the slowest specs to play. Let's see, Cheap Shot, stuns the target, requires stealth. Uh, sure, let's put that on H. Where is stealth? I want to put stealth on my bars. Trinkets, yes. Oh god. Okay, why? Well, yeah, let's let's disable that. What is that? Lots of add-ons that I forgot I had. Um I mean I guess that's Silver Dragon. Um probably. If it's not Silver Dragon, I'll find out what it is and I'll disable that too. Oh boy. Alright, get rid of that. And here we go. Warlord Brecca. Alright, so I need to get five meat from wildlife. It's been a hot minute since I've done Exile's Reach. Uh, at least without anything special. And I need to make sure that I'm actually equipping stuff I get, right? Because I, I don't have heirlooms. I don't have all that fancy stuff. Um, but yeah, so Shadow Priest is, I would say, was previously one of the worst leveling specs. I have been told by a lot of my Shadow Priest friends that with the Dragonflight changes, it's actually quite good now. I have not tested it myself, and I was going to test it, and then they said, oh, well, it's being changed again, which is something I had heard about, but I didn't realize that the changes were actually going to make it. We have to disable another add-on that I can hear. Uh, Jojo Monk is playing, even though I'm not playing on a monk. Uh, all my add-on settings... Uh, normally, I have this stuff set to, like, not start a new character, but that's on my main account, so uh, we're going to have to go through this one by one. Can I? I can't jump up that. All right. Uh, found a new piece of gear. How do I... I need to turn off these... Let's see... Would it be under General? Interface? Uh, disable Tutorials. Okay, there we go. Uh, equip this belt. And... Alright, that's it. So I can kill this stuff up here. Right. We're gonna be a little bit all over the place. Uh, a lot of times, when I start a run, I like to do all this preamble before actually beginning it. And I will sit there for like 15 minutes on the character select screen doing that. And then I'll spend like another 30 minutes mailing everything over. And then I get a bunch of comments that are like, Oh my god, why doesn't this guy start the actual speedrun already? Nobody wants to sit here and listen to you talk. Wow. And, you know, I figure I'll just do something different because this one I don't need to do any prep. I might as well just jump straight into the run and go over the uh, basis of the run as we go through it. And obviously the entire point of these speedruns is no editing, so I have to try to keep my thoughts somewhat coherent while actually getting the run done. Uh, and on that note, actually, we're, we're going to take a little bit of a, a side tangent because I just remembered something that I want to bitch about. You know what? And that if you're watching these runs, uh, you're going to have to listen to me rant and ramble for a few hours. That's kind of the entire point, right? And that is exactly the thing that I want to complain about right now. Because I, uh, on one of my speedruns recently, the Alliance World Record that I got, the Dark Iron Dwarf Monk one, at the start of the video, I said something to the effect of, like, I won't be talking for a little bit. Uh, what do I have to do? 
Oh, it wants me to use Eviscerate at max combo points. I see. Yeah, so at the start of that Alliance World Record, I said something to the effect of, like, I'm going to need to focus for the initial part of the run so I won't be uh, talking much. And a lot of people took that to mean, I guess, that I'm just not going to be talking at all for the entire run, when what I really meant is the opposite. Like, I am going to be talking for most of the run. That is the point of these runs. Uh, but while I am focusing on, you know, important stuff early on... Wait, now it wants me... Hold on. It said, you have at least three combo points, use Eviscerate. I had three combo points, I used Eviscerate. Okay, so... I guess now it wants me to use it at four combo points, and then maybe it's going to tell me to use it at five, I'm guessing. All right. Okay, sure. There we go. Maybe it explained that. Okay, yeah, it says use all five, right? See, I'm not reading the quest text. Um, I also haven't done this as rogue ever, which is something I'll get to. But yeah, the, the entire point of these runs, what I'm trying to say, is... Uh, I'm leveling through the stuff, I'm basically testing speedrunning things, and I'm rambling, because, look, if I just sat here in silence for however long it is, like in the case of my world record run, seven hours, in this case, god, it might even be ten hours, I don't know, I hope not, but it, it might be. Um, if I'm just sitting there in silence, just pressing buttons, killing shit, like, that would have to be the most boring video ever created. I don't understand why anybody would want to watch that. Maybe somebody's gonna say, I would watch you level silently for 10 hours, and I, I would say, why? Because, like, you can just do that, you know? I mean, the entire reason why I would like to think that these runs are enjoyable to most people, and to a lot of people I know they are, is because of the random stories and commentary I'll give regarding, like, you know, leveling the game, random bullshit that I was doing the other day, right? That's kind of the appeal from what I've gathered of my speedruns. On top of the fact that, you know, it's, uh... Let me put that on Y. On top of the fact that, obviously, the actual leveling efficiency stuff is useful. That's the reason I do it in this format, instead of, like, rambling while I do Mythic Plus Dungeons or something like that. Um, and I should probably be using Sinister Strike at least, like, three times before spending a combo point. My energy generation at the moment is going to be kind of shit, but... Uh, alright. That should be enough for an Eviscerate. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be talking a lot, is what I'm trying to say. And, um, you know, obviously, if you don't like that, you can just not watch the video, but for whatever reason, a lot of people choose to click on the video, say, I don't want to listen to a guy talk for ten hours while he levels, and then they, like, write that. You know, like, okay, buddy, then, then don't watch the video. I don't know why you're here, right? I, I I don't understand it. But you get a surprising, or at least I do, get a surprisingly large amount of comments like that. Like, I'm not saying it gets under my skin. Obviously, it does a little. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here ranting about it. Like, I can't pretend that it doesn't irk me when I see that pop up. And like, you know, in my head, I'm like, they just don't fucking watch it, right? But I at least wanted to get that out of the way, just in case you were randomly expecting me to uh, stay silent for... Uh, 10 hours. Just to be clear, that is not the case at all. This is going to be a very commentary-filled speedrun pretty much the entire way through. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Right, so Shadow Priest, I am planning on testing. Uh, I have heard it is good, but I am waiting until the rework in patch 10.1 to actually do it. Now, initially, I was going to do a run on PTR and upload that before the patch actually went live. Considering the fact that Patch 10.1 is going to be launching, launching words on May 2nd. I don't really know if I will actually have time to do that, because I have a lot of stuff that I need to do before then, which we'll get into. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is all the insane fucking scheduling I've been having to do to make sure that I get all my footage for upcoming Patch 10.1 videos, which has left me with very little time to sleep. Uh, but, yeah, I'm putting a lot of effort into that. I have raid guides plans, as usual. I have dungeon guides plans. Uh, my dungeon guides were... Oh, I missed Quillbore. Crap. Let me let's swap that. Uh, my dungeon guides were fairly well received in Shadowlands Season 4 and uh, Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And I also made one or two for Dragonflight that people really liked. So I wanted to do more, and fortunately, for people who have been following the channel for a while, you probably know that I ran out of time to do that. 
combination of like IRL stuff and just focusing on other videos. It ended up being like I create a bunch of leveling videos or I finish some of the dungeon guides. And I figured if I couldn't finish all the dungeon guides, I just wouldn't bother doing the rest of them at all. Uh, but for patch 10.1, I am going to have all of that stuff done. I will be doing extensive Mythic Plus testing. I will have a guide for every single one of the eight dungeons. I'll probably have, you know, a video going over all of the new affixes because there's a bunch this time. And yeah, uh, lots and lots of stuff. Uh, one of the other things, raid testing specifically, is something that I've been spending a lot of time doing. Or at least a lot of time planning. Obviously, raid testing on its own is only, you know, a few hours, right? Like today, um, time I'm recording this, it's Thursday the 6th at 11.45 p.m. Uh, so we had three hours of raid testing from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. today. And obviously that may not seem like a lot, but I have to coordinate it. So what I have to do is I kind of need to talk with my guildies and at least kind of plan out a strategy because you only have one hour for each boss. So if you, you can go into raid testing with no idea what you're doing, uh, but then you're going to be wasting a lot of time figuring out basic boss mechanics. So a lot of what we do beforehand is spend hours looking at the journal, kind of planning out, okay, this is how we think this mechanic's going to work. And we basically envision how we think the fight's going to go and then plan out like a strategy for our vision of the fight. And generally speaking, uh, that takes a decent amount of time. And then also uh, putting together the group, like I have a spreadsheet that I use to manage all of that stuff. And then, you know, hunting people down to make sure they show up and, you know, making sure we have 20 people for Mythic Testing because it's not easy to convince a bunch of people to set aside time on a Thursday afternoon to download the PTR and test out raid bosses that won't be out for a month. But it is something that I need to do to get footage. Uh, so it's a lot of effort. It, a lot, a lot of effort. And all that to say, uh, I'm not entirely sure if I will be able to do... Uh, the Shadow Priest run and other stuff before patch 10.1 comes out. It's something I definitely will be doing. It's like gonna happen. The only question is when. Uh, so uh, patch 10.1 videos, stuff that is relevant to the content, obviously comes first. So I think I can... Yeah, I just gotta wait two seconds. So like dungeon guides, obviously people are gonna need that by the time the patch comes out. So, you know that is top priority and then later on we can focus more on leveling content which is inherently a bit more evergreen this kind of stuff has a lot of staying power and isn't invalidated every time blizzard puts out a new patch which is nice and then i Ooh, bit of a lag spike there uh one thing that people have been watching the more recent runs will also know is that i've had a lot of issues with memory leaks and that has not gotten any better it is still just as bad now as it has been for the last few months. Um, so there is a chance at some point that my game will just kind of have a meltdown and I will have to restart it. Uh, it's been a recurring issue since Dragonflight. It is specific to World of Warcraft. Uh, please do not leave a comment telling me to try some technical fix that you are absolutely convinced is going to solve the problem. And, it, you know, totally, that's what will fix it. it you know, it's definitely your computer. Uh, it's not World of Warcraft. Trust me when I say I've tried everything. It is World of Warcraft. Other people have the issue. There is just a, uh, there is a lot of optimization problems with Dragonflight. And as far as I can tell, there is no consistent fix. So until Blizzard figures out what's wrong on their end and manages to patch the game. Uh, yeah, like you can see here, there's this little like black texture around. There's a lot of little visual bugs like that that have happened ever since the expansion. And there isn't a whole lot I can do about it. Uh, just wanted Mother, to give that one. I tried to stop the ogres on my own. Oh yeah, and here we go, the audio. This is this has been an issue forever. Uh, for whatever reason, some of the... I'm not even going to try to talk. It's just, I can't even hear myself think over this audio. But when we stand, unite it. Mm -hmm. Now, tell oh, me wow. what's happened here. Okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, some of the audio files on the Forbidden Reach, or not Forbidden Reach, Exiles Reach, keep getting them confused, uh, just completely ignore your volume settings, and they just play at max volume regardless of what your slider is set to. Don't understand it, but it has been like that forever. So that is not new. That is a, ever since it got added, I think Exiles Reach was Shadowlands, right? Oh, this is the rogue quest. Okay, I've never done the rogue quest. Expedition. Oh, nice. So you do it alongside this one. That's actually quite good. Alright. 
Uh, but yes, yeah, so as far as Rogue goes, uh, my history with Rogue is basically non-existent. One of the other reasons why I think a lot of my viewers wanted me to play Rogue, in addition to the fact that I've said before... Westward Bound, oh, I have to talk to her. Okay, lovely. Why is this so loud? Yeah, I guess that spell effect is also ignoring volume settings. Alright. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, in addition to Rogue being not an amazing leveling spec, it's also... I think it might actually be my least played class in the entire game. Or I said leveling spec, you know what I mean. Leveling class. Uh, Rogue is probably the class that I have played the least out of every class in WoW. Uh, actually, I take that back. Warlock is probably still the one that I played the least, although I have played it a little bit more ever since uh, Dragonflight Prepatch, when it was voted. Uh, because at the time I had said I'd never played a Warlock, uh, a lot of people voted for that because they wanted to see me play Warlock. And I actually quite liked Affliction. I thought it was significantly better for leveling than I had initially expected. And I haven't played it a ton since then, but I've at least messed around with it a little bit. So... I have definitely played Warlock way more in Dragonflight uh, than I have in any other expansion, but Rogue is probably still the one I played the least. Uh, I haven't played Shadow Priest much at all, but I have played Discipline uh, back in Wad. I played, I didn't main it or anything, but I had a Disc Priest alt that I played for like challenge mode dungeons once or twice. I did like a normal raid or two on it. It really like not super serious alt at all. But I have at least played a Priest a decent amount compared to Rogue. Whereas, I think Rogue I leveled once back in... Uh, I want to say Legion. And I got it to max level, but I was like boosted by my friends halfway through because I just could not bear to finish it. And then I never touched it again. So I have basically no experience actually playing a Rogue either while leveling or even at max level. I'm not super familiar with it at all, so that is basically an additional challenge for me on top of the fact that I'm going to have no heirlooms, no consumables, no chromie time, etc. Uh, I do have at least one trick up my sleeve, though. Also, the, this mob respawn timer is long, man. There we go. Um, yeah, I have one trick up my sleeve. That is, uh, I am friends with almost every single one of the moderators on the Rogue Discord. So, that at least helped because I'm able to be sure that I got like the most accurate information. Um, specifically Kojiyama, uh, one of the mods, he is an officer in my guild, or at least he was up until a week or so ago. Uh, he is, uh, I think, taking a break from WoW in general. At least he stopped raiding for now, which is unfortunate because, you know, I love Koji, awesome dude. But I shot him a message before I did this run, and I'm like, hey Koji, this is what I have, like, you know, as far as information for my rogue run so far, this is like the talent build I'm, pl I'm planning on using. What pointers can you give me for Outlaw? Like, what would you suggest? And, you know, he gave me, like, pointers on, like, these are the PvP talents I'd recommend. These are the talents that you should prioritize while leveling up. Because one of the things that a lot of people overlook while leveling when making guides is which talents do you prioritize? I've seen a lot of people just link level 70 builds and say, this is a leveling build. But that tells you nothing. It doesn't tell you which talents you should pick, like in which order. Like a big thing when I did my monk leveling guide is I talked about specifically what the order in, you, in which you pick the talents are, because that is honestly more impactful. Like which ones are really important? Which ones do you prioritize? So that's something I wanted to know. Uh, obviously I can't open the talent window now, but when I do get it, I will give a quick overview of what Koji suggested. Oh shit, apparently I was supposed to... Oh no, the Expedition's Rogue is found over there. It's not in the cave. Alright, I'll do that later on. Can I do that later on while I do the bear quest? Or should I just do that now? Might as well just do that now. Um, yeah, so... While I may not have any personal experience with Rogue, I have information from some of the best rogues in the game on how I should be playing it. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be amazing at playing it. I will probably make a shit ton of mistakes playing rogue because I am still figuring it out as I go. But I at least, I at least have been told the basics of what I should be doing. Oh my goodness, this guy fucks. Um, I don't think I can kill this guy. 
Am I missing any abilities? I don't think so. I get Crimson Vial at level 8, which I can maybe use to... Yeah. Oh, I unlocked Ambush. I think I'm dead here, actually. I cannot kite this guy. Unless he leashes Trampling Charge. Come on, leash, please. Leash, leash, leash. Don't auto-attack me. Oh, I'm dead. Come on. Come on. Ah! It leashed. Oh, thank God. I barely escaped death. This isn't a permadeath run. God, that I would hate that if I had to do this and then make sure I don't die. If I enter stealth... Okay, it does... Right. It does give me a separate action bar. So ambush is there. I just... I would need to start with ambush. So I would want to start with ambush, get two combo points, then... Probably sinister strike, sinister strike... And eviscerate? Probably? Um... But I absolutely need... I think I could get up to level 10, so I would want to wait to do that later on when I have Crimson Vial and Slice and Dice. Definitely Crimson Vial, because right now, with no actual source of healing, it's going to be kind of impossible for me to do that. I'll at least buy 5 Tough Jerky. We actually already get 1 gold. It's actually not too bad. Might as well buy 10 Tough Jerky. I will throw this over there. And then we will just go ahead and do other stuff. Maybe I could even convince this troll priest to help me out or something. Uh, I am technically speaking not banning myself from interacting with other players. It's not something I really do in my normal runs, because I have no reason to. Because, like, monks can do any quest in the game solo. But, hey, if I see somebody else doing, like, Yetimus the Yeti Lord later on, I'm absolutely going to ask. and see. Uh, but over here oh this quest will be good to do right before i fight the bear because if i do this before i fight the bear i can get uh the speed boost actually i think it lasts like 10 minutes right so what's the reward light speed 10 minutes yeah i can probably get done with this little sub zone and then get back here within 10 minutes oh but yeah uh anyways speaking of raid testing today I, I'm such a fucking idiot. I, um, so like I said, I had all this stuff that I needed to plan out and needed to get ready for raid testing. It's a lot of effort. Uh, but all that to say, I was up pretty late last night getting stuff set up. And then I was also working on, I have a, a leveling challenge run format that I'm working on. Cause like I've been kind of burnt out on traditional leveling speed runs. I've done so many of them. They're kind of boring at this point. So I want to do something that's, A, more interesting to watch from, like, a regular viewer perspective, and B, more interesting to run, because at the moment, I just cannot bring myself to do leveling. Um, it's just too standardized. I'm, I thought about just, like, doing random zones, but I think that's just would also be kind of boring. There needs to be something else to spice it up, like a little challenge. So I have a very intricate challenge run format that I am in the process of working on, and I've been teasing it for a while. And it uh, still won't be done for probably a few months, especially with the aggressive release schedule Blizzard has been putting forward. But I am working on it, right? And last night I spent like five hours and I, I got barely any sleep uh, setting up like the framework for it. Like um, uh, there's a lot of like rules that I want to do, but one of the things that's difficult about making a challenge run format, because like the entire idea of it is I want it to be something that I can do and have fun with, and it has like a lot of depth and complexity. So other people like me who enjoy that kind of stuff will have fun with it and will be able to do the run and enjoy it. But I also want it to be something that's inherently like easy to pick up and understand. And any random person could technically speaking uh, the, the plan eventually would be to have it be an add-on. I'm planning on making an add-on to basically guide you. It's like, you know, a lot of people use leveling add-ons that tell you, like, the fastest zones to do, and I am working on one for that as well. That is something I've said I want to have made for a while now. It's a, probably the most requested thing from anybody that watches my channel. Um, so that is in the works, right? Uh, but in addition to that, I think it would be cool to have maybe in that same add-on, I could have like my leveling add-on support like the regular route. And then I could also have a challenge run mode where it has like, you know, all of this challenge run stuff coded into it. 
uh, basically like modifiers, effectively think like Mythic Plus, but leveling um, is kind of like one of the, the, the core principles I'm approaching it from. I want there to be like a lot of modifiers, but unlike, you know, Blizzard's version of Mythic Plus, which don't even get me started on these new affixes like entangling and all that fucking garbage. Uh, oh, who pinged me in my Discord? Uh, do I have to go through the entire Order Hall questline? I'm not sure. Avent, Unlocked, Minari, Training, Amulet, Sense Legion. So my memory is fuzzy. Uh, one thing that, you know, uh, so many people have been asking me, like, how to unlock the Minari Training Amulet and stuff. I probably will make a video on that at some point, like, how to unlock every single special heirloom, at least. Obviously, most of them you just buy from a vendor, but specifically Minari Training Amulet. I've already done Dread Pirate Ring, actually, so I have that one covered. Uh, I have a, a detailed guide on the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza, so that's one heirloom down, which, you know, that... Uh, probably next to the Minari Training Amulet was the one that most people asked about. And actually, interestingly enough, uh, I have, you can notice I have one heirloom and it's Dread Pirate Ring <laughs> on this account. Uh, I actually made a video about that about a month ago. On this fresh account, I leveled a character up to 40 and on that level 40 character, I won the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza and got Minari Training Amulet, or uh, Dread Pirate Ring, which was pretty cool. Actually, I enjoyed doing that. All right, let me... Yeah, Rogue... Rogue really is not great to start off with, huh? This is... It doesn't help that the textures are fucked, so I couldn't see the swirly effect, because for whatever reason, this, like, necromantic stuff covers the ground. That's, uh, not great. But as long as I keep it here, I'll be able to see it. And then I should be able to kill this. All right. And I can go hands in these quests. So I have... I will have Crimson Vial, which is a consistent source of healing. I have five healing potions and possibly gear upgrades from these quests. I can't remember. Uh, but that's a level up, right? Okay, there's Crimson Vial. Um, I do want this on each area looting. You unlock that at level eight? Actually, didn't know that. Okay. Let's see. If I'm lucky, somebody else will be trying to kill that when I get there. Uh, Rogue's Ends. Ooh. I should probably complete that quest first before anything else, because that'll get me access to poisons. So I can do my Goblin Racial. Okay. And then I want to make sure I have Rocket Barrage up in time. With this speed buff, I should be able to out-kite Killclaw the Terrible. So I think that'll help. Talk to you. How do I make this poison? Hemlock. Alright. Oh yeah, what I was saying though. Uh, yeah, so I was working a lot on that, uh... The leveling thing, and I ended up oversleeping. I set an alarm for... I have to go kill an ogre. All right. Apply the poison to my weapon. That there. I assume I have to do it to both daggers? Or no, it's a buff. Okay. Uh, and this gets me experience. That should get me to level 9. There's Gut Grip the Tough. Heals most damage instantly, can only be removed with instant poison. So I... Oh, I see. So once I attack him, it removes the buff, and then I can attack him normally. Okay. I need to do this quickly while I still have the buff, though. So, come on. Eviscerate, and... There we go. Now, what I'm hoping is that as I get... Uh, higher up in levels, Rogue will start scaling better, because right now it definitely does feel really weak. Okay, poisons. I can actually just... Can't... There we go. Okay. Uh... And... Oh, the turn-in point is back there. Shit. But I get... I get Slice and Dice, which I will probably need. 
Increases attack speed by 50%. Yeah. I think I'll need Slice and Dice. I'm not sure how good it'll be at low levels, but it's probably still worth using. And then it'll take me up there. Okay. Now, do I have any other items that I can use? Uh, I don't think so. So, time to fight this bear. So, Slice and Dice I'll put on T. And I'm going to... Go into stealth. Oh, oh, no, no, no. And there we go. Use my rocket barrage. Should be good with slice and ice right now. Dodge trampling charge. Crimson vial. Oh, that heals for, like, nothing. Okay. Uh, Crimson Vial is terrible at low levels. Should be fine. My energy regen a little bit. Let's kite this guy. Come on. All right, full energy. And... Stodge. All right. Got it. Pain in the ass, but the bear is dead. Do I even get anything good off that? That probably was not worth the effort, by the way. I just wanted to see if I could do it, considering he whooped my ass the first time I tried. So... You know, at that point, it was, you know, it was a challenge, right? I had to beat that bear just to assert dominance. Uh, but we got it. Huh. All right. Yeah, we're going to... There's going to be a bit of a learning curve here. Uh, I'm sure I could have played that better. I'm sure that was not, like, peak rogue gameplay. So, you know, I, I know. All rogue mains watching this are going to be, like, writhing in pain watching me fail at this. But um, that's part of the fun, right? It's kind of, I guess, a test to see how fast I can pick it up and how well I can grasp Rogue in order to uh, not be here for the next 10 hours. That would be, that'd be nice. Uh, Mogget. Let's throw a Mogget over there. Throw that over there. MDT. Simulation Craft. I want... That's how I usually have it set up. And... There we go. Oh, I can't use the goblin racial. Okay. Alright. I have to type slash wave. Okay, there we go. Oh. But yeah, so, um, what else can I talk about while we get through this? I, I have a lot of stuff that, you know, I have a lot of stories that I want to tell, uh, as we get into things, or at least a decent amount of stories. I don't know if, like, I, I would say a lot, but it, a decent amount of stories that I have uh, when we're in Silver Pine Hills, Brad, because that's how the run's going to go. I will be doing Silver Pine Forest. I will be doing Hillsbred Foothills. Uh, they are, I mean, what can I say? They're good zones, and you don't need crummy time to do it, which I think is a major misconception that a lot of people have. So I'll be clearing that up. Uh, the interesting part of this run will be when I get to level 40. When I get to level 40, I will have to do BFA. So, a lot of people are partially correct in that at some point, eventually, uh, you are required to do BFA as, and I say required loosely, you can technically get around it, um, but you are, in essence, required to do BFA when leveling on a fresh account at some point, just because all of the other zones stop scaling. Uh, but you can do... Uh, Cata revamp zones up to 30. You can do wad zones up to 40. And then at level 40, you kind of are forced into BFA. Uh, so the trick will be finding the fastest route through BFA. Getting that done efficiently. But, you know. It's, uh... It's gonna... It, it's gonna take time. I don't think. Okay. 
One thing I'm trying to plan ahead is how I want to handle gear. I'm not going to forbid myself from using the auction house. That's one thing uh, a lot of people have asked me to do just a no consumable run, like at all. Um, like, don't use gun shoes, don't use goblin gliders, and I'm going to be, but I will have to afford it all on my own. Like, any items that I buy, any gold that I spend in this run, I will have to earn on this character. It is, in essence, a fresh account run. That said, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, there's absolutely no reason to just not use gun shoes or goblin gliders just on principle, because, you know, oh, you have to spend gold on it. It's not hard. You'll see me buy more than enough for this run with just the gold that I make while leveling. I might not be able to buy uh, Master Riding, because that's 5,000 gold, and that can be a little bit difficult to reach at low levels, but you'll make enough uh, for other stuff, right? And then by the time you reach Dragonflight, you don't even need Master Riding anyways, because you get Dragon Riding, so it's kind of a moot point. Um, but yeah, the idea of, like, a no-consumable run, like, a lot of people think it's, like, a real gotcha. They think they're, like, you know, really clever, saying, like, now do it without Goblin Gliders. And it's like, I mean, I can, but it doesn't change anything. <laughs> like, there's fundamentally no difference between a run that has Gun Shoes and Goblin Gliders and a run that does. It's just, one, at certain points, you will move slightly faster. They are a really nice convenience item. They are piss-easy to acquire. Why would you not use them? It's just literally no logic to it. Uh, now, what a lot of people will say is don't use all of the fancy potions and stuff, and I've already done a lot of those runs. Where, you know, I only use all of the consumables, all of, like, the fancy potions and whatnot for the actual, like, world record speedruns. For, you know, casual leveling runs, which I've done plenty of times, uh, the most recent, like, casual leveling run I did... Uh, if you don't include Dragonflight, because, you know, Dragonflight, I did a lot of, like, 60 to 70 runs, but, you know, didn't actually include uh, the process before that. But if we're talking just, like, 10 to 60 runs, I think the Warlock one might be the most recent, and it's should still be up on my channel. I don't think I unlisted it or anything, because it's actually, it still gets a decent amount of use to this day, despite being a completely generic 10 to 60 run. Maybe it's, you know, because I haven't played a Warlock, a lot of people really wanted to see me play it. I don't know why that one has been doing well over time. Uh, but yeah, still uh, for, at this point, like a half a year old video. Has Dragonflight been out that long? It fucking has, man. I guess it hasn't been out that long, but like, since I've started doing beta coverage when I did that run, it, it's been that long. Uh, but yeah, like in that run, I I basically mailed over basic enchanted heirlooms, I mailed over basic like gun shoes, goblin gliders, draft of 10 lands and stuff like that, and that's it. Uh, you don't need all of the fancy stuff, but there is a lot of fancy stuff that is very easy to get, so why not? So I'll be getting that. Uh, a lot of people have this like obsession with kneecapping themselves while leveling, and I really, I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand the appeal of just making something more tedious for the sake of making it more tedious. Like, uh, the reason I'm doing this, right, is not because this is like, oh, it's hard and it makes my life more difficult and my leveling process more difficult and therefore it's more enjoyable. Like, no, I guarantee you I'm going to have way less fun doing this particular run at least the gameplay element of it. I usually like talking and telling stories, so that's usually like a, a self-entertaining way enough for me to do these things to justify it. I like talking, what can I say? Otherwise, you know, you can't really be able to talk for 10 hours straight without at least uh, liking talking to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, so I, I will probably not care too much doing this, but if we're gonna say like do i enjoy this more than the regular like actual speedruns i absolutely enjoy the actual speedruns more this is going to be just more tedious for the sake of being more tedious is that good no it's you know it, it is exactly what it is it's more tedious uh a lot of people think that's good a lot of people think that like you know that makes the game more fun and i i just simply disagree with that uh i can get rid of that and then i need to do Dark Maul Citadel. Right. Um. Yeah, so... Oh my god, the volume on that is not... Okay, that also ignores audio sliders, good to know. 
Uh, yeah. So the reason I'm doing this, to be clear, is not because, like, you know, people ask me to, or it's not just because people ask me to do it. It's not just because people are like, I want to see you do this while leveling. So, like I said, a lot of people will say, now do it without consumables, and it's like, no, fuck you, I'm not going to do that. Because there's absolutely no reason to. There is no situation in which running without consumables is, like, a good idea, or basic consumables at least. I would recommend every single player in the entire game, fresh account or not, do it, as I will show. Uh, so there's no reason why I would do that. The reason why I'm doing this run in particular, despite it being more challenging, is because it actually serves a practical purpose. This isn't just a speed run for, you know, fun entertainment value. It's a speed run to inevitably write a guide. Uh, the entire point is to basically make a route that doesn't use crummy time, because one of the questions I get asked the most by new players is like, how do I follow your route without having access to crummy time? Because it inherently does require it. Now, you can still do a modified version of it, which is what I will show here, but that's not easy to figure out as a new player. So what a, new, a lot of new players do is they check my route, they get frustrated because Blizzard doesn't let them do it, which, you know, uh, sucks. I don't know why Blizzard disables Chromie Time. It's not like BFA is a good leveling experience. It's absolutely atrocious. Um, and it, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, it's... Uh, yeah, a lot of new players will just get frustrated and do BFA, and, you know, many of them will quit the game. And uh, I have a long rant later on. Uh, actually, I'll probably do that rant soon, you know, because it, it segues well, about, you know, my sister, uh, who is getting into MMOs for the first time for real. And she's actually now enjoying it, but hasn't been enjoying WoW specifically uh, because of how terrible the new player experience is. And as somebody who makes guides primarily for new players, it's insanely frustrating seeing all of the things that, you know, my sister gets frustrated with that I know that, like, Blizzard could do this better, but they just don't, and they do a terrible job. And then, like, seeing how other MMOs do it and seeing how my sister's like, wow, this is so awesome, and she's actually enjoying other games <laughs> because their new player experience is really well designed. And then World of Warcraft, while I do like this game, she's like, oh, this is so frustrating. And I'm like, I know... Uh, I, I wish that it wasn't, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Blizzard has designed a lot of their new player systems to be just insanely difficult to get to. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll discuss why I think that and uh, specific examples. Um, Chromie Time, though, is a, a big one, and that is the entire reason why I'm doing this. And th the final thing I want to say on that note is uh, for my challenge run format for leveling, because I know some people may be confused why I'm saying I don't think that, uh, you know, basically imposing random challenges on yourself while leveling is interesting. And I've been talking all this time about how I want to do a fun challenge thing. Uh, my challenge run format, one of the reasons I've been spending so much time on it, and it's going to take me a while to make, is the entire challenge of building it is making sure that it is fun and not just like a kneecapping system. Uh, the entire idea of, like, a good challenge run format and something that is enjoyable to play, and honestly, the entire idea of a good challenge in general is something that is hard, right? It, it, you know, it makes something more difficult to achieve, but at the same time, there is a sense of, you know, satisfaction and a more fun, I, I don't know, element gained from doing it. So I, I don't want to, like, fully explain um, what it is about my format that I think will make it so much fun to run but I do think it will be really fucking fun to run. And I, like, I showed uh, my current, uh, I guess it is kind of like a game design doc, because I am effectively building a, a mini game within World of Warcraft. At this point, I've put so much effort into it, it's effectively going to be a game within a game. It's not just like a basic set of rules that you have to follow. It, it is effectively its own game that will run in and out on within World of Warcraft is the plan I have for it. And I have shown, like, parts of my design document to my friends and guildies, and they are like, holy shit, this looks amazing. You're actually going to build this? Like, that sounds really fun. And, you know, I want to make sure I do it justice, and I want to make sure I actually spend the time necessary to get this working. But the entire point of what I'm trying to do is not apply random modifiers to myself just to make it more difficult. I'm not going to be... Like, one of the early ideas that I remember I was thinking about when I was thinking from the principle of, like, you know, um, I want to make it like Mythic Plus, 
is I was like, well, I could have things that like impact your character. I could make basically make it where it's like for the next five levels, you can't use like the W key or something and you can only use like A and D. And then I thought about it and I'm like, well, that's exactly why people hate Mythic Plus. Why would I replicate in my own mini game the exact design choices that make people hate like most modern World of Warcraft content? Because the entire problem with things like entangling and, and fucking incorporeal all the new data mine 10.1 affixes is they're just inherently designed to punish you and offer nothing fun or interactive the reason why people liked seasonal affixes like encrypted or shrouded is because it gave you ways to interact with it like sure the dreadlords were hard and shrouded but it felt really fun going around hunting these dreadlords and like when you killed them you got like a bonus and I remember my friends would always like try to plan out these like all Dreadlord routes and we would go way over percent, but we would get all of the Dreadlords and that was just really fun for them. And encrypted, it was really fun being able to choose like which ad do you want to fight to get the bonus. And, you know, we I would build a, a talent setup that goes for like maximum cooldown stuff so that when I get Ur, I'm just firing off all these like really powerful cooldowns. And there were a lot of fun things you could do with that. And it's like, that is actually an engaging affix, an engaging thing that you have to plan around. And it's like, sure, there is an extra challenge there. It makes it harder. But when you get it to work, when you get that benefit, it, it's satisfying and you feel happy, I guess. You feel like you earned that, you know, that bonus or something. Can I, uh, I think technically speaking, if I were to disable Leatrix Plus, I can, um, so I can do this. I could skip this. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be doing the intro quest line because if it is your very first character, you cannot skip this. It even says choose a time walking campaign. I don't think I can, which is interesting. Ooh. I'm almost tempted to select this option just because it says choose a time walking campaign, but I know for a fact that I cannot do that. But like, if I were to pick that, would it let me? I... Because I even checked before doing this run. I'm pretty sure that is just, like, placeholder text that Blizzard didn't really consider. That, like, you can't actually... Maybe that is why people are confused. Because I've actually had a lot of new players tell me that they cannot choose a time-walking campaign. And... I've never referred to it as that. Uh, I, even Chromie Time... Ex like, Chromie Time Expansion is generally, like, the, you know, player way that people describe it or whatever... I don't really hear anybody calling it time walking expansion or campaign or whatever, other than, I guess, this in game description. One second. I'm going to check Chromie just to make sure I'm not crazy. Obviously, even if for whatever reason my account has Chromie time enabled, that doesn't change the run fundamentally. If that happens, I just don't use Chromie time. You know, I have that option. The fact that it exists fundamentally wouldn't change much. Uh, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid if you're asked, okay, so it, it, the placeholder text does say that I need to go on a tour of the city first, which implies that even if I don't skip it and I do actually take the tour of the city, it will, um, let me use it. I'm pretty sure that is not true. I'm pretty sure it'll come back and it'll be like, uh, you can't talk to me yet or something like that. Not entirely sure though. I guess we'll see. Ah, uh, anyways. Um, yeah, so basically the, the idea that I have for what I'm actually going to be doing uh, with my challenge run format is I've said the things that I, I think I've officially said, right, is you're going to be fighting random elites at certain points. So uh, I've talked about it in my Discord that uh, I've gone ahead and tested a bunch of like random elites out in the world. And yes, Fel Reaver will be one of them. So one of the challenges of uh, the leveling thing is at certain levels, I have to, or do I specifically need to ask this about the stable master? Stable master. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And then speak with Quark Fizzle Pop. Do this. Head to the stables. Uh, yeah. Uh, like at levels 25, 40, and 55, you're going to have to do a quote unquote boss fight is what I, I'm going with, where you will get randomly assigned. Uh, I'll have a pool of elites to pick from. Um, so let's say, I, I haven't decided on it yet. In fact, the entire thing I mentioned about my Discord is 
in one of the channels on my Discord, which if you don't have the invite link or if you're not in it, it's in the video description below. Uh, but in one of the channels, specifically challenge run stuff, I have a pinned comment discussing all of the elites that I am considering using for so far I've only planned out the 25 uh, boss. And Fel Reaver will not be a level 25 boss. It will be one of the options for the level 40 boss. An example of something that will absolutely be a level 25 boss fight is Yetimus the Yeti Lord, right? Uh, and in fact, he was what inspired it. Because Yetimus is notorious for being like the hardest quest in my entire speedrunning route. And a lot of players struggle with that. So the idea is, okay, well, uh, how can I make people fight more things like Yetimus while leveling up? Because one of the things that a lot of people like to figure out is like, what's the best way to kill Yetimus and stuff like that? It's, in my opinion, one of the most fun parts about the speedrunning route when you finally get to fight him, making sure your build is good enough to actually kill him without getting your ass beat. So finding other mobs like Yetimus while leveling up that you could use as like little mini boss fights was one of my goals. I thought that would be really cool. So I have a list of them in my Discord. Uh, Yetimus is one of them. A uh, Fel Reaver will be one of the level 40 options. I might have Storm Giant, uh, which is the Fel Reaver of Northrend as another level 40 option. I'm considering I, I'm considering it. I feel like they might be too similar, which, oh yeah, Quirk Fizzlepop. Oh no. Was I supposed to escort him? I might just abandon this quest. This is toxic. <laughs> If you actually need to literally walk side by side with him the entire way, that is just such horseshit quest design. I think that actually is what it is. Uh, I don't know if I can actually skip it at this point, though, so I might just need to do this. God. <sighs> the new player quests are really bad. And the nice thing is, I can actually say definitively that these do not help new players, right? Because, or at least most new players... Uh, having recently helped my sister play through World of Warcraft, this entire starting process, uh, she was confused as hell the entire time. Like, what new player is going to think I need to walk in step with Quirk Fizzlepop all the way when it literally gives me a map marker directing, directing me exactly to where the stables are? It's nonsensical. I, it just, it's a garbage design for this entire new player experience. It is ridiculously confusing, and it just, it, it is not good. Uh, I do not know what they were thinking with this. Uh, I've heard some people say that they think the WoW new player experience is, like, good. And, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, compared to what it used to be, WoW's new player experience used to be really bad. But compared to, like, Final Fantasy, it is night and day how good their new player experience is. This is just... Whew. Oh, I have to walk 600 yards on foot. Love it. All right. Um... Let's see what can I? I want to make sure that this these pop ups stop. I also do have a handful of mounts. Obviously, I unlocked High Mountain Tarin on this character. Yep, you have to walk right next to him all the way. Oh, and he RP walks. Oh, fun. Okay, no, now now he's actually going. Great. Ah, anyways, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much about what my plans are for, um, what's it called, for the, the leveling run. Obviously, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but I feel like the the boss fights are like a fun way of adding challenge, right? You know, it's, it's a way of, you, you have this added difficulty, right? But it's not just like tedium. It's not just like, you know, your ability to play the game is harder. You're taking on these difficult fights where the entire idea is I want to make sure each one has unique mechanics and one of the main things that I want to do is get people to explore the world more. So a lot of complaints that people will have about my speedruns are that they utilize only a small slice of the leveling process which inherently it's the fastest zones what do you expect uh, but I want to I want to not only push players to do other zones outside of the ones that are the fastest, but I want to incentivize players to do those. And that's the kind of thing where, like, as a game designer, I need to think about what can I do to make somebody willingly pick a slow zone over a fast zone? And I can't modify anything within the game, right? I can't make a zone faster. I can't make the quests give more experience. I can't, you know, make it so while you're in this zone, you do increased damage. But what I can do is I can make, like, esoteric game mechanics on the back end, something like, for instance, uh, 
well, I should say, for starters, while you level up, you will not start with heirlooms in this format, right? Um, with Within my challenge run format, the current plan is for you to start with nothing but an heirloom weapon and like a little bit of gold, probably like a thousand gold to start off with, which may not sound like a lot, but when you think about how many things you need to uh, buy in the traditional leveling speed run anyways, you also won't be able to use the auction house, so it's not like you can do that. Um, but you would start with a thousand gold, which would effectively serve as like, you know, an in-game currency that you can use within like uh, in-game shops. When, when I say in-game shops, I mean in add-on shops. I would basically, like, let's say I would create my own um, shop interface, right, within uh, the add-on that would allow you to buy, let's say, a goblin glider. And I could basically manually set within that add-on the price of a goblin glider to be five gold or something like that. Now, obviously, you would have to buy all of this on your own. So the idea is, uh, before I start the challenge run, I'm probably going to, like, make a, a guild bank and stock that guild bank up with, like, a million consumables and whatever and other things that I could potentially use within the run. And then I will not use any of that at the start. But then let's say I want to buy Goblin Gliders. Then using the shop interface within the add-on, I purchase a Goblin Glider, and then I can open up a guild bank, pull Goblin Gliders out of the guild bank, and add it to my inventory. So... I would effectively be creating like a closed economy loop within the leveling process and um, gold wouldn't be like something that you would, uh, I don't fucking know. It wouldn't be something that you would be using to buy stuff off the auction house. You would be using it to buy like fixed in-game currency things. Uh, all in all, I, I think that would be more interesting, right? And it would allow me to like judge items not necessarily based on their rarity, right? Like... Um, Oh yeah, I have to activate a specialization. Um, so, for example, right, Cracked Radinax Control Gems, if I wanted to actually buy one, would cost me like thousands of gold. But it's not actually that useful. But let's say somebody wanted to use it for fun, um, and it was offered by an in-game store while they were using my challenge run format, they could buy it for 100 gold or something like that. Uh, and obviously, you know, if they if somebody were to do this on their own, they would have to... Uh, download the add-on, they would have to buy all the items ahead of time, stock up their guild bank. But the entire idea is it it is designed to be, and there's a lot of other things that I don't want to reveal yet, uh, but there's a lot of things that are designed to be, you know, you're, you're not doing this to have an efficient leveling experience. You're doing it to have a fun leveling experience. Uh, there's a lot of things that, um, okay, I don't need to speak to Quirk Fizzlepop. Like, you know, you're not getting a lot of experience by fighting like the Fel, or trying to solo the Fel Reaver, uh, at level 40, uh, you're doing that specifically because, you know, you want to. So we got Goblin Trike, put that on Control 6. Um, and there are other things, but the idea would be uh, something where, uh, since I mentioned you start off with only one heirloom, right? An, an heirloom weapon, I would have ways throughout the run for you to earn heirlooms. Right, so I can open up my heirloom window, and at any time, right, I can click Dread Pirate Ring, and I can add it to my inventory, and I can equip it. Um, but in this challenge run format, you wouldn't start with it. But let's say I defeat the Fell Reaver, I solo him, then I would gain a special reward. And let's say the Fell Reaver dropped, quote unquote, two heirlooms or something like that, and then I could equip those two heirlooms, and now my character has become stronger. Um, now, if you're familiar with a certain type of game genre, you may understand where I'm going with this whole process and where my head might be at for uh, future challenges that I may not be revealing right now. But there is a certain type of theme that I am going with for this type of format uh, for how I want the, um, the general gameplay and character progression to play out while leveling. And I think that if I manage to nail the design, and I managed to think of, like, enough fun challenges that are actually fun and engaging and not, you know, bullshit and tedious like a lot of other things in World of Warcraft. I think it actually could be really interesting. And I think it could be really fun. And for instance, um, one of the things that I could do to make, you know, let's say, uh, let's say I'm deciding on what zone I want to run. And let's say, for instance, hypothetically, um, what if my add-on were to give people the option of zones to run? And it were to say, you can either pick Silver Pine Forest, or you can pick, uh, I don't know, let's let's find a, another zone 
over here. Silver Pine Forest, or what's a, what's a not so great zone? Um, nor or yeah, Northern Barrens. Northern Barrens is a relatively inefficient zone. Uh, it's way less efficient than Silver Pine Forest. So why would somebody choose to run it? Well, what if I said that Northern Barrens uh, contains a secret outpost at a certain set of coordinates in the world? Maybe let's say right here. And if you visit those set of coordinates. Uh, you unlock a special window in the add-on, it'll pop up, and you'll unlock the ability to forge yourself a new heirloom. But let's say maybe you already have a really good heirloom for like a particular slot, and you don't really need another one right now. Um, so there could be another option. Let's say uh, you could tinker and build your own goblin gliders, and then you don't need to buy it yourself, and then you could pull that out of the guild bank. Or you could craft some potions and brew up Elixir of the Mongoose, and then you can start using that while leveling. There's a lot of options here, right? And then maybe Silver Pine Forest doesn't have that. So there's a lot of different little things that I can build into like this effectively um, second layer that goes on top of World of Warcraft that, you know, has bonus challenges um, built into it that would give you more reasons to interact with other parts of the game. Um, that That is the most that I've ever disclosed about this challenge run format. I think some people might be starting to get an idea with where I'm going with this. Uh, but yeah, I have a lot of really cool plans for this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if I have enough gold to buy anything significant yet. Um, but if there's something that's like dirt cheap, I may as well sometimes. Uh, carving knife? No. Uh, yeah, there's nothing really yet. And I'll get enough gold later on to get basic stuff. The unfortunate thing is, like, right now my gear is pretty terrible. There's not a ton that I can get. Hmm. Yeah, it is what it is. And, um, leather... Let me just see if there's any greens that are absolutely dirt cheap. But most, yeah, 10 gold tends to be, like, the bare minimum that stuff sells for. So I don't really think I'll be able to buy anything until I get to at least a slightly higher level. And I have some gold that I can spend. Uh, so for now, we're just going to go and continue doing the questing process. And you at least get a few nice starter bags to get you there. Uh, one thing, though, I want to check this Battle for Azeroth thing. Because I think, I vaguely remember the Battle for Azeroth intro. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I want to do this. Out with it. So... We're not going to be doing um, BFA just yet, but we are going to be unlocking BFA. There's a reason for this that I will explain in a second. So you can see if I take this wyvern, it sends me to quote unquote Princess Talanji's boat. Now I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to talk to Innkeeper Grishka. Make this in my home. And up on Sturdy Wyvern. And this will take me to BFA. Now, for whatever reason, at lower levels, you are not actually forced to do the prison break scenario to unlock BFA. So if you do this quest line right now, when you first get out of the starting zone, you effectively get a free BFA intro skip, which normally you can't do unless you've already completed it. But despite this being a fresh account, trust me on this, I, I tested this before, um, fresh accounts will always get sent here directly. I'm guessing that for whatever reason they think that the prison break scenario would be too difficult on a brand new character. So as a result, they don't make you do it. But what is good about this is when I was doing some of my testing runs, because like I said, we don't do BFA until level 40, uh, I would come here at level 40 and I would start the process. And then it made me do the BFA intro. And the BFA intro sucked balls. It's really bad. It's really slow. But... By doing this quest line now, we can completely skip that. We can get this out of the way, because I'll have to do this no matter what when I enter BFA. And I can unlock all of the questing zones, unlock Dazar lore, and get the ability to teleport there directly. Then I will head back to Orgrimmar. I will do Silverpine and Hillsbrad. And when I finally go back to do BFA, I will have already skipped the intro and I can get straight to the good stuff. As usual, you can talk to Talanji, you can teleport straight to King Rastakhan, skip the RP flights. Uh, talk to Zolani. So she leads down the elevator. It's been a hot minute since I've done BFA speedruns. In fact, I've actually never posted a BFA speedrun on my channel. Because 
Back when I was quote unquote speed running BFA, I wasn't even making YouTube videos. Uh, I did this, believe it or not, for fun or fun. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say I enjoy. Do I still get credit? Come on. Yeah, I got credit for following Zolani. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say I enjoyed uh, doing BFA speedruns, but it was one of those things where when I was preparing for BFA to come out, I did a lot of tests for the expansion so that I could get ahead because, you know, the way that BFA was designed, right, there was a lot of time-gated bullshit where you needed to get in there really, really early on and get all that stuff done. So I was still doing speed leveling just for my own purposes back then, uh, even before that became something that I was doing for videos. So I have optimized at least the Horde side of things. Alliance will be a bit harder because, like, I never played Alliance back in the day. Honestly, the only reason I play Alliance these days is for the speed leveling videos because people wanted me to do that. But it was not something that I've ever really played on my own, especially back in BFA. So it, I don't have a ton of experience with it. But the Horde side of things, I absolutely do. Okay. Speak with Princess Talanji. Okay, I just need to wait for her to finish this RP. I'm not entirely sure how far into this questline I need to go before it will let me just bypass the BFA intro when I return. So just to be safe, I'm going to get to the point where it tells me to pick a zone, and then I'm going to pick Voldoon, because that's where I'm going to be going. All right. Oh, it only offers me Zuldazar right now. So it actually forces you to do Zuldazar early. That's fine. I can do Voldoon later on. Because we're not going to be doing this now. Uh, Zuldazar would be my second pick, though, so it works out well. Um, I'll hold on to this quest for now. Talent points I can spend later on. And then... Oh, actually, I could have just taken the portal directly to Silvermoon. I didn't realize there was a Silvermoon portal here. Doesn't matter, considering there's a Silvermoon portal right here as well. Which makes it really easy. Alright. And then, from here... Why is this not working? Oh, there was a cooldown and it wasn't shown. Okay. Uh, any gear rewards? No. Talent points? Alright, what did Koji recommend? Koji... Sinister Strike... Oh, I have Pistol Shot. Okay. So... It's kind of interesting. Outlaw starts with two options. Almost every single spec I've played. Oh, big thing. A lot of people ask me this question. Uh, how do you get past the poison gas? You talk to this NPC and, you know, phases you. Yeah. Uh, I think... I don't know what exactly triggers this. I know it happens for fresh accounts because they're forced into BFA. But some returning players have gotten this as well. I've been hit or miss with it. Sometimes it takes me to the Orbit Translocation. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't really know exactly why sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to take Blade Flurry first. And then here I'm going to spend a point on... Uh, I think I'll spend my first two points on Shiv, which isn't really good as a damage ability from what I can tell. Uh, yeah, it's a Dispel, right? And then Evasion. Evasion is the main thing that we want here. So I can put evasion on, let's put evasion on Q. Q, put this on, shift Y. Why not? Actually, let's put it on H. I think I like that on H. I think it's a good spot for it. Uh, Blade Flurry, where do I want that? Um, probably control, no, let's put it on shift T. Uh, faint is, yep, that should go there. Pistol shot should be there. Blind. Uh, let's see. Shift Y. What else? I think that's it for now. That's it for now. Unfortunately, there's another guy right here. Who, uh, if there's rare mobs in the area, I'm going to be competing with this dude for him. Which would be unfortunate. Because, you know, I don't want to fuck over this guy's leveling, but at the same time, it, it is what it is. Alright, come on, pistol shot. Why can't I reach him? Okay, I'm just going to have to... Pistol shot, 
It's only a 20 yard range. Alright. Yeah, having pistol shots should make leveling a little bit easier already. Oh, I can't use that, damn. I was really hoping I would get uh, green that I can actually use, because one of my main sources of gear is going to be from killing rare mobs. So if I don't get rare mobs, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Shit, shit, shit. Somebody started the RP. What? He just reset it. What the hell? And it's not even restarting it. What the hell? What the actual fuck? I don't... Did it just end? Did I literally miss it by a millisecond? Oh, no. I actually think I literally missed it by a millisecond, which is why it's not starting. Yep. I barely missed it. Wow. That's so tragic. Um, I, I'm going to take this RP opportunity to go make coffee. Might as well. So, you know. Almost forgot to grab my water bottle because I need to fill this up. Oh, it's still going. I made it back in time. I think. And Alexa, turn off downstairs. Stop. Perfectly timed. Ha 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 ha. Alright. Uh, pain in the ass. It's fucking exhausting because I had to, like, effectively limp all over the place. My foot got fucked up. I swear, I've had, like, the worst luck with injuries and, you know, getting sick and stuff lately. This time, it's at least not too bad. Um, I do... I also have... I had a massive headache right as I started, so I'm gonna take Advil, because, you know, I not have a massive headache during the run. I probably would have waited if I would real life. But unfortunately, it wasn't until, like, 15 minutes into this run where I became acutely aware that my head was like, oh. And by that point, you know, I'd already gotten started, so the show must go on. Uh, but, what's it called? Uh, yeah, so how I hurt my foot is actually just, it's one of those things where it's just, you know, fate decided to fuck me in the ass. Like, the perfect combination of factors led to my foot getting... I wouldn't say split open. It definitely, like, um, I, I hate saying ripped the skin because it just makes me think of the fucking gotchi song, but, you know, it, it at least pierced the skin, right? I was, um, I was walking, I was letting my dog out, and the Roomba was, uh, basically moving down this fairly small hallway in my house, and my dog was, like, all excited and stuff, so he was running alongside me, and one of the doors on the right side of the hallway was, like, half open. So, we went around it, but then the Roomba was... I meant to hit Eviscerate there. The Roomba was, like, right behind the door, so my dog, like, wrapped around the door, kind of already pushed into my leg a bit as he was passing by, and then he almost tripped over the Roomba, so he kind of, like, basically staggered to the side, pushed me, and then there, we have this little radiator on the side of the hallway, so I stumbled, and then I, my foot basically hit the radiator, specifically my left pinky toe, went, like, right against the radiator, and, like, this little metal bit, like, slammed in between uh, my pinky toe and the, the toe next to it, and, man, uh, it literally hit so hard, the radiator metal bent, and I went down. And, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Like, I didn't have to go to a hospital, but I definitely had to put a bandage on it and hurt like hell. And it's still difficult to, like, if I... When I was running up and down the stairs to go make coffee, uh, putting pressure on it as I ran down the stairs fucking hurt like a bitch. Uh, so, something I just remembered since I had to go make coffee. Anyways. All right, Haraldin from the future. I am chiming in. Interestingly enough, I think this is the earliest in the run. Uh, that I've actually talked here. It's a little over an hour into the recording, but this is actually the final bit of audio that I think I'll be recording in editing at all, because 
Uh, you'll, you'll get to hear me later on, but I had to trim a lot out of this video, basically TLDR, 12 hour run. Uh, I'm trying to get this thing under nine hours in editing because if things get longer than nine hours, YouTube starts to freak out and I've been looking for things to cut and what you're, well, you're not going to see it, but what you would have seen at this point was about 30 plus minutes of me running aimlessly around Silver Pine Forest and Hills Red Foothills hunting rare mobs and looking for treasure chests. And it was mildly interesting, but there weren't any interesting stories, right? It was more just me commenting on the fact that, you know, I wanted to go check all the rare mobs to get green items because green items early on, uh, since I have no gold, I needed them to get good scaling. And I'm keeping in like the latter half of this footage because actually towards the end of me hunting rare mobs in Hillsbrad Foothills, some really funny shit happens. So I definitely wanted to include that. But like initially when I'm scanning Silver Pine Forest, especially, and, uh, Scanning Hills Red Foothills, it's kind of boring, not a lot going on, so I figured I could probably cut out this 30 minutes and it really changes nothing. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of the run. Uh, this should be future Harlden signing off, but then, you know, you're going to see future Harlden again later on because, you know, those were the initial bits of audio I recorded. It's like the bronze dragon flight. I'm like Chromie. We're meeting again for the first time. Anyways, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to just finish up editing this video so I can get it posted before I, you know, pass out from exhaustion. There are a few locations for chests on the very outskirts of these ruins that I know of. So I will at least check those locations. Uh, there's one in this tower that I find a lot. Darn. And it can spawn in there, but it's not. Yeah, uh, this ogre town, checking for chests really far in this place is hell. Uh, these mobs are really annoying to fight. Gonna, can I make this jump? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah! Well, that was some sick parkour if I do say so myself. Alright, there's one rare in that cave that I should be able to kill. Ah, uh, you know what? Honestly, like, I've been trying to justify. This is kind of why I really want to do, like, that challenge run format. Because, you know, I still feel right now like, you know, I need to do this as part of the, you know, the speed run, right? I need to be going fast and whatnot. This is actually kind of fun, uh, honestly. Like, this is probably the most fun I've had doing these leveling runs in a while. Just going around hunting rare mobs and, like, using my knowledge of, like, the zone and the stuff that doesn't appear in the guides as much. And basically showcasing all of this stuff. It's just fun, honestly. It really is. So... You know, little things like that just make me enjoy leveling a lot more. You know, the adventuring aspect of going around, hunting down rares, collecting greens. Like, ooh, oh, fuck me. It's another one of those, um, like, named items. Oh, can't get days, can't get days. Come on. Hit me in the front, hit me in the front, hit me in the front. All right, there we go. A lot of people, I mean, I think most people know that by now, but some new players maybe aren't familiar with that. Um, I remember I was explaining to my sister how that worked, because when I was leveling with my sister, she was always asking me why I was doing, like, little bunny hops like that. Um, so in case you aren't aware, uh, if you get auto-attacked from behind, you have a chance of getting dazed, which is the thing that knocks you off your mount and slows you. Uh, if you get auto-attacked from the front, you cannot be dazed. So... What you see me doing there is basically doing little bunny hops. Ooh, nice. Grab a Slipknot. Figured he'd be up, but sometimes he's not. Uh, on a tank, you cannot be dazed. So a lot of times, if you see me doing my speedruns as a tank, you won't notice me doing that a lot. It's still good to do sometimes because you can... Um, whatchamacallit? You can get uh, like more damage in by like jumping, spinning, hitting, jumping, spinning, hitting. Uh, but especially when mounted... I don't do that really as a tank because it's just not worth it. You don't need to. Uh, uh, which, what's it called? Uh, dazing doesn't affect you, so it's never something that you need to do. Uh, let's see. Argus Shadow Mage. Nope. Uh, there are sometimes chests. I, I found a chest in that building a few times. What I'm hoping for, I would say a 
With this must, much uh, chest and rare mob hunting, I would want to come out of this with at least two chests and a decent amount of rares. I've already found, I would say, enough rares to make this adventure worth it, but I really want to get one more treasure chest. I think that would be the icing on the cake, if I can find that. I don't really want to go all the way into these buildings for it, though. Because the problem with putting that much effort in is... And see there, that was actually exactly what I was talking about. Uh, I wasn't being careful. I let my back turn to that mob, and I got dismounted. But you'll notice that whenever I'm kiting, I'm constantly spinning and letting them hit me in the front. Yeah, still like this. Jump like that. Oh, fuck, that's unlucky. Oh, that guy was in stealth, hit me from behind on his first auto attack. Dismounted me. Ah, that happens sometimes. I mean, goblin racial. All right. Yeah, and honestly, it feels like my damage has gone up significantly right now. And I think it's because of all these greens. Nice. Yeah, because now that I have a lot more greens, and I should... Yeah, oh, I already equipped it. Now that I have a lot more greens, and, like, my, my general stats are honestly on par with heirlooms, I would say. Uh, here we go. Kidney shot. Uh, my damage just by auto-attacking and using basic abilities has gone up quite significantly. I need to use evasion here. Kind of low. But, okay. Here we go. Fortified belts, mail. Ah, I want mail. Uh, some really loud crickets in the game right now. Ambient sound is surprisingly high. I'll head down here, repair, clear out my bags, and then... Runecloth bandages. Interesting. Can I use this here? I don't think I can. Bandages could be quite nice. I... I, I want to say that these will probably still require Alterac Valley to use. But it's only 64 silver, so on the off chance that these are usable out here... Wrong zone. Okay. I only lost a little bit of silver. On the off chance those worked, I think that would have been really nice. So, I invested gold into science. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's just what you gotta do. There's no rares that spawn here, but there is a chest spawn location right by this tent. It's not up. Jump away. And head down here. Gonna head up this little hill. I don't have... Do I have grappling hook? Can I put a point into it? No, I need to... Yeah, I need two more points for that. Uh, energy cost of that stuff reduced. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, Koji recommended numbing poison. Um... Yeah, I don't know if instant poison does enough damage to be worth it. I think Koji assumes that the damage reduction I would get on average by using numbing poison would probably be better than the damage dealt I would have from instant poison. So when I get a chance, I'll probably put a point into that. I trust Koji's judgment. Uh, nice. Hi, I barely got this rare because there's somebody else here. Uh, and what I can do... Oh, we can do some, some sick speedrun tech. Which... Technically, this isn't the reason that I picked Goblin. Um, if you... Like, there's a lot of people, I think, who from the get-go understood exactly why I picked this particular... Uh, this particular race and this particular name. And if you do, you're cool. You know, if you don't get it, you're still cool, right? But you're like... You're extra cool if you understand why I... Uh, why I named my character this. Um, and I, I am, <laughs> well, there, there's a decent amount of controversy surrounding the game in question, which is Total War Warhammer 3 regarding the DLC price and stuff, which is like, uh, um, basically, ooh, let's see, uh, I already have pants, so I didn't, I don't particularly need that. Versatility scales really well at low levels, so I'll take that. Uh, Chordix is up, nice. Um, but yeah, Gordo's Backstabber is, uh... <laughs> why I named this character that. So I didn't necessarily make it a goblin so I could do cool little jump off cliff tricks like that, but it is an advantage of being goblin. You can do cool little shit like that. Uh, who's messaging me on Discord? Oh, Milk is messaging me. 
what does milk have to say? Uh... Uh, hold on. Uh, why do you... Let me see if they said something in my guild, because I want to make sure that... Milk asked me a question, and I'm not entirely sure if, uh... Yeah, I was wondering if, like, somebody in my raid said something... That prompted me, uh, Milk, in case, for people who don't know all of the lore <laughs> behind my guild and stuff like that and haven't been following with, like, the YouTube shorts, uh, Milk is one of my friends on my current raid team. He's appeared in a lot of my, um, <laughs> in a lot of my YouTube shorts because he's always up to some shenanigans, right? And he says a lot of goofy stuff in raid, which makes for, like, really good clips. Uh, but he was asking me something about uh, Demon Hunter, which I, I plan on playing Vengeance Demon Hunter in the coming tier, so he was asking me, like, if I was set on Vengeance DH, and I was wondering if they said something. Oh. Oh, yeah, Milk's just checking in to see, um... Yeah. Uh, they didn't explicitly approve it, per se, but I made it pretty clear that I want... Oh, cranky, cranky bench. Uh, nice. This wasn't entirely sure if I would... Find this one. But I made it pretty clear that I want to play Vengeance DH in Barris. So, yeah. I've been working on DH a lot, though. And I've been posting regular updates. So, hopefully, if so hopefully if they don't want me to play Vengeance, they'll say something instead of just letting me down at the last second. But yeah, I really, really hate Brewmaster Monk at the moment. And thanks, Lamel. All right. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, I've been playing Brewmaster Monk for this past year, and... I, I well, I I just typed in that message that I hate it. I don't. I wouldn't say I hate Brewmaster Monk, but it is one of those things where I've been playing it for like, you know, oop, two years at this point straight, and I'm not necessarily like a serial altaholic, which might surprise people considering you know how much I level. But I do like playing multiple tanks, and I I mean I think like most people, I get bored if I'm playing the exact same thing for too long. But Brewmaster in particular, it's not that I really hate it. Like, I'd be fine with it if it was fun. I just really hate the current design of Brewmaster. Current design of Brewmaster is just button bloat. And the thing about Brewmaster at the moment is it's like, it's interesting the first time you play it. Like, I was enjoying it when I was first playing around with it on beta. But then when you have to manage so many different things on top of, like, mythic mechanics, it just, I get a headache playing Brewmaster. And it just becomes miserable. And, like... I can't actually focus and chill out in Reclear because I constantly have to manage so much different bullshit. And it's, it's just frustrating. So, like, Vengeance DH at this point... I mean, I, I played Vengeance for years, but I haven't been maining it for quite a while now. Um, pretty much the last two years when I've been maining Brewmaster, uh, before that, I mained Vengeance. And then I took a break and swapped to Brewmaster. Brewmaster was, like, my main alt... And I would play it, like, for fights where it was required when I did main Vengeance. But then, ever since I took a break... I didn't necessarily only main Brewmaster, but I kept it as, like, my number one character. Oh, nice, we got boots. I think that's... Yeah, it's leather, too. That's actually really good, because the replaces a really bad piece. Um, But, yeah, uh, it is... Uh, at this point, it's just I, I haven't been loving it. And I also just really like Vengeance. I've missed playing Vengeance. I fucking love Vengeance Demon Hunter. I was really frustrated with a lot of the changes they made to it for a while. Ooh. Well, that's actually really nice, the fact that we get greens. Hopefully these are not dog shit greens, and some of them are actually good. Uh, that is good. That's very cheap, too. Uh, that's not good. Owl bracers. Hey, at least one upgrade? I will take it. I was not expecting to find a vendor that sold an upgrade, but hey. I buy and
Let's see. Checking for chests. But yeah, uh, basically I told... Uh, I told the officers in my guild that I'm no longer happy playing Brewmaster and that I want to uh, swap to Vengeance the H. And, like, they kind of know that I have history on it. They, obviously, I've only been in this guild for, like, close to a year now, so they uh, haven't seen me play my Vengeance Demon Hunter, at least not, like, as a main in Raid. So uh, they were kind of like, like, I know Babs, uh, Babylonius was uh, saying, yeah, I remember you mentioned playing it. And basically, you know, just give us updates on it. But my co-tank especially was kind of, you know, unsure. He's one of the officers, so he kind of said, like, you know, make sure that you have it geared, right? I don't want you to just come in on a, an undergeared character, right? So I haven't been playing it for reclear. I've still been playing Brewmaster, which I'm fine with. I've been gearing my Demon Hunter up on the side, and I even made a few videos out of it, like, while I'm gearing up my DH. Uh, but it is one of those things where leading into a Barris, uh, I very very much intend to play my dh because i actually i i mean i'd like to think that i am good at vengeance demon hunter back when i played it i had like rank one logs on literally every single boss and i mean i i knew what i was doing right obviously rank one tank damage logs don't necessarily mean a lot because i'll be fully honest back in the day i would cheese the shit out of certain mechanics if it meant getting a rank one damage parse but point is i at least knew how to play it at a, a high level Right, and it wasn't like I was falling over dead. I, I I knew what I was doing on Vengeance. I played it quite a lot. Uh, I just got bored of the playstyle, especially I hated the Shadowlands changes. Ironically, uh, Shadowlands was technically when it was the most meta, and I could not stand the playstyle. So that was honestly the main driving factor behind me not playing it. I didn't love Twilight Dev, but I still played it during the Twilight Dev era regardless, but I quit playing it for the entirety of Shadowlands just because the design was so rubbish. And I stand by that. Now that it's kind of partially gone, uh, some remnants of the Shadowlands era are still there, which I don't love, uh, but I honestly think Vengeance Demon Hunter and Shadowlands, from a gameplay perspective, was the worst that it has ever been. Even worse than BFA. But Dragonflight brought a lot of really great changes to the spec. Uh, most importantly, oh, please tell me I didn't just miss Robark. That doesn't look like it. Uh, yeah, Chief Among Them. Uh, what's it called? Uh, the Return of Soul Carver. Soul Carver isn't even like a massive part of the rotation. Wait, seriously? This guy went to the, the Null place and didn't even kill Lady Zephyrus? Come on. I want to lure her away from the other Naga. Okay. I'm just going to sprint out of here. I don't want to fight these guys. Superior Cloak. One haste, one verse. One crit, one haste. Uh, I'll take verse. Verse is generally pretty good at low levels. I don't really know what the rogue stat prio is. Honestly, stat prios don't matter a ton while leveling in most cases. And I believe, I remember Koji saying it didn't matter a ton. Like, they technically there were some stats that weren't great for them. I remember he was specifically talking about sub. There was one time where I remember Koji was ranting for like two hours <laughs> about rogue stat prios and specifically how I forget what it was. But there was like this one particular armor slot where there was nothing that he could use, and he was pissed because there was this one like I think it was a ring. There was like no good ring for it was either sub or assassination or something like that. And he just really didn't like the way that Blizzard did it. It might have, might have been Bracers. I don't know for sure. Um, so, like, I have some secondhand knowledge about what rogues want. But, uh, not entirely sure. No, I'm a rogue, also. I can stealth. I don't need to be just running in here guns blazing. You know, I maybe should have been doing this a while ago. Uh, I, I'm going to be completely real. I genuinely forgot that I had stealth until this exact moment. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been playing like I don't have it. Uh, this makes it a lot easier to get in and out of places and check for rares. Would have been nice if I thought of that, you know, 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Fuck. Alright. Well, uh, we still have many hours ahead. 
So, you know. What? I just got a, a world drop purple? The fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll at the very least sell that on the auction house. Might as well. I don't know if it's actually good or if it like, if it's rare, but it's a, a world drop purple, which I don't think I've ever got it while doing one of these runs. So, sure. Uh, and what am I looking for at this point? I'm looking for... I replaced boots, which is the main thing. Uh, a chest piece, and I guess better bracers. A weapon would be nice, but the odds of getting that are fairly low. Gloves, too. Yeah, there's still at least a few slots that I can get, so I think it's worth continuing this slightly. Uh, I will go into Arathi Highlands. We're going to hunt a few rares there. And... Yeah, why is it that whenever I do these types of runs, they always turn into rare mob hunts? I mean, I say why is it, but the reality is just because it's it's a fun little diversion. It's different. That, that's the main reason. It's different than what I normally do, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to drink some water so my throat doesn't get sore. Um... All right. So there are a handful of rares in Arathi Highlands, and yeah, thankfully it doesn't put me in the Warfront version of the zone. There's been a few times when I tried to go here to check for rares, and I ended up in the Warfront mode. I don't know why sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't, but that makes it impossible to check. But is this rare seriously not up? And there is, like, absolutely no reason for anyone except me to be here, looking for these stupid Arathi Highlands rares. Why is that one dead? Uh, it's like, not something I expected. Uh, this place, I am... Oh, fuck, there's stealth mobs. Fuck it. I'm just gonna go in here, and... Oh, I can barely see the stealth mobs. If I get dismounted here, I'm kind of dead so let's not get dismounted singer is up los okay i did not expect that to does pistol shot work on blade flurry single target attacks I mean, pistol shot is single target. I have no idea if it works in Oh, fuck me. Uh, do eviscerate. There we go. And we have this one rare in this house. There's no chests in any of those locations. Uh, I will stealth into the other areas and at least check them out. But after this, we're going to kill one spider and then we're going to go turn on Darkman Fair. And we will continue along our regularly scheduled leveling route. Uh, I think, actually, wait, I do Adrenaline Rush here, right? Oh, wait, Hit and Run. Oh, I kind of need that. Really, it would help. Uh, we're just going to stealth here. Just sneak around, check for chests. Alright. No chest. Yeah, this makes it a lot easier. Can I sprint in stealth? Oh, you can sprint in stealth? Oh, sick. Okay. Sneak past you. Nothing. All right. Oh, don't want to pull that mob. Uh, all right. No chests. So I think in the end we only got one chest, which... I mean, it could have gotten none, right? Really don't want to get dismounted here, please. Oh, no. Not the hill! Not the hill! Ah! Oh, backpedal! Come on! Okay. Oh, no. Stealth mob. Oh, please. Oh, fuck. Okay. We're good. 
All right. There should be one more rare, assuming it's not dead. Is it really? Oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, Zorn. Sneak past all these other spiders. Probably should have been doing this more often. And then... Oh, oh what the hell? Come on. Oh, it's because I dipped into Hillsbred Foothills. Okay. So I need to be careful here, because he's right on the zone border. Goblin racial, and... Nice. Uh, fortified bracers. Nope. All right. Well, I got a decent amount. Uh, hopefully we can replace the rest of it with just questing gear and other stuff as we go. I also got one healing potion, so... Oh. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. But I spent, like, what, an hour doing that? So... Alright, uh... I'm gonna price check this purple item. This spell sells itself. Stell... <laughs> what?! <laughs> no! What? No. No. That- that's cap. That has to be- there's no fucking way. Hold on, I need to undermine journal this shit. Humbert's chess piece. Humbert's. <laughs> is it actually? Is it? This isn't bullshit. It's a... U.S. U.S. mean price. Of 900,000 gold! What the fuck? <laughs> 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 oh my god. So, for anyone who didn't watch my, um... Uh... I can't. I, I, the, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, if for anyone who didn't watch my other fresh account leveling video, the one, the one where I got to level 40 and won the fishing tournament, while, while I was, uh, oh my god, while I was fishing to unlock the, the fine fish journal i killed one mob and looted the the ruby whelpling from a world drop in uh yeah from a world drop in what's it called uh the wetlands and now now i just looted just what the actual fuck it's actually worth like a million gold I just can't even, man. There is... Okay, there, there, there is one version of it that has an average price of 30,000 gold, but it has been... The last time it was seen was uh, uh, basically half a year ago. So, realistically, this, this is actually worth... I mean, I don't even know what I sell it at. I think I'm just going to sell it at, like, 400,000. Just, um... Just to make it uh yeah so uh you know welcome to uh to harlden's gold making guide uh step one create a fresh account step two kill a rare mob in fucking hillsbred foothills <laughs> step three loot a fucking world drop boe worth five hundred thousand gold <laughs> fucking what i this is some fucking this is some cursed RNG. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Um, that has to be the luckiest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs>
I I am so glad I'm recording right now. Imagine, like, here's the thing. Imagine if that had happened during one of those, like, three testing runs that I wasn't recording. And then, you know, I had to tell everybody, like, no, guys, really. I looted a fucking 500k BOE on my fresh account. Everybody would be like, yeah, sure, fucking bullshit. No, you didn't. Fuck. Okay. Um... All right. Uh, whew. One of the other things, um, I just kind of thought of this. Uh, you might notice that I always say to get the dollar on Hearthstone. It's not worth doing on a fresh account because you have to do the Legion intro. Like, you can do the Legion intro if you want, but it's like doing the Legion intro just to get the dollar on Hearthstone, in my opinion, it's a waste of time. Your time's better spent elsewhere. I also, like, I thought about there being some merit in doing, like, Warlords of Draenor or Mist of Pandaria. Just because there's a lot of raw gold treasures that you can get for, like, you know, a nice early chunk. Which, eh. I think, if anything, it might be worth doing for Wad, but I just, I don't really think it's that important. Uh, ride ticket book. Yeah, I never understand. That. Why is this 80 silver and this is 40 silver and they do the exact same thing? Like, they're... I don't know if Blizzard ever really thought that one through. They're functionally identical items. Um... Oh, I forgot to buy the quest... Dark and Quest items. That's actually fine, though. Because I want to do the quests later on. Yeah. Right now, all I want is the experience bonus. All right. Uh, how much XP does this give? 286. Base yeah, basically nothing. So we can just go ahead and turn this in. Now, I will need to come back here fairly often, which is the only reason why it's... Without the Darkman Hearths... Or, uh, Darkman... Dollar on Hearthstone, it can be a little bit annoying, especially because I have a 30-minute Hearthstone cooldown. So we'll see how this all pans out. It also means I can't die from this point on. Because dying would mean I have to go all the way back, refresh my buff. Uh, basically, yeah, this is going to be a little bit tricky, but I think I can manage. The uh, question now is how I get back to Silver Pine Forest in the shortest amount of time. And uh, I believe there is a portal to Orgrimmar in Thunder Bluff, I think. Worst case scenario, I take the, um, the Thunder Bluff Zeppelin, which wouldn't be the most efficient thing in the world. Uh... Oh, there are lines. And I might as well take this one. Because it's slightly faster. Usually they're a bit off sync. But they're both really in sync at this point. Uh, let's see. Wowhead news. Oh. Well, my Discord are talking. Apparently there's going to be a 50% experience buff while the Diablo event is active, which is pretty neat. Uh, gives people an incentive to level. Honestly, technically speaking, because like 50% XP, I could probably get sub three hours with that. Because that's like, you know, I don't have the anniversary buff, but that's better than the anniversary buff. So 50% on top of my normal stuff, I could probably beat my world record. But the question is, do I really care enough to try? Is there a portal here? There is not. Okay. Um, mm, it's a little bit problematic. Yeah, normally I have my Hearthstone here. Um, I want to do this. Can you still do... Uh, teleport to Graveyard? Support? Stuck? Um... I think it teleports you to the nearest graveyard, though, right? Stuff character service. Uh, continue. Uh, uh Gorda's. Character will be kicked offline. 
All right, move character. This is some cursed speedrun tech. <laughs> but honestly, if this is the fastest way back to Orgrimmar, then might as well. Okay, so I need to wait a little bit, it seems. Might as well... I think I... Did I sell the pet on one of these characters? I think I sold the pet while I wait for the uh, the stuck character service. <sighs> did I... What did I mail over? Chosen... A, okay, that means it probably worked. Uh, collections, pet journal... Oh, no, I never did sell it. Yeah. Well, there's at least proof that I got it. Um, I thought I had posted it on the auction house, but I guess I didn't. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, fucking I, r reminds me, because I was using this character to do dungeons with my sister, and yeah, you know, that's something I can talk about now. So, I, I talked in a few different videos about my sister's journey through World of Warcraft and stuff like that. Uh, she made it to level 60 at the very least, which is more than I thought she would get. I did not expect her to get that far. Um, but I think she's waiting for a little bit before she tackles Dragonflight stuff. Ah, uh, no! Well, uh, doesn't look like it worked. So, alright. Oh, and I missed the Zeppelin! Fuck! <laughs> alright, I got punished. Well, you know, it was worth a shot. This is like, we are, we are operating at the, um fringe uh end of science when it comes to like speed running shit right now i i am pulling out all the stops if i need to test some curse tech this is the run to test that curse tech so yeah ah i yeah i didn't really consider what would happen if i got myself stranded out in fucking thunder bluff um did not because like i'm so used to having dollar on hearthstone or a way to get around it but yeah, at least it Flight path is generally as fast, if not faster, than the Zeppelin. Honestly, it doesn't matter. At this point, I literally just took a tour around Hillsbride Foothills. What's, like, two more minutes? So, um... Yeah, I walked my sister through the entire leveling process, and even doing the, um... Like, following this route, it was still... You know, she would still get confused at stuff, which I mean, inherently, that's not Blizzard's fault, right? But the basic tutorial stuff does a really poor job of teaching you, like, core mechanics. And the main issue that I have with the way that World of Warcraft's new player tutorial is structured is Exile's Reach teaches you the most basic of basic mechanics. And even then, there are things that aren't really explained. Where, like, my sister, one thing that I didn't really think of is... It, like, expects you to hop on a vehicle and, like, understand the vehicle combat immediately, and it doesn't, like, walk you through it. And, you know, I never thought about it, but, like, that whole quest where you're floating in the air, like, uh, blasting the zombies on Exile's Reach, my sister had no idea what to do. The quest didn't explain it. It was just like, oh, blast the zombies, and she didn't realize she was supposed to, like, click and move the targeting reticle and stuff. And mind you, she's never played MMOs, so she is, like, a brand new player to this entire genre. So... It is kind of like, if you played MMOs before, maybe it's a good way of introducing you to World of Warcraft's mechanics, but it does a terrible job of introducing you to MMOs in general. And she was just completely lost. Luckily, I was there to explain stuff, but I had to explain a lot. And I think one of the biggest things is she would get all of these random abilities, right? And like the, you know, you technically have a recommended build, like starter build and stuff like that. Um, but... You know, my sister had no idea what half her buttons did. I tried to explain some of it, but at a certain point, you know, when she's constantly unlocking new abilities as she levels up and, you know, each one does something different, it's hard to consistently sit there and be like, okay, this time you're going to press this button. And then, you know, when do you press aim shot? When do you press steady shot, arcane shot, all these different things? It's like, you know, there's only so much that I can take the time to sit there and teach her. So... She wasn't really getting the hang of, like, what each button did, and honestly, she just felt kind of lost. And she kind of said, you know, if it wasn't for me literally guiding her through it, uh, she probably would have been frustrated. And then we got to BFA dungeons, or we got to BFA in general, and when we were doing dungeons, because I was like, well, you know, I can get tank cues, might as well, and I wanted her to see what dungeons were like, 
it was a fucking nightmare, man. Like, how is a a fucking new player supposed to understand the mechanics of uh, this fucking place, Shrine of the Storm? Like, my sister got mind controlled on Lauren Storm Song, and she's like running around like a chicken with her head cut off. Like, what do I do? What do I do? It's attacking me. And you know, she had no idea. And you know, she kept like every once in a while because I taught her about tab targeting. And you know, I would be like, okay, so. When you want to target a new mob, press tab. So every once in a while, I, we would finish killing a pack, and then suddenly I see an arrow fly out and pull, like, a pack on the other side of the room. And I'm like, Ashley, no! <laughs> I just have to run around and grab all the different fucking mobs, because, like, she tab-targeted to a random mob and auto-shot there. And, you know, a lot of BFA dungeons are just trash clusterfucks with mechanic overload. And, you know, at, by that point, I had enough tools as a level 50 tank to deal with it all, but fucking hell, imagine. Just imagine if I had been... Um, I'm gonna yeah, take the portal to Undercity. Well, like, imagine if I, you know, had been a brand new tank that didn't know how to use my buttons and I had to deal with, like, all those mechanics on top of other people who don't know what they're doing and are randomly pulling. It would have been a fucking nightmare. So it's... I don't, I don't really understand why BFA dungeons are the baseline, you know, my sister, even though we didn't wipe, was still, like, frustrated and confused because she would almost die in certain areas where she would, like, disengage, pull a bunch of mobs, and then I'd have to scramble and do it, and she's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what I did, and, you know, I, I wasn't mad, but, you know, she could still tell that she was making mistakes, right, because she was like, I keep almost dying, and I keep feel like I'm doing something wrong, and it was like, she could tell that she wasn't playing correctly, but she didn't know how to do it, and she was frustrated that, like, every single time she would get stuck, like, I had to explain it, because, you know, she didn't know what else to do. And all that to say, it's like, you know, you might... The conclusion that some people might take away from that is like, well, maybe MMOs just aren't for her. And honestly, possible, right? Or at least that's what I thought. But then uh, she was like, well, you play Final Fantasy too, right? And, I'm, I'm like, and I said, yeah. But I gave her the disclaimer where I said, World of Warcraft's much easier to get into from a time investment perspective. Uh, at least in terms of you just need to level for like 10 hours, right? And then you reach endgame. Um, and then you can try it and see if you like it. Uh, and I said Final Fantasy admittedly is much better for new players, but it's a much bigger investment. You're going to have to spend a lot more time leveling up and learning it. And then she was like, how long? And I said, you know, over 100 hours. You know, it, it's a really long time to get into it. So she was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try it, but I don't know. But, you know, she tried it out. If the new player experience for Final Fantasy is really forgiving, she still had some questions, right? But the MSQ does a really good job of holding your hand and teaching you, like, very basic things. And she wasn't, you know, doing amazing, right, or blasting through it. But she was making slow and steady progress, and it it was only introducing concepts to her, like, at a trickle. So she was kind of getting it. And, you know, she would get one thing, then it would introduce another. She would get that. And... You know, by the time we got to the first dungeon, you know, she still didn't do amazing in the first dungeon. She was still figuring everything out, but she had an infinitely better experience in Sastasha and Copper Bell Mines compared to, uh, you know, her experience playing BFA dungeons in World of Warcraft. And she uh, died to a lot of orange AoEs and stuff like that in Final Fantasy. I had to teach her, you know, big orange circle, you have to run out of it. Uh, and eventually she got the hang of it. Uh, we had to get past the, the keyboard turning phase, right? Every single time I would see her character start to, you know, pivot in one direction. And I'm like, uh-uh, your keyboard turning. And then, you know, she would stop and figure things out. Um, but every single time, you know, I would call it out. And now she's gotten infinitely better about actually turning with her mouse. And she's able to consistently dodge mechanics and stuff like that. Uh, but the more important thing is one day uh, after, you know, for, I'd say the first, like, 20 levels or so, I mostly helped my sister level through Final Fantasy. And then one day she messages me and she's asking for, like, help with a quest at level 40. And I'm like, wait, I thought you were still at, like, level 20. And apparently she just played for, like, eight hours on her own when I wasn't there and just kept kept going, which is great. And she's still been there. She's already at the, um, the end of A Realm Reborn, at least the base game, and all the way there. Sometimes she had to, like, ask for help. Like, she... Uh, she was doing the level 50 Dragoon quest, and she couldn't figure out where she had to go for it. So, like, you know, she shared her screen, and I, I helped her navigate to it. Some stuff isn't the most clear, especially in A Realm Reborn, but the fact that she has played at this point, like, 
30, 40 hours of Final Fantasy XIV completely on her own with, like, minimal help from me. And even in some cases, she managed to look it up on, like, a wiki and figure out the solution on her own, which I was like, how the fuck did you even know to do that? Because I at no point mentioned look it up on a wiki, but she figured that out on her own, uh, and she found a lot of solutions to it, and she's actually having a lot of fun. One thing I'm so happy that I thought to do is early on, I showed her the gold saucer, because I'm like, you know, the gold saucer is just really fun, right? So I'm sure she'll get a kick out of this, and... I was more right than I could have imagined. She loves the gold saucer more than anything. She loves mini cactbot. Every single day she does her mini cactbot. She sends me like a screenshot of it because she, whenever she gets like one, two, three, she gets all excited and stuff like that. So I was spot on with the fact that she would like that. Um, but yeah, like she's been enjoying it a lot. Which is good because at the very least, it means that I can play Final Fantasy with my sister when she eventually gets caught up. Um, but it also means at this point, I don't even know if she's going to continue with WoW. Because she, I could tell, like, she was having fun playing WoW with me in terms of, like, you know, I was trying to make it entertaining, like, you know, with the dungeons and stuff. Like, but I could tell that she would at points get frustrated just with the game and how it was going. But she genuinely seems to be enjoying Final Fantasy way more than she did with WoW. So I think at this point, uh, I, I've completely lost her to the weeb game. But it really does say a lot about the way that Final Fantasy handles the new player introduction. Another big thing is like the Hall of the Novice. World of Warcraft needs something like that. The fact that they don't have anything comparable to it, like they have Proving Grounds, but they haven't updated it in years. And it's not something that you're introduced to as a new player. The fact that it isn't something that they have is just criminal. Like a core in-game tutorial like that needs to exist because when my sister did that she was like i i'd kind of been trying to explain all of these mechanics to her and explain you know positioning and target swapping and, and damage rotations and stuff like that and she was kind of understanding it but it was one of those things that she had trouble putting into practice but seeing those tutorials like she basically said that after she played through the hall of the novice and saw the tutorials of like all the things that i'd been like trying to teach her it like immediately like snapped into focus and she understood like all the things that i had been saying now that she was actually able to practice it and like those little mini controlled environments and then from that point i like the whole thing about you know being able to dodge aoe's right like i had been trying to get her to be better about that and she knew all the things I said about, you know, turn with your mouse, not with your keyboard, stuff like that. The moment an AoE comes down, get out of it. You know, don't focus on your damage, focus on surviving. And when she had little uh, mini games like that to practice, it became much, much, much easier. So I don't know. World of Warcraft needs something like that. It, the fact that the first time most players are introduced to mechanics like that is Mythic Plus Dungeons is the reason why low-level Mythic Plus is as terrible as it is. Because in a lot of low-level Mythic Plus Dungeons, you're dealing with new players where their first experience dealing with the game is through dungeons like that, which are designed for like experienced players with the amount of mechanic bloat that exists in some of them. It's just ridiculous that brand new players are expected to do that. Whereas Final Fantasy... Before you can reach the late game dungeons that require you to do that, you have to slog through, well, slog, quote unquote. Um, obviously, I think the story is good, but for a lot of people, it's a slog. For a lot of my friends, they gave up, right? But you go through all of that, and a lot of people will say, oh, Final Fantasy, it takes forever to level, it takes forever to get to endgame. But there's a reason for that. There's a reason. It prepares you for the endgame. It prepares you for all of that important stuff. By the time you get to endwalker content you've already dealt with all of the stuff before it unless you bought a boost which like i mean i think the nice thing about final fantasy is that at this point it has become like socially unacceptable to buy a boost which is good i guess um but yeah it's i don't know it, it's it's something and the way that uh the, the way that it works compared to wow <sighs> i also ooh. That's actually an upgrade. That was one of the few slots that I still needed to replace. Cool. Uh, I think it's going to send me, yep, down there. And I actually have the flight point, so I can take that. Take a short little detour. And we will head down there. Let me see. Uh, talent points. I can spend one here. 
Uh, I guess I'll take cheat death for now. I know after that, Koji said sap cloak shadow runner. Uh, yeah, it's probably. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, feature Harald in cutting in in case that wasn't obvious by the fact that you know the original audio got cut off. Uh, the speedrun ended, well, a speedrun, <laughs> quote unquote, uh, ended up taking 12 hours, which honestly kind of expected, right? I would say I could have probably gotten it done in 10 and a half hours if I hadn't spent a lot of time just running around doing random crap. I also, I, I made a lot of the same mistakes a lot of times, which kind of happens when I ended up recording it over the course of two days, as you'll see. A lot of times I would just like take a break and, you know, for any 12 hour run like that, it would just be inhuman for me to do that all in one sitting, quite frankly. And the end result of that is because YouTube can't accept videos that are 10 hours or longer. This needs to be shorter than 10 hours. Now, later on, there were parts that I just cut out. Uh, so I cut out all the stuff that's pretty boring right? Like, nobody needs to see me do Gorgrond for the 20 millionth time, so I kind of, I showcased a lot of the important stuff, like the transition into level 40, or into level 30, you'll see, like, how you get into WAD, how I do all that, and then when I get to, like, level 36, and we're just questing in Gorgrond, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go watch Netflix and just do this on my own, and uh, we will resume when I hit level 40 and continue there, because nothing interesting happens, it's just Gorgrond. Uh, and then I explain, you know, what you do after the fact. And I showcase all of the ends. So BFA, all that stuff, all the new stuff. I included the entire footage of that. Um, which means that effectively I need to cut four hours or at least three and a half hours out of the earlier stuff. And that's what I'm going to be doing here, partially. Uh, cutting some of this other stuff out early in like, you know, Silver Pine and Hillsbrad. Okay, um, and, uh... And now, future, future Harlden is cutting future Harlden off. We're getting crazy here. It's like, you know, uh, Adobe Premiere editing inception going on. Because when I initially recorded this bit of audio, uh, it was it was early in the editing process. It was like, you know, I just finished the run. We waited about an hour. I think I went and got some coffee. And then I went ahead and I'm like, all right, let me record some uh, bonus stuff to replace uh, initially I replaced a chunk of, like, an hour early on in Silver Pine with some of this. I think I, th this actually ended up taking me 50 minutes to record this bonus, uh, footage that I did after the fact and overlaid it. And then I replaced around an hour and a half worth of Silver Pine footage with it. But if you compare the timestamps, uh, from when I started this little future Harlan section and when I cut it off, it's, like, pretty long. There's a lot of time skipped. There's also a decent amount skipped after I stop recording this. I basically ended up cutting out around two and a half hours of Silver Pine Forest or Silver Pine and Hillsbrad in general. Uh, and at the time I'm recording this, it is 8 a.m. on Sunday. So the an entire day after I had originally planned on uploading this. Uh, because the unfortunate thing is I had gotten this video down to nine hours... In editing and now i have been spending 12 entire hours having adobe premiere either crash during the encoding process because it runs into some problem because the video is too long or i get it encoded and then i upload it to youtube and then halfway through youtube says failed to process video and i am i am just i'm so fucking tired i've been trying to get this fucking video on youtube for like 16 hours now and i i had it down to nine hours i wanted to get that uploaded and i just i can't so effectively i don't know if i said it already or if i'm replacing that but i did end up having to sacrifice a few sections of the video in terms of like rants you know, you're not missing much in terms of the actual run, right? I'm just doing Silver Pine Forest. So I'm at least fine with that because nothing super interesting happens. It's literally just me doing the Silver Pine questline as a rogue. Uh, I cut out a little bit early on that I end up talking about later, so that, that's not too bad. 
Uh, but the thing that I am now, 16 hours after the fact, finally having to cut out is a hour-long section in Silver Pine where I talk about raid testing and uh, my thoughts on all of the different upcoming bosses in Abaris and how raid testing went on each one of them, etc., 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 which... You know, I thought it was a good section, right? I thought it was fine. Uh, I have a lot to say about some of those bosses. Um, But unfortunately, if something has to go, that has to go, because I'm already planning on putting out another video, probably in like two days or something, where I do exactly that, just on its own standalone video. Basically going through every single boss in Abaris, discussing the TLDR of how it works to give you an idea on what to expect when you get there. And then, you know, at the end of each boss, I'll... give a quick blurb on like what are my thoughts you know how does this boss feel to play is it fun um what can blizzard do to make it better blah uh so since i'm already going to be doing that in its own separate video i figured eh, you know i can take this section out of the speed run i didn't want to but i mean at this stage i'm just pretty convinced that it will never finish processing this video unless i shorten it i I say a lot in these runs that, you know, when it starts to get eight hours plus, uh, fucking YouTube starts to have a meltdown, and this is why. This is why. This is why I, I honestly just can't keep doing these super long speed runs. Uh, so I'm gonna, in the future, change up the format for these ones at the very least, the, the fresh account runs, um, and how I handle this, because if if I do another 10-hour speed run anytime soon and end up having to spend an additional, like, entire 24 hours of my life just trying to get that video posted, I'm just gonna fucking die, guys. I I can't keep doing this. Um, You know, I I enjoy making it. It's just, like, I, I enjoy doing the run itself. I enjoy talking. I enjoy doing all that fun stuff. The part that makes me just fucking hate everything is this right here. It's... When I'm literally just sitting here and I just have to walk away from my computer for like an hour and a half because that's how long it takes for Adobe Premiere to finish the encoding process. And then I walk back after all of that and it's crashed. And I, it's just, oh, it is the the most horrific sense of despair. Anyways, uh, I, I've cut out a significant section here. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this is enough to get the video uploaded so I can finally be free and uh well later today I've told my friends I'm gonna do mythic plus testing on the PTR so it better be done before that or I I just don't even fucking know what I'm gonna do at that point um but yeah back to back to the original future Harold and the, the man who still had hope uh he's gonna tell you some more fun stuff about my upcoming uh challenge run format I have a lot of cool details to share about that um, but as you'll see, I actually didn't end up hating this run. Uh, it was difficult, it was frustrating, obviously, not having heirlooms and being very squishy. But especially towards the end of the run, I end up really getting a feel for Outlaw, and I really, I start to like it. And I I actually want to come back again at some point and do a rogue run in, like, normal rogue run with heirlooms and all consumables and stuff like that and see how well I can do it. Because I still don't think rogue's amazing, I don't really think there's any way in which this ends up being a really, really clean, streamlined run, even with all the fancy stuff. But honestly, I feel like with the experience I have now playing it um, and having completed the entire thing, I think that I could come back with heirlooms and actually do it decently well. And maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Maybe it's not like absolute F tier, but you know, is what it is. Um, We'll see in the future. This is, I'm going to talk about stuff like what I'm saying right now a lot towards the end of the run. Obviously, it's still fresh on my mind uh, while I'm recording this to fill in the gaps. Um, But the main reason I'm not completely cutting out this footage and uh, just skipping ahead is because I do want to fill the segment with something, a little bonus. Because I've been teasing my challenge run format for a while. I teased it a little bit early on. And... I, I'm not like I'm always unsure about how much I want to reveal. I think there are there are certain things in the run that I don't want to give away just yet that I think are going to be really cool and are going to make the run, you know, the the really define the run and stuff. But one of the cooler things that I want to reveal now, 
uh, and we'll walk through it, at least my current, the original rough draft of all of this stuff, and then maybe months from now when I finally finish working on this, you can come back to this part of the video and see how the, I balanced it, see how all of the design of this stuff evolved over time. Uh, maybe that'll be relatively interesting. Um, but I've, I've kind of already said at this point that it's going to be a roguelike. Um, effectively, what I will be doing is I'm going to be turning World of Warcraft leveling into a roguelike game mode. And not just like putting my own little rule set on it. I am effectively going to be creating a, an extra layer on top of World of Warcraft that serves as like, you know, a roguelike, I, I don't know, like format. Uh, and I have a, a lot of stuff to make that work. Now, just to review the basic rule sets so that all of this makes sense and you understand what you're looking at uh, when I show this in a little bit. Um, uh, the thing I'll be showing here is specifically relics, which obviously anyone who's played like Slay the Spire, Enter the Gungeon, uh, Faster Than Light doesn't really have relics. I mean, I guess if you count like ship augments, um, uh, there's treasures and stuff in the Hearthstone roguelike game mode. Every roguelike has its own like little power up items that you can get. And it wouldn't be a roguelike if you didn't have relics and stuff like that. And inherently... When I think about how I want to design the roguelike element of this, uh, one of my main limitations, right, is all of this needs to be able to be done um, in an overlay, in something that you can just slap on top of World of Warcraft without actually modifying the existing game mechanics and have it still work and still be interesting. And that inherently limits my ability to touch any core game things like, you know, I can't interfere with movement, I can't interfere with, like, I can't change numbers, I can't change your actual stats on your character, I can't give you buffs or debuffs, but what I can do is I can assign items, and I can modify the way in which you interact with the game, uh, which is what you'll see. So I think the, t the um, how do I, how do I want to put it, the four main things that I can think of that the roguelike game mode will modify is it will change your the zones that you do which is my original idea when i first thought of this was randomized zones and then i thought well randomized zones you can have like random map generation effectively it would be kind of like that um that's like a roguelike what if i took it one step further and gave you randomized builds and then, you know, uh, random talent selection. But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought random talent selection is kind of not great, right? You don't want to end up with like a dog shit talent that nobody ever wants. But one thing that I want to do is I want to encourage you to experiment with talents that you may not otherwise pick. But I want you to still feel like you have some level of control over the build that you're playing. So the, the second core thing that I'm going to be interacting with a lot is your talent selection. And what you'll see here is I have a lot of relics that interact with your ability to pick talents. The current system that I have in place, and this is probably going to be the hardest thing to code and manage properly, especially, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do the verification side of things, because technically speaking, I can't really, like, force you to pick the right talent. So if somebody wants to just ignore it and click a different talent, they can, right? So I think there's going to be some sort of, like, you know, if you're playing with the roguelike game mode, you have to follow the spirit of the rules and you have to listen to this stuff, right? I don't want to, like, lock your game and, like, you know, prevent you from pressing buttons. Um, all I can do is tell you which talents you should pick. So the current plan is every time you level up, you get offered two talents randomly selected out of all of the available options. Because I can't make it so, you know, you get offered one of the final row talents at level 10. I can't do that. I can't change core game mechanics. All I can do is say, out of the original three talents that you get to choose from, you know, at the start in your class tree, uh, well, you randomly get offered two of them. And you get to pick which of those two you want. Maybe the one that you want doesn't get offered to you. So then you pick the one that you think is better. And as you go, as you go on, as you continue leveling, every time you level up, you're offered two options. You get to pick the two, the one of the two options that you like more. But inherently, what you could end up um, finding yourself in a position of is like you got offered a lot of really shitty talents that you really didn't like, and I don't want somebody to feel frustrated, especially because, you know let's say you're kind of forced down one side of the tree by the random options and you 
feel like you're never going to be able to get back access to the talents that you really want, that would be a really frustrating experience. I don't want that. So I want people to feel like they have some agency over their talents, which is where the boss relics come in. So I've said before, at level 25, 40, and 55, you'll be fighting a boss. When you defeat the boss, you're going to get a special relic called a boss relic. Uh, boss relics from the way I envision them are going to be very metagamey. They are going to be things that interact purely with the mechanics of like the roguelike mode. Whereas, you know, I have other rules in place here, which you'll kind of, I think, pick up on as we see the item descriptions here, uh, that when you kill a rare mob, you like, you get a treasure or something. And regular treasures can be basic items. Like a regular treasure could be a potion. It could be a goblin glider. They could be gun shoes. I'll think of a lot of different, like, cool items that I can, um, like, put into the loot pool. Regular WoW consumables, regular, like, green items and stuff like that. I could seed the pool with stuff like that. So you can get generic items that are still upgrades and still make you feel like you're improving your character without it being, like, a metagamey thing. But every single boss relic is a special hand-designed item uh, that specifically interacts with something within the game itself. Uh, my game, not World of Warcraft. Um, so it'll either interact with the way that you pick your talents. It'll interact with the way, uh, not the way you choose your maps. I have regular relics that will interact with the way you choose your maps. And I'll, I'll touch upon that briefly, but I'm still figuring that out. But I feel like your zone selection isn't core enough to your character's power. You could technically level through any random zone and it doesn't matter. So I wanted the boss relic specifically to interact with three main aspects of the game. Uh, your heirlooms and like your general gear quality, uh, your consumable usage and basically ways that you can power up your character outside of gear, and most importantly, as I've already said, your talent selection. Because I feel like your, your build is core to your character. Having a good build is having a good character. So, uh, with all of that being said, let's take a look at some of these boss relics. So as mentioned already, by default, you will have an option of two talent choices to pick from. Uh, so the first boss relic we have is Togwaggle's Dice. When you level up, you're offered one to five talent options to choose from, chosen randomly. Uh, wording on this, maybe I could improve. The idea is basically, you might only be offered a single talent option. So the game will literally say, you have to pick this talent, which obviously is bad if it's a talent you don't want. Or, if you high roll, you could be offered five possible talents. And if you're looking at five talents, odds are one of those is going to be something you want. So Togwaggle's Dice inherently is meant to be a very random relic. You could high roll, you could get a shit ton of talent options. Uh, it's for people who frankly like chaos, right? Sometimes you're just forced into a talent. Um, and I don't necessarily think this Togwaggle's Dice will be good. Maybe I'll try to balance it. But it is inherently meant to be a random-esque relic. Uh, the way that I'll probably do this, I haven't entirely decided how it's going to work. You will have a choice of these relics. It'll probably be kind of like Slay the Spire, where you're offered uh, a choice of three randomly selected from this pool whenever you defeat a boss and you get to pick one of them. You could probably also skip it. I'll give you that option. Um, you'll also notice, uh, for anyone who has played Dollar on Heist, Togwaggle's Dice is the name of a relic in there. A lot of the thematic design of this is either it's very like world of warcraft themed right because i don't want my roguelike game mode to be kind of like a different theme than world of warcraft the entire theme that i am going for is still i want it to logically and thematically fit within world of warcraft um i want it to have like a a more light-hearted hearthstone vibe i love the hearthstone vibe i wish that elements from hearthstone were incorporated into wow more often which is why i'm going to be doing that heavily here uh, because I love the way that Hearthstone tells its stories in the Warcraft universe. I honestly think World of Warcraft could learn a thing or two from it. Because the problem with World of Warcraft, I, I'm not going to get into a huge rant here. We, we, we're here to talk right now about, uh, you know, the relics. But World of Warcraft takes itself too seriously. Like, if you're Final Fantasy, you can take yourself seriously. Because the Final Fantasy writers are good writers. I'm sorry, Steve Denuser. Your shit is crap, right? <laughs> bit, bit of a redundant thing there. You're writing a shit. You know, you can't tell a good story to save your life. So instead of trying to make people take your story seriously, 
Just embrace the fun, embrace the chaos. The storytelling in Hearthstone works because it doesn't take itself seriously, but it still has interesting characters like Rafam, Togwaggle, Hagatha. Like those are all good characters because they don't take themselves seriously. I love the Dalaran heist for that. It feels like a goofy romp and it's still like rooted in Warcraft lore, but it's not like super serious and you get to interact with all these characters in a fun way. And I, I really think honestly World of Warcraft needs to start honestly making its storytelling more goofy because if you can't tell a serious story which steve denuser you can't you're bad um then you tell a more lighthearted story and you go for comedy right and i mean comedy isn't necessarily easy maybe not everybody loves the hearthstone like sense of humor but i personally do so that's the vibe that i want for um the design of my game uh i, I want it to be more lighthearted, more hearthstoney um and, and, you know, that's the theming. Like, uh, one of the, the things I, I don't think I've mentioned yet, uh, with a lot of, uh, with a lot of these, these modes, you get, like, free treasures every so often. Um, like, Slay the Spire, for instance, you get a free treasure chest uh, midway through every single act. And I'm going to do that, um, I, I think the way that I'll word it is, like, gift from a mysterious benefactor or something like that and you will receive one heirloom uh in beach in the middle of like every set of 15 levels so let's say at like level 20 you receive an heirloom at level 35 or something you receive an heirloom same like level 50 you get a free heirloom just like you know the game will say like you know ah you've received a letter and attached as an heirloom and you know the the entire theming of that will be it's effectively your main character sending you an heirloom and basically being like you know you're not leveling fast enough here's something to help you out and more of like you know a lighthearted joking feel of like you are the the entire theming is you are an alt and you're getting all these power ups to basically like your main characters helping you out and like certain events uh will probably play into that so like i said lighthearted theme not trying to take it too seriously which is why i'm going to be calling on a lot of the hearthstone theming for this i also just like the design of a lot of the hearthstone relics um but togwaggle's dice all of that to say a little side rant there uh this is very much themed on the idea of like sneko eye from uh slay the spire and there is a relic of the same name in uh dalaran heist like this uh there there are certain cases where I wanted the design of the relic to follow like a similar thing that I've seen in multiple roguelikes. I wanted there to be a Sneko Eye type ro or type relic. So I was like, oh, Togwaggle's Dice has a similar effect. I'll use that as the thematic uh, implementation um, for the talent point thing, randomized ones. And then another one is, next one is Chaos Seeds. Uh, this one is a bit different. You can't select new talent for the next 10 levels, but... After you gain 10 levels, you handpick those 10 talents. So handpicking 10 talents, this is a mechanic that you'll see pop up in some of the later descriptions. You know, as the wording implies, you get to choose the exact talent that you want. So you do literally get to just pick it, right? There's no offering. You just select it, right? And the idea here is it's a, um, a trade-off, right? You're, you're going to be running without all of your talent points for 10 entire levels, but the trade-off is that after you finish those 10 levels with no talent points, you get to pick the exact 10 levels that you want. And this might be really good uh, if you get it at level 40, because if you get to pick all of your talent points from level 40 to 50, which a lot of those deeper into the tree are really good, that could be a really massive power spike. But let's say you get this early on at level 25, maybe it's not the best option, because maybe you're still early on in the tree and like it doesn't really matter which talents you want. So it would be nicer to have the actual power of the talents for those 10 levels. There's a lot of like, you know, uh, uh, what's your, kiss curse here, I guess. I, I like the design of this. This is something that I just thought would be a cool idea. So then I was like, okay, I want this as a relic. So I went ahead and I looked for something thematically that matched this. And I really like the idea of like chaos seeds. There's uh, a hearthstone relic that has like a visual like that it has a completely different effect it like buffs minions in your deck with like plus three plus three um but i like the the design of you're like planting a seed right and then after 10 levels you get to harvest it and get all the, the 10 points that's like you know the the thematic element of it um and then my next one is my personal favorite 
Uh, it's a little bit different. It's Dupla Transmogrifier. So this is another Dalaran heist relic. It's one that is, in my opinion, one of the worst ones, but I had a really fun run with it that I actually showed off in a uh, in my world record speed run when I was doing like little fun stuff towards the end. And this is every three levels, generate a new piece of armor and randomize your transmog. Your chance of obtaining heirlooms from all sources is doubled. So the idea here, obviously the whole randomize your transmog thing is just a bit of flavor. I knew I wanted to take Dupla Transmogrifier and fit it into this mode in some way because I just love that card from Hearthstone. So I was like, oh, having ways to like interact with your transmog and like, you know, you would I would probably have a way to do like the randomized transmog button and you would just run around in a clown suit every three levels. It would change. I just think as a fun factor, I really love that idea. But also I like the idea of, you know, you're generating a new piece of armor. This obviously isn't clearly explained, but the idea would be I would have like a pool of potential like green items or things that you could possibly get. And, you know, there is like a rare chance, let's say a 20% chance for it to generate an heirloom. So it'll generate a piece of armor, which could just be a generic green. I might even have a chance for it to generate a gray item, which, you know, you would just throw away, right? But that's like the kiss curse effect of the Dupla Transmogrifier. Sometimes you generate like a bunch of heirlooms from it and you like fully max out your heirloom set in just a few levels from Dupla Transmogrifier. And sometimes it gives you a bunch of gray items and you're just like, ah, fucking thing. But either way, you get to randomize your transmog so it's nice. And I did, because I didn't want it to feel really bad in case you got really bad luck, you do have an increased chance of obtaining heirlooms from all sources. Uh, I will probably have different ways to get heirlooms. Like I said, you know, if you kill a rare mob, you loot a chest, you do a dungeon. Uh, you get to pick from a regular relic pool, which will either have some special bonus stuff that we'll see a little bit later, but I haven't finalized that yet. Or you'll get like, you know, goblin gliders or some like consumable, or you can get another heirloom piece. That'll be like one of the rare drops. So the, basically Dupla Transmogrifier, the idea here is if you don't really need talent points, if you're already happy with your build, you can pick this and um, you'll just be getting more heirlooms. So it'll make you get more gear. Uh, smooth out your gearing process. Um, so helps you in that way. Next up, uh, Book of Wonders. So this one is handpick your talents for the next five levels. Pretty straightforward. I want a lot of talents or a lot of relics here that just fill a very clear niche. We talked earlier about the idea of Chaos Seeds handpicking talents for 10 levels um, after you don't gain any talents for 10 levels. This one has no Kiss Curse effect. It's just it has half the bonus of Chaos Seeds, but there is also no downsides. Um, now, the reason why I think this is a little bit balanced is because you don't have any control over like you can't delay it. You It has to be the next five levels. So... Let's say you were to get this at level 25, you would only be handpicking talents from levels 25 to 30, which, like, really isn't good at all. Uh, most specs don't have a lot of great options. Even, like, 40 to 45, it might be a little bit better. Uh, but as we go on, you'll see why this may not be, like, the best option. It's It has a very clear benefit, um, you know, pretty easy to evaluate. Uh, but some of the other ones, I think, will give you more bang for your buck. Next up... Uh, we have one that I am, this is going to be, it's like, I, I really wanted to make this because it's another, this is another one of those, it's the box, right? So I'll just read it. The box, every time you level up, this treasure offers a random special bonus. And obviously that's very not clear. Uh, so the box is themed around a relic in Hearthstone in the Dollar on Heist specifically. It's kind of like Togwaggle's Dice where I knew I wanted to have something like this and the way that one works is the box can be any other relic. The box can turn into literally every single other treasure that you can get within the dollar on heist. Every single turn, the effect changes within your hand. Um, it's actually really fucking good, in my opinion. Uh, I would actually put it like within the dollar on heist, like A or even S tier, because it, it technically is within the context of Hearthstone, every other relic in the game. So there's a lot of really good relics situationally in Hearthstone that I don't like to pick because, you know, it's a dead draw in many cases, but the box is like, hey, you know, if I happen to get Big Boomba, which 
Uh, unfortunately, I really wanted to find a way to incorporate Big Boomba because it's another one of my favorite relics from Hearthstone into this game mode, but it just doesn't really thematically fit with anything. But Big Boomba is one that fully clears the board, kills all minions two turns in a row, and in some cases, that's really good. Uh, but it's hard to justify picking Big Boomba. But if you pick the box and it turns into Big Boomba in a case where you need it, you're sitting pretty. Uh, so I really like that one. And how it would work in this context is I would probably give it some of the effects of some of these other ones where uh, every time you level up, it gains a random bonus. Obviously, I, I want it to be every level up because I want it to be changing constantly, but that means I do need to make sure it's tuned low because if it had a powerful, if it had a chance for a really powerful effect every single time you leveled up, then you could just like high roll and pretty much win the run on the spot. Uh, Obviously, there's going to be some inherent challenge in that this run is permadeath, right? So that is going to be the main challenge. You can't die. So all of this is going to be uh, oriented around, like, you know, don't fuck up. There's some other additional challenges like the bosses, uh, but a few ones that I won't talk about. Um, but one of the ideas that I have with the box is, like, sometimes when you level up, I think my dog is, like, rolling around on the floor directly above my room and it is making a ton of noise i don't know if you can hear that um but one of like you know the easy things with the box is sometimes you level up you just get a free potion sometimes you level up you get like a bit of gold like 500 gold or something like that uh sometimes you level up you get a piece of gear generic piece of gear you might get an heirloom uh it could make it so you get the ability to handpick your talent for that level it just gives you the ability to handpick or it could randomly say the box has expanded your options and now you can look at six different choices this level it's effectively pure chaos and i'll i want to try to tune it so that it is actually in some cases worth picking because if i make it so odds are you get dog shit it's so crazy random that you may not want to do it but let's say like the box may, on average, give you, like, six uh, hand-picked talents over the course of your run. Well, then maybe it is worth picking compared to Book of Wonders, because on top of the six hand-picked talents, it also give you, like, free gold, free items, and stuff like that. The only downside is you don't have control over it. Uh, but inherently, I think it's a, a cool item that, you know, some people would want to pick as a result. Uh, the next one, I have censored. And that is because I, I really like this idea, but... It spoils one of the coolest parts of the run. And it I oh, there's only one like this. There's only one relic that spoils a really cool part of the run that interacts with this one fundamental mechanic that I am not going to re reveal until the very end. Uh, but I think it's going to be sick. It's one of my favorite designs. Um, I don't even want to say the name because the name might give away kind of what I'm going for. Uh but yeah, either way, all, all this to say, there's still stuff to be revealed. Uh, but there is one relic here that I can't talk about. Uh, next up, we have Obsidian Star, which obviously, if you played Slay the Spire, you will probably understand where I got the inspiration from this. Rare mobs, treasure chests, and dungeons will drop an additional reward. And for context, uh, when I'm playing Slay the Spire, I am an absolute fiend when it comes to picking Black Star. If Black Star is offered, nine times out of ten, I will pick it. It's not a good relic. It's it's really not in many cases, unless you're playing Watcher. If you're playing Watcher, because Watcher is just fucking broken, uh, a lot of times you can just take like five elite fights in Act 2 and get a shit ton of relics from it. Um, but inherently, the way it works here is rare mobs, treasure chests, and dungeons will drop an additional reward. So like I said, whenever you do one of those three activities, you get to pick from the common relic pool. Uh, or just the generic relic pool, you have a chance of getting a rare relic, you have a chance of getting a, a normal relic, chance of getting a potion or a regular consumable. Um, so this effectively doubles your rewards from all of those sources. So if you're leveling through zones like uh, Silver Pine Forest or something that have a lot of rare mobs and have a lot of chances to get those rewards, maybe taking Obsidian Star is worth it because maybe you're going to um, get a lot of chances to get double rewards. Uh, but it is inherently meant to be, you know, inspired by Black Star and Slay the Spire, which Black Star is a relic that a lot of people will tell you never pick. But I am one of those people who, despite everybody saying Black Star is not worth it, it you know, too high risk, I will always take it because it is like the greediest possible option. And it like you get absolutely nothing from it up front. But it's like you think about, oh, what if I get that perfect run where I fight like 
eight elites by the time I reach the final boss and I get like eight extra relics. Ooh, that would be so good. And, you know, it almost never happens, but, you know, it, that's why I love that relic. So I wanted to make sure I included it. Uh, moving on to the next one, back to more talent stuff. This one I really like. I really love the design of this. Soul Reaper Scythe. Every 50 enemies you kill grants you an extra talent option upon leveling up. Stacks up to two times, and you stop gaining kill credit after reaching two stacks. Stacks are consumed upon leveling up, but your kills persist. It's a little bit wordy, so just to quickly explain, basically after you kill 50 enemies... Ooh, bumped my keyboard there. After you kill 50 enemies, you'll get offered an additional option. So if you kill 50 mobs, when you level up the next time, you will be able to look at three talents instead of the default two. And... When you level up, that charge is cleared, right? So let's say you kill 50 enemies, uh, you look at three options, uh, then whatever reason you kill zero enemies and you instantly level up again. Well, that second level up, you'll only be able to look at two options because you didn't kill 50 more enemies. Um, but it will stack up to two times. So the idea is if you kill 100 enemies, then you get to look at four talent options after leveling up. So, you know... It's even better than some of the other ones, right? You get to look at up to four. It's, you know, if you're able to reliably kill a bunch of enemies, it's arguably more consistent than Togwaggle's dice because Togwaggle's can go up to five, but this gives you a pretty consistent four provided you're able to reliably kill mobs. Now, the whole kill tracking thing, I'll have to figure out a way to code that. Uh, you know, all of this sounds really great on paper, but this is all dependent on me actually being able to implement this in the code, which I don't really know the extent of what I'm able to do there. So have to figure it out. I'm sure there'll be some way to track your kills, though that I don't really think should be too hard. Um, but this is one of those cases where I had this idea and I'm like, oh, this is sick. And then I was looking through the Hearthstone Relics and I'm like, oh, Soul Reaper Scythe. That like thematically perfectly matches the idea that I'm going for here. And the only thing I mean at the end about kills persist is let's say you were to kill like 78 enemies before leveling up. Well, that would give you one stack plus uh, 28 kills because you would be halfway towards a second charge. So in that case, you would look at three talent options upon leveling up. It would consume your first charge, but you would go into the next level still holding on to those 28 kills from the previous level. So your charges get consumed, your kills, if you know there's a remainder there, uh, will stack. But if you get up to two charges, you can't just farm kills. The main reason I put that in there is I thought about, like, what if somebody, like, picked Soul Reaper Scythe and they intentionally, like, mob grinded for two hours and got like 5,000 mob kills or something and then they were constantly gaining four talent options every single time they leveled up. Like, obviously that would be a little bit overpowered, it wouldn't be broken, but the main thing is that would create like degenerate gameplay and I don't want that. And you know, Blizzard, take notes, right? You know, sometimes if you look ahead and realize, hey, this would not be fun. Nobody wants to be forced to mob grind 2,000 mobs, but a lot of players would do that if it feels like they, it gives them a better chance of, like, clearing the challenge. That's something that I just would anticipate. Like, I know that that's what I would do. I would absolutely fucking do that if it was allowed. So I just put a little line in here saying you stop gaining kill credit after reaching two stacks to prevent that degenerate farming. You know, you get your two stacks, you're good, you can level up, you can get all the bonuses. Anyways, uh, moving on, we have Elixir of Vile. This is, you will now be offered two additional talent options upon leveling up. So by default, it's uh, the same level as a full power Soul Reaper Scythe, but you can no longer brew or tinker at forges. This is something I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, where I'm going to have little like forge sites out in the world where you can go there and you can like create gadgets like goblin gliders. You can brew potions. Like, make little consumables, right? Cheap stuff. You know, stuff that's pretty easy to use that, you know, disposable. Um, and then I'll also... I don't really know how I'll balance it because obviously, like, crafting an heirloom seems, like, so much better than, you know, brewing up a potion. So I'll have to think about that. I, you know, this is the kind of thing where there's multiple ways I could tune that. I can make it so, like, you go to an, a forge site and you get, like, an heirloom fragment and you have to combine two heirloom fragments to actually build an heirloom. So, effectively, you would have to use two different forge sites to actually build an heirloom instead of just one. 
I don't know. I could think of ways to um to balance this out. And then speaking of which, uh, next one, Gnomish Mind Expander. Uh, you will now be offered two additional talent options upon leveling up. You can no longer craft heirlooms at forges. So both of these are kind of in a similar vein of they give you the maximum benefit of two additional talent options. It's kind of like um, Fusion Hammer and uh, what's it called? Uh, whatever the, the coffee, yeah, coffee dripper from Slay the Spire. That general idea of like, you can't interact with one of those things at rest sites, but you gain a benefit. So uh, th this is obviously inspired by those two relics. I was like, I, I want something like that, where it's like, I love taking coffee dripper because a lot of times I like to go full greed and I don't like to rest anyway. Um, a lot of times fusion hammer is actually quite good. Speaking of which, just before recording this, I had a watcher run in Slay the Spire where... I got an Act 1 uh, lesson learned, and then I got offered a Fusion Hammer off the first Act boss. And uh, that run was really fucking easy. So sometimes uh, it's a really nice relic to pick up, because sometimes, like, let's say you just don't need any potions in this case. Or you don't need any heirlooms. Let's say um, you, uh, you already picked up, what was it called? Uh, Dupla Transmogrifier earlier on, and you're completely set for heirlooms, and then at level 40, you're offered Gnomish Mind Expander. Well, you probably don't need any more heirlooms with Dupla Transmogrifier already, so Gnomish Mind Expander uh, ba basically does not have a downside, it's just two additional talent options every time you level up. Really nice, so you can take that one. Uh, moving on, we have Master Scheme. Uh, I, I love... This is another one of those where I I had this really cool idea and I wanted to think of like a cool relic from Hearthstone that like fit this theme. Every five levels generate a handpicked token. You can spend it upon leveling up to ignore the random options and choose a talent of your choice. And I like the idea of a master scheme. It's like you're planning ahead. Every five levels you're generating it. So it's like, you know, you're playing the long game effectively and you're generating more over a longer run, but it has less of a benefit than let's say Book of Wonders, the one from earlier, where you just get to handpick for the next five levels. And now you might say, well, if Book of Wonders gives you five handpicks, why would you ever take Master Scheme, which only gives you one every five levels? Wouldn't you need to level up 25 times to like match Book of Wonders? And not really, because first off, if you were to get this at level 25, in theory, you would be able to get up to seven handpicked tokens over the course of your run. So this is better if you get it early compared to if you get it late. But where this is really nice is because it's a handpicked token, and not just handpick the next five talents. You know, you get it at, like, let's say you pick this at 25, you get your first handpick token at level 30. I would probably also, to make it balanced, um, I might add, like, generate one handpick token immediately upon selecting this relic. That way you get, like, an instant benefit um, on top of it. Um, but the nice thing about it is you don't need to spend it immediately. So you can generate all that stuff, and then you can wait until you're, say level 55 and then at level 55 you spend all of your handpick tokens for like the last five levels and make sure that like your final bottom uh talents the ones that are really important that give you all the power you can manually select every single one of those and ensure that all of your capstones are perfect so that is like one really good advantage to master scheme so i really like the design of that one i was really happy about that and the next one is really simple captured flag I might change the theming on this. Um, this is kind of one of those where I wanted a basic relic. You will now be offered an additional talent option upon leveling up. That's it. It's it's the most basic thing available. It's just a plus one every single time you will look at three options. But there's no downside. There's no like Soul Reaper Scythe requirement of you need to kill X mobs to gain the maximum benefit. No, just you always see one more talent. Um, Captured Flag for reference in Hearthstone is a relic that just gives your mobs plus one plus one. So this was, I wanted a basic option. Captured Flag is like the most basic relic out there. It doesn't do anything special. It just kind of works with every deck. It's like, if none of your other treasure offers are good and Captured Flag is one of them, you can't really go wrong with it. You know, it's gonna boost literally any deck. If it's an aggro deck, great. If it's a control deck, great. You know, it's just always going to be fine. But it's never like the thing that you really want to see, but you're never like upset to see Captured Flag. Now, these were a lot of my initial options. 
Uh, some of the later ones, uh, specifically the next one we'll get to, were actually my friend's ideas, where I sent them this list, and I was like, what would you add to this? And my friend Ard uh, had the idea for this next one. I, I did the theming on it. Um, she basically said, I think you should have an option to blacklist talent options. Basically make it so I never want to see this talent. So I was like, ooh, Forbidden Knowledge sounds like a really cool name for something like that. Permanently blacklist three talent options. And also little flavor text, warning this may make other talents impossible to access. So you might be wondering, like, where is the strength in blacklisting options? Now, for one, it makes it so you're never seeing that option. But you might think like, oh, well, you know, if I just don't want to see a specific talent then I'll just take one of the other ones that lets me see more options, and then whenever that talent I really hate is offered, I just won't pick it. But the key to forbidden knowledge, the reason why I think this could be really good, is you could effectively use this to block off entire sections of the tree. If there is like one, like let's say you hate the right side of your talent tree, and you never, ever want to get points there. Well, if there are two key prerequisite talents that you need to take in order to go down that right side of your tree, you just blacklist those two prereq talents, and you're effectively ensuring that all of your options in the future are going to be going down the left side of the tree. So if you've managed to get to a point where, like, you know, th that side of the tree that you really hate is still, you know, completely, um, like, untouched, and you have the ability to knock it off the map entirely, this could just massively improve your odds. It's like the idea of by limiting your pool of available options, you are effectively just improving your talent options by default. So I think this is like such a cool way to do that, to increase the like possible talent um, things you can do. It won't be good for every spec because there are a lot of specs that of course will want to go down like the entirety of their tree and maybe blacklisting one or two bad talents isn't going to be super good so that's why i've created the next one glyph of warding every time you level up select a talent to temporarily blacklist that talent won't appear as an option for this level so similar vein except it's like a bit more flexible you're not permanently blacklisting anything it's just if you know specifically i do not want this talent right now then you can just glyph of warding it. And that way it won't be offered. You can't see it. Um, it's a little like less powerful, right? Uh, but let's say it is in some ways you could use it as a permanent blacklist for one particular talent. But maybe you specifically want to go down the left side of the tree now, but eventually you want to go down the right side. Well, you can pick glyph of warding. You can just keep blocking off this one side of the tree. And then eventually when you do want to go down the other side, you just stop blacklisting that one talent. And then maybe it'll appear as an option or something like that. So I like how one of them is very permanent. The other one has a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, really like how that comes together. Okay, this one... I knew I had to do this. I love this design. Continuum Collider. Permanently change to a random specialization. Gain five handpicked tokens. For the rest of the run, you're offered an additional two options when selecting a talent. So, in terms of power level, this is obviously insane, right? Five handpicked tokens immediately makes it, like, better than Book of Wonders, just by default, and on the power level of master scheme, like across an entire run, because those are tokens, right? You can spend them whenever you want. And you automatically get two more options every single time you look at a talent. And because you're changing specializations, you're picking those from the very beginning. So all of your talents, talent points from level 10 onwards, assuming let's say you pick this at level 40, from level 10 to 40, you get to see, look at four options. You basically get to build exactly what you want if you pick Continuum Collider, but it permanently changes you to a random specialization for the rest of your, your run. So if you pick this, let's say you're leveling as a Windwalker Monk, you pick this, it turns you into Mistweaver. Well, you better know how to play Mistweaver because if you don't, you're fucked. So... I really like this idea because it encourages people to know all of the specializations of their class, because if they do and they're offered Continuum Collider, they're like, yeah, no problem. I'm just going to completely swap specs mid-leveling process, but I'm going to get the perfect build and it's going to set me up really nicely for the rest of the run. 
So thematically, I think this is awesome. I love this idea because this is something that I always like doing. I, you know, I, I'm big about trying all the different specs. So I like the idea of like, let's say I'm playing Windwalker and it swaps me to Brewmaster. Oh, I would be so thrilled because I'd be able to perfectly set up my build. Now going down a little bit more, uh, this is another one of my friend's ideas. Uh, she wanted you to be able to reset your talent points at some point. Now, initially her idea was like pick specific talents to reset. Like, you know, if there was one talent you got offered early on that you don't like, get rid of it. I don't know how I would code that. I don't think I could consistently code it because the problem is then it would get a little bit confusing if let's say there's like dependencies there. If you were to reset the very first talent in your tree and completely fuck your entire tree, it would just cause chaos, right? So there's no way to reliably do that, um, you know, without some player oversight. And I don't want players to have to like really put a lot of like effort into it. A lot of this should be pretty straightforward. So I came up with Ever-Changing Elixir, which is like a spin on that, where you undo the previous 10 talents that you selected. So that way, there's never any conflict. It's just you go back in time the last 10 talents and just change those. And then you receive a new option for each of the talents that you just unselected. While repicking them, you're offered an additional option, and then you also gain two handpicked tokens. So the idea here is kind of, it's like bad luck protection. If you got really, really shitty talents on your previous 10 levels and you really are not happy with what you got, well, pick Ever-Changing Elixir, undo those talents, and then you have better odds while repicking them so you can get the build you want. But because it is still on the weaker side, like it's not actually giving you any power for the future. It's just kind of basically saying, if you got dicked over, you can fix that. I wanted to at least give you some sort of bonus. So you get two handpicked tokens. It's not a ton. It's a good bit less than Book of Wonders, Master Scheme, etc. But it's at least something to make it not feel bad that you're having to pick a relic that is just like, you know, like undoing bad RNG. So I like the design of that. Could use some tweaking. But going forward, uh, Zephyrus's Lamp. So similar here. Uh, every time you level up, you may re-roll your talent options a single time. So it's also bad luck protection, but this time, every time you level up once, you can, if you don't like your options, re-roll it a single time. Uh, so, I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really think we need to talk about this more. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's kind of like seeing more options, but except, you know, instead of looking at three options um, every time, you have a chance to instead look at two and two. But the downside of that is it could re-roll into the same two talents. So I think Zephyrus's Lamp would work better if you already had like four options, because if you have four options and then you're re-rolling those four options, you know, better chances of finding the talent that you're specifically looking for. And then uh, going off this theme, the next one, Bulging Bag of Coins, gain 15 re-roll tokens. When you level up, you can spend one of these tokens to receive a new set of talent options. So whereas Zephyrus's Lamp is just one free re-roll every single time you level, Bulging Bag of Coins gives you 15 tokens that you could spend liberally. Let's say there's a key level that you really want to get a specific talent on, and you really get screwed over, you can spend 5 of your 15 reroll tokens on that one level just to make sure it spins into the talent that you want, and then you can pick that. Um, so it gives you oversight. If you want, like, let's say you get the perfect talent, 5 levels in a row, great. You can just hoard on to those uh, reroll tokens, you don't have to spend them. It lets you... Uh, just pick when you want to specifically reroll. And if you really keep getting unlucky, you can throw more at it. So that was kind of like the, the dichotomy in the design of these two. Now, the final two boss relics that we'll be looking at uh, is Untold Splendor. Pretty straightforward. Gain three normal uh, relics. So I would say this is like the relic pool that you get when you do a dungeon, kill a rare, etc. cetera. Uh, same general idea. Uh, it gives you one of those relics. I think I would probably, just to make this balanced, uh, make it so you're only gaining an actual relic and not, like, a chance at a consumable or something, even though dungeons do have a chance to give that in lieu of a regular relic. I would probably also include heirlooms in the relic pool. Unless, of course, if you already had full heirlooms, uh, probably wouldn't count. This is these this one and the next relic, Ancient Arsenal, gain three random heirlooms, are of course themed off Calling Bell a little bit. Calling Bell is a Slay the Spire relic that gives you three regular relics. Um, so I like that general idea. It's like, you know, if you don't want a very fancy one, you just 
try your odds at getting generic power upgrades. Uh, so if you're low on heirlooms, you just take three. If you're low on regular relics, you can just see if you get one that really helps your build. Uh, and then finally, this one could be pure chaos, enhance somatic, randomly apply an item enhancement, enchant, etc., uh, to every single piece of gear you currently have equipped, if possible. So obviously, I don't think there's any like helmet enchant, so you can't enchant your helmet. But if you pick up this relic, you generate an enchant, or effectively, like you you mail yourself an enchant for every single slot of armor that can accept an enchant, but it'll be randomized. So what I would do is when you pick Enhanced Somatic, it would tell you enchant your weapon with like uh, elemental force or something, but it could give you, let's say, a caster enchant for your melee weapon or something like that. So really powerful, obviously getting a bunch of free enchants for all of your gear. Uh, I, technically, you know, it's hard for people to evaluate it, but I plan on balancing it. So item enchants are hard to get. Because getting Elemental Force is like a pretty big power spike. Getting like a permanent enchant on your heirloom, that's really nice. Uh, so being able to enchant every single piece, it's good. But you may not get the enchant you want. You can still change it later. Let's say you get a bad enchant on your weapon, but you get a good weapon enchant later. You can replace it. Uh, but once again, this is kind of like a, I am happy with my talent build. I don't want any of those. I'm just going to take the random power spike in another area, specifically on my gear. Uh, so that was the theming behind this. I've talked for 50 minutes. God damn. Um, I'm going to have to find a lot of stuff to cut out. Uh, but finally, because I, I do need to get going and I do need to actually get this editing done, uh, I will at least give a preview for some of the other stuff. So you can see here, I mentioned before, one of the key things is going to be random map generation. So I'll let you look at two of them, specifically Dream Grove Ring for Druid and Jade Idol for Monk. So for Druid, it's you may complete the Legion introduction in order to unlock the Dream Grove if you have not done so already. And you may take any of the portals in the Emerald Dreamway and level in those zones in addition to the ones that you got randomly offered on your map. So those zones, the portals in the Emerald Dreamway are Duskwood, Hinterlands, Mount Hygel, Feralus, and Grizzly Hills. These zones will no longer be like randomly offered as ones that you can level in. So it's effectively a way of saying you get it. It's thematic, obviously, you know, you get access to the Emerald Dreamway and you get to access those portals to visit all of those zones. I thought it was really cool. I, I there's a, a relic in Hearthstone called Dream Grove Ring. And I'm like, how can I incorporate that? And I'm like, well, Dream Grove, right? But then, oh, I can make it so you could access those portals and do those zones. I, I love this idea. And I kind of expanded upon that with monks get Jade Idol. So you may use your Zen Pilgrimage ability to travel to the Peak of Serenity and complete all of the quests there. You may also purchase any items sold by the vendors in Peak of Serenity. Not a huge deal, but there are some like nice monk-specific items. And then once per act, which I'm calling it act now, I'll think of a fancier name just because that's Slay the Spire, uh, but act is every 15 levels, so 10 to 25, 25 to 40, etc. You may replace one of the zones that you were offered with a Pandaria zone of your choice. Pandaria zones will no longer be offered as random options. So you might notice a trend here. Basically, you are getting access to a specific subset of zones depending on your class. Uh, I have been thinking about which ones I want to expand on. Uh, I guess really quick because it's pretty obvious, right? The next one is a Prince's Ring, uh, Death Knight, and it lets you travel to Northrend. And it, it's the same deal, except you get to pick any Northrend zone that you want. So... That's the general idea. It effectively gives specific classes access to entire continents that they can do whenever they want. Um, that's like thematically relevant to their class. It's a little bit harder when you get to like hunters and stuff, because like what continent is thematically relevant to hunters, right? Um, so I'll have to think of a cool way to do that. But the idea is maybe, you know, when you're playing on Monk, you may want to do Pandaria zones a bit more. When you're playing on Death Knight, you may, may want to do Northrend zones a bit more. And this makes it easier to guarantee that you get those zones. But these are part of the regular Relic Pool. I have them under their own category now, just because I wanted to like categorize like my thoughts and stuff like that. But these would be, if you were playing as Death Knight, for instance, a Prince's Ring will have a chance of showing up as a regular Relic, the ones that you can get from like rare mobs, chests, and dungeons. So it wouldn't be competing with like the really high power level talent manipulation ones. Um, but anyways, I talked for a while. 
Uh, I hope you found this little insight into what I'm planning for uh, this stuff interesting. I hope you're looking forward to this. I put a lot of thought into how I want to make this work. I'm really excited for this. I have a lot of really cool ideas that I want to implement. I hope I can get it all working at, like as part of the actual add-on. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the run. I have a lot of really good stories coming up and stuff like that. Uh, and I mean, I think, it, you know, the whole concept of the run is interesting. We will be skipping around a bit from here on out, though, because I I need to fit this onto YouTube, right? I need to trim a bunch of hours. And I was expecting this to be like a 20-minute little side tangent uh, that I could fill the void in. And I ended up fucking talking for 50 minutes. So, you know, it's how it goes, right? Is what it is. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks for listening to Future Harald and Rant. Back to the rest of the regular run. All right, so uh, I've probably sufficiently talked for a little while about, you know, my my roguelike plans and whatever for the leveling run format. Uh, that That's like a little teaser of what's to come. I think, obviously, you know, there's a lot of different ideas working together for that whole thing. But what really matters is, I think, how I managed to put it all together. Because, you know, any one of those ideas could work well for, you know, its own individual leveling challenge. Like, you could do a leveling run with randomized zones. You could do a run with, like, randomized talent selection, and, you know, you have to earn heirlooms and something like that. The entire idea of this whole thing is more the presentation. It's more how the entire thing comes together and works as a whole. As a way to, you know, not just make it so, as I said before, you're, you know, tying a hand behind your back and giving yourself little bonus challenges... Uh, the entire idea is to give the player a completely different leveling experience. It's basically meant to completely change the way you actually interact with WoW leveling and turn it from, well, frankly, a boring slug, which is what it is now, uh, and I don't really think adding one or two miscellaneous challenges would make it more boring, into something that actually requires you to pay attention and requires you to think critically about your build and your pathing and stuff like that. It is meant to be a roguelike. Uh, and of course, you know, maybe the first iteration of it doesn't end up being fun. Who knows? I could fuck the tuning, and it could end up being extremely painful. In which case, I go in, I, I tweak some numbers, and I, I make it more fun. But... I've probably talked about that a lot extensively. I haven't even recorded it yet, for the record. My plan right now, because it is, uh, it's 2 a.m. at the time of me talking in real time now as I do this run. And I've kind of planned ahead, you know, how I'm going to handle all of this. Because I've already decided at this point that the parts of the run that I recorded for... Oh, can I get an ambush? Oh, I could get one ambush. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I already decided that the parts of the run that I recorded earlier, I'm going to cut out and, you know, record some voiceover after the fact on top of it. Uh, so I already know that I'm going to be doing some editing, and I've decided that it's going to be me talking about, you know, the roguelike format, my plans for that. Uh, but I haven't actually gotten down to doing that yet. I'll probably just, after I'm actually finished with the run, sit down and uh, just do that all in one sitting or something like that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But... As far as the actual run now, so the reason I decided that this would probably be a good point to step in and start giving uh, commentary again is, obviously, I cut out the audio before for a variety of reasons. Um, one, I was getting a little bit frustrated with how things were playing in terms of, you know, the speed of rogue leveling, and I also, I, I wasn't thrilled with, you know, the, the thing I had been discussing. It was one, one of those things where... It was a topic that is, like, inherently a little bit personal, and I wanted to make sure that I told it properly, but I was getting too frustrated about the, um, you know, the, the state of the run, so I didn't really do a, a good job telling the story, and then I, I probably would have had to re-record it anyway, because it was just a jumbled mess, and I just wasn't thrilled with it, so... Initially, I thought about just re-recording that entire section and then finishing telling the story later on, but then I kind of realized, eh, it's a little bit too personal. I don't exactly want to talk about that. So, figured I had to cut that out anyway, and it's a good time to cut it out because, quite frankly, we've seen Silver Pine and Hillsbrad a million times uh, throughout the run. So, is what it is. Uh, already going to have to do a bit of editing here to make sure that it fits under 10 hours, and I can actually get this onto YouTube without it taking, like, three days because ideally I'd like to get this posted by like noon of today, which is Saturday. It's early morning on Saturday. 
And Darkman Fair doesn't end until the end of the day, so I, I still have time. Um, but all of that to say, uh, one thing I, I will comment on with Rogue now, I've obviously had the footage playing in the background, you can see, you know, how I've been playing it, and I, it, it's getting better. I feel like now that I have Roll the Bones, Roll the Bones, I've inherently always kind of hated it because it, it is a little bit RNG. Uh, it, it's one of those abilities that, you know, it's just really random and you are going to either get really lucky procs uh, and it's going to be awesome. Like, I, I actually got, like, what was it, a six proc, I think it's is the cap. Um, I got, like, a million procs at one point, and I just, like, shredded this one pack, and that felt awesome. And then in a lot of other pulls, I get one proc, and it doesn't feel super great. So it's inherently a little bit hit or miss, from what I can tell. But it does feel like, especially with Blade Flurry active, you know, my damage really isn't bad. Like, I, I was killing those mobs, the, the light on cage key thing that we just did a little bit ago. Um, I almost considered saying something while I was recording that, because what the fuck was that RNG? I had to kill, like, fucking ten zombies to get that. That was on the upper end of my bad RNG uh, for that quest. That was something else. But, uh, it, it does feel like when I have everything going, when I have my cooldowns and stuff like that, I can actually kill mobs at a decent pace. My survivability still isn't great, but it's not terrible. Like, I actually feel like it's a little bit better than when I was doing a run as mage, because, you know, I at least have evasion. But that's one of the issues I feel with Rogue right now. It is too reliant on cooldowns. Because, you know, look at Guardian Druid or Windwalker. When I pop my cooldowns as Windwalker Monk, I delete an entire pack instantly. Your entire... I wouldn't say your entire damage burst, but a significant amount of your damage is built around doing these massive pulls and then just erasing everything within your cooldowns. And Guardian Druid to a lesser extent has that too, where, you know, you pop Berserk and you just delete everything. But the key difference there is Guardian Druid still with Moonfire and Thrash and stuff like that can just do a shit ton of, like, consistent damage outside of cooldowns. And Windwalker Monk with Fist of Fury, which you can reliably get a pretty low cooldown on, still does a lot of AoE damage and then followed up by, like, you know, Rising Sun Kick and stuff. You can kill things outside of CDs. With Rogue right now, it feels like a lot of times I pop my CDs, I melt a pack, and then I'm just running around pistol shotting things and kiting until I can attack it again. And it, it's not terrible, right? Like, I, I don't hate it, which is why I feel more comfortable uh, doing it now, because I've been fine with the last few, like, pulls and stuff like that. Um, whereas, like, Arcane Mage, when I played it before, I was really just struggling with it. But it does, it feels sluggish. And I don't really know if there's a way that I can improve that. Like, maybe there is a talent build that I could go for earlier. Um, like, because, uh, so the build that Koji recommended um, is, he recommended going down here first. Uh, so, like, obviously getting Dancing Steel online is really good. He said, first these two, which I feel is good. Roll the Bones has been pretty solid. Uh, so I would go... Uh, yeah, I don't really need Sleight of Hands. Activating Adrenaline Rush causes your next Roll of Bones to grant at least two matches. That feels crap. I feel like I want to pick this up eventually. I think that was in Koji's build, but I don't really need that right now. It feels like Subterfuse, uh, especially. I butchered the pronunciation. I'm still kind of tired. Uh, this has been pretty good. Uh, the fact that I can now do Ambush twice after leaving Stealth has made me want to initiate from Ambush a lot more. I like that. So I'll probably go here. Half cost uses a pistol shot. Generate one additional combo point. That seems good. So I think getting this stuff online is probably going to help. And then he recommended going uh, Ruthlessness and Devious Stratagem. And then eventually going down here for uh, yeah Precise Cuts. Yeah, Precise Cuts. Fan the hammer when Sinister Strike. Um, half cost uses. Ah, that's actually pretty neat. I like the uh, appeal of that. And between the eyes has a chance to increase. Okay, yeah, this is basically the path Koji recommended. And then he recommended going down here. Ambush generates one more combo point. And let me just double check the build again. Make sure I got it right. Yeah, uh, ambush generates one more combo point, And then... Uh, versatility, acrobatic strikes, and deadly precision to activate the bottom section. And then he recommended for the final few talents, uh, Alacrity and Deeper Stratagem. And then I think that, 
that should get me to around level 60. I think there was like one or two more floating talent points that he was just kind of like, yeah, you know, there's multiple options here that you could spend it on. So I guess by that point, I'll probably already be killing things decently fast. Uh, the end of the leveling process isn't too bad. But overall, it feels significantly better. The main issue is AoE. Like, single target, my damage is actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. It's still just outside of Blade Flurry and my cooldowns. It takes a while to kill single target mobs, so like, this quest is going to be rough. I'll see what I can do here. So we're gonna do ambush, this, another ambush, roll the bones, slice and dice. Oh, fuck, I interrupted at the wrong time. Mmm... I probably could have just killed her without using that. But, like, look at my damage right now. This is actually... Rogue's kind of fucking right now. This is good. Alright. Uh, why can't... Oh, I'm disarmed? What? You must have a one-handed melee weapon equipped in the main hand. Can I not use daggers? Oh, really? Oh, shit. I did not realize daggers weren't something you could use as outlaw. Or maybe you can use daggers in your offhand, but not your main hand. Is apparently how that goes. Huh. T.I.L. Do this. Kick that. Between the eyes. And... Yeah, unfortunately, still do need to focus a little bit. So, I, obviously, I, I could do this entire run just giving, like, commentary after the fact. But at that point, you know, it would take too much time. So, I do need to, at an extent, just go through the run and provide commentary. But I'm fine with that, like, in-the-moment commentary, even if it's not, like, you know, me telling stories like I usually do, as long as it's not me being tilted, right? The, the reason why I wasn't happy with, uh, you know, what I was saying earlier in the run is because I was just genuinely frustrated, and I did not think it made for an enjoyable viewing experience. You know, maybe you would have disagreed, maybe you would have liked to see me rage or something like that, but personally... I always get frustrated when I see somebody, like, getting genuinely pissed off and whatnot. It's like, it's, there's a certain level of, like, you know, acting anger, I think, um, is for lack of a better word. Where sometimes I will, like, play, get mad, and joke around and be like, ah, oh, this is fucking bullshit, right? And play it up a little bit, because it's a way of kind of, like, venting frustration. But whenever I get genuinely pissed off, and I really just start ranting and raving and stuff like that... I just stop having fun. And I'm just like, I need to stop. Right? This this isn't enjoyable. Like, um, something that I, I probably cut out earlier from that point in time is at one point, uh, basically, it was like every impulse in my body was just like screaming, get the fuck out of this run right now. Just stop recording. Do something else. And I, I was just not in a good mood. And I kind of knew that it's one of those things where if I settled down and I did something else for a little while... Um, and in this case, you know, I went ahead and I did, uh, oh, this is problematic. Do this, uh, but it's still going to be a little bit difficult. Fuck. I thought they were going to do a cast. All right, well, that's my second actual death of the run. Once again, because I'm talking and not paying attention, and that's just going to happen. Which is why I, I, I like to... I, I'm trying to open clams while I'm dead. I don't know why I'm doing that. Yeah, th this is a tough quest. Preemptive Strike... These Naga are ridiculously overtuned for their level. And they already give me trouble when I'm doing it as a Windwalker Monk. Um, I think that has so far been one of my biggest issues with Rogue in general. The fact that I have really no way to consistently heal myself in between packs. Like, uh, you kind of need some way to continue killing mobs, right? And to not have to stop and heal after every single thing. That's the most frustrating part so far. I don't really think there's a way to deal with that besides, like, buying a ton of food ahead of time. Uh, which, you know, I'll, I'll probably do the next time I'm in town, if I remember. Um, but another thing to comment on. Let me reload, because my UI is a little bit fucked right now. Uh, you'll probably notice that I'm level 30, and I'm still in Hillspread Foothills. Actually, I'm level 31 now. Uh, and I'm still in Hillspread Foothills. You might be like, well, doesn't the zone stop scaling? And yes, but you'll notice right now, these quests are all still yellow. They all st still give full experience. And at level 30, because they stop scaling at 30, you s it still goes up to there. So I'm not going to be getting uh, experience from this equal to level 31. So I am technically losing a little bit of experience at this point in time. But that is totally fine. What I'm going to do here... 
this, activate Bleed Flurry, ambush again. Uh, did I get that ambush? I think I got the ambush. Uh, and nice. Yeah, see, that was a sick Blade Flurry. I got, like, a lot of value out of that. Basically killed two mobs. When it works out, it really works out. So I like that. Um, but it feels like if I don't have it active, which... I got the blind off, at least. Hit me that. Pistol shot, and... Alright. Let me just adrenaline rush here. Just gonna have to kick the next one. Kick that. Between the eyes. Goblin racial. And... Alright. If needed, I will just evasion this. We should be able to kill this guy before it really becomes an issue. shot and dispatch. Yeah, that damage felt good. What is this buff? Increases energy regen? Oh, I see. Yeah, buried treasure seems nuts, because it felt like I was actually able to use abilities. It's, the energy regen feels really slow. That's, like, one of my biggest complaints so far. And my sustain in between packs is slow. You know, if those two are fixed, honestly, Outlaw feels great. So, like, with that buff, oh, that actually felt really fucking good. It felt like I was actually able to use my abilities. So, I'd imagine that as I get more talent points and stuff that, you know, fixes that, it's going to feel a little bit better. Um, but, for now, oh, let me just, I'm going to pop evasion here. I'm not, I'm not confident enough in my ability to do this correctly to know if I can uh, survive that pull. Um, but yeah, so the reason I'm staying here so far is, obviously, South Shore is really, really, really efficient. So these quests, obviously, you get a really fat chunk of them at one time. Uh, I have all these ones to turn in. And then there's a few rare mobs in this area. Robark might be up. I haven't looked yet. Uh, there's a rare mob on the the island, although I actually don't think I'm going to do that. I think when we get to the island, um, if the rare mob's up, I'll kill it. But then there's a lot of RP that leads into uh, South Shore. And technically speaking, if I hadn't killed the rare mobs earlier then I would have reached uh, Terran Mill, and I would have done, like, the initial quest in Terran Mill, scan for rares, and then generally on my other characters, that's where I left Hillsbrand Foothills. It generally falls at around, like, 32, 33. But you still get really good experience from doing all of this stuff, even though you have technically out at, or passed the scaling or whatever. Um, okay. I need to blind you. Um, I'm going to drag you over here, Blade Flurry, kick. Oh my god, what the fuck? Yeah, sometimes that, that felt fucking crazy. Mob just fucking melted, I don't even know what was happening. I was just pressing buttons and shit was dying. It's, like, there are moments here, like, this is where I feel my gear is still a little bit behind, so I'm sticking with it and I'm being... Hopeful, because what I think is that as I start to get more of, like, the really overpowered talents, uh, you know, Outlaw Rogue is already feeling like it's coming online, and I have, like, kind of dog shit gear, so maybe once I replace my gear, this will actually start fucking shit up. Like, oh, that was a bunch of combo points in one. I got a, a dispatch, an evasion. Uh, don't want you to get away. Okay, there we go. And... Dispatch, nice. I need five more. Is there a way to lower the cooldown on Crimson Vial? Uh, increases the healing of from Crimson Vial healing potions and health stones. That might be worth it. Uh, being able to just increase my healing through stuff like that would be a nice way to boost my sustain. Also, Robark is not up. Uh, how am I going to do this? I need to do Blade Flurry. Kick. Hmm... Too, I wait, pulled way too many. Nope. I hate the aggro radius in these fucking guys. It's like I thought I would be able to just pull those two, but then it kept chaining into more and more and more. There wasn't really a ton I could do. It's like if I pull the shaman, is it going to pull the one over there? Thankfully, no. In Crimson Vial. Let me. Fuck. He immediately started casting. Yeah, it, casters are also. This is traditionally just. 
a bane of my existence while um, questing. The fact that casters are just such a fucking pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, at least managed to get that. Uh, because you can't group them up, so unless you have tools like Ring of Peace or ways to like really constantly deal with casters, it just becomes such a pain. Uh, uh. Come on, there we go. Crimson Vile, okay. I need to kill two more. I really don't want to get shamans. Uh, these are non-shaman guys. That guy's... Oh, of course. He's patrolling directly on top of the shaman. Love to see it. it literally just fuck me right now. Okay. Uh, I can... I can wait. I can pull this... I can pull this shaman here. Here's what I'll do. I'll Crimson Vial. I'll stealth. I'll open on this guy. Crimson Vial, stealth. This this do that then i'm going to goblin rocket to get this guy in stun you roll the bones blade flurry and then cleave these two down stop running i need to cleave you all right and between the eyes and then we'll just chip away at this guy all right could have been worse, could have been better. Uh, hopefully once I get Vader gear, this will start falling into place. And I've gotten a decent amount of gold so far. Uh, the quests will start ramping up exponentially in terms of how much gold they get. When I do WAD, I'll also get a pretty nice chunk of gold from that. Um, but I will swap to WAD pretty much the moment I'm done with these quests. So I will head up here. I'm just going to check to see if Cranky Benj is at this part of the river. Because if he is, then I get a free rare mob kill. I'm not going to go too far up. I will go just along the bank, because then I can grab Chordix, who is always in the same spot. And... Let's see. And the nice thing about WoW leveling, it's kind of like... Yeah, there we go. Chordix is up. Uh, leveling actually gets, well, usually gets faster as you go. For whatever reason, 50 to 60 is, like, extremely fast. I don't know why I popped Blade Flurry there. Technically don't need to, but that's uh, whatever. Um, so, even though it has been slow thus far, and obviously I've dicked around for a while, I've wasted a lot of time, uh, technically speaking, the second half of the run is much faster than the first half. Now, I will have BFA, so I think it's probably going to kind of balance out. It won't be six hours, but like basically 10 to 30 is about as long as 32 to 60 um, with, you know, BFA here. So should probably only be like another four hours. I should be able to get this in 10 hours is what I'm planning. Uh, you know, and I say that now and I'm kind of setting myself up for disappointment because then let's say we're on hour 12 and I still haven't finished. That's when, you know, I, I really start to get frustrated and start tilting and whatnot. So hopefully it doesn't come to that. Uh, but, okay, we can dispatch, leave all these guys down. Buff is this. Finishing move reduces the cooldown of many of your abilities. All right. Oh, they killed that ranger. Uh, what I want to do is I want to look for the dark rangers that are under attack, because that's usually a nice way to get, like, multiple kills at once. That one's only under attack by a single worgen. So that's a waste of my time. Um, Blade Flurry. Ambush. Oh, missed it. Do this. One more. Dispatch. Yeah, I got it with the Blade Flurry. Perfect. Yeah, but after this, I'll be going to WAD. Uh, now that I've, I've kind of gotten that out of the way, though. Yeah, so today, after I did my initial recording, I had to get prepped for raid testing. Which I think I mentioned earlier in this video that I had to do on Friday. And um, basically nobody showed up, which is always fun. Uh, it's kind of one of the problems of raid testing, right? Uh, it's inherently a difficult thing to put together, and then people will just kind of put their name on the schedule, forget about it, despite the fact that I routinely ping in the Discord saying, hey, raid testing, make sure, you know? Um, 
and then I will expect to have like 15 people and I show up and there's five. And that's something that just really irks me. You know, it's like, obviously not everybody can commit time to raid testing. I get that. You know, I don't expect everybody in my guild to be able to show up. But I am very much of the opinion that if you say you're going to do something, you should fucking do it. You should be there. Right? Like, if I make a commitment, I show up. Unless or, or like, and if you can't, right? You say ahead of time. You know, like, uh, one of my friends told me in advance of, oh, you know, hey, I'm not going to be there today. I'm feeling really sick. Uh, can you go without me? And I'm, I was like, yeah, of course. Obviously, if you're feeling really sick, you know, don't push yourself to come. But she told me hours in advance. Uh, basically said, like, you know, I, I might even sleep right through my alarm. I'm not sure if I'll wake up. And she did end up waking up, but she was like, yeah, I still feel like garbage. I, I really don't think I'll be able to do raid testing. And I was like, yeah, hey, that's totally fine. Worked out in the end, obviously, because we weren't even able to put it together. But there were, like, five other people that put their names in the sheet and just didn't show up. And it's like, I even have a tentative column on the sheet. It, it's right there. I designed it because I know that there's a lot of people, you know, in my guild or on my raid team who aren't 100% sure if they can make it. And, you know, for instance, uh, one of the hunters on the weekend team, he didn't even put his name on the sheet and he showed up. And he was like, yeah, you know, I had something at work. I wasn't sure if I could make it, but, uh, you know, so I didn't want to basically have you guys account for me being there. So I figured... You know, if there's room and, and I show up and my work thing uh, ends early, then I'll show up. Uh, and that's great, right? You know, he he didn't sign up and then potentially miss it because of his work meeting. He just knew I don't want to, like, you know, fuck over their plans. So if I'm there, I'm there. Uh, and a lot of other people, unfortunately, don't have that mindset. And it's frustrating. And uh, later in the day, at the time of posting this video, I'm going to be trying to put together a normal Abaris testing run. Um... Because they have they have a Barris testing for normal at least for the entire raid, except I would assume Sarkareth going on the entire weekend. You can put a group together at any time, and hopefully that goes well. You know we have a few people sign up for it, and thankfully because it's normal, I only need ten. But I'm gonna be so insanely tilted if once again you know I I go to to start it and nobody's there. Because that's the problem with a lot of this, like, PTR testing stuff. I've had the same issue with, um, you know, key testing, where I just haven't been able to get people on a consistent schedule to test out Mythic Plus keys on the PTR lately. And, you know, it, it can be a little bit frustrating when that happens. Uh, all right. I'll get Duskwing, and then I will abandon the quest, because at this point there's no real advantage to continuing from here. But yet, yeah, it's like, you know, there's a lot of videos that I want to make to cover stuff on, you know, the upcoming patch. But a lot of things I just cannot test without the help of other people. Uh, and I guess on that note, if you want to help me test stuff, you know, I'm always looking for people for uh, rating. I usually go with like a mostly guild group, but obviously as, uh, as there are cases like today where people don't show up, it helps to have people in my Discord who can volunteer. Um, uh, somebody in my Discord, HVids, volunteered the other day. He showed up and he helped us out. So, you know, in, in the off chance you're watching this, HVids, I appreciate you. Uh, but, yeah, if there's more people who want, obviously join my Discord. I always post about stuff there. Uh, right. I can't use my Hearthstone here because I have it not set to Orgrimmar. Right. Um, that's fine, though. Ah, uh, I can just, I'll go on this flight point, and then I will just go back to uh, Undercity that way. At this point, you can maybe argue that it's worth completing these quests, so I could go back to South Shore, but uh, it's like two quests worth of XP just to abandon the quest line at that point. Uh, doesn't seem worth it to me. So I'll just abandon it here so Orcus doesn't potentially put me in combat. Um, but yeah, I, I'm usually looking for people to do groups and stuff like that, but it is one of the more frustrating parts about making videos, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to make and it already is enough time, you know, scripting out the stuff because, uh, one of the, the things that I'm trying to do with my guides that I think gives it a leg up compared to a lot of other ones is I actually do write a script for it and I try to make it like, you know, condense the information and only include the important stuff. But like still, in, in many cases... I, I managed to make my guides shorter than other uh, ones that people make, and 
I include more information because the thing with writing a script, right, is if you're able to carefully plan out the exact words you say and, you know, do all the research and put all the information there, a lot of times you can say more with less. So I'm able to make shorter videos that actually are more informative and give more details about like the mechanics than other guides where somebody just like presses record and talks at the camera for like 30 minutes, which, you know, I mean, is fine, right? But that's personally not what I want out of a guide. And that takes a lot of time, right? You know, the reason why people don't do it is because it takes a very, 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 very long time to write a script, especially like in some cases, the dungeon scripts get really long. And then, you know, you have to research every single mechanic. I have to include detailed notes on how every single mechanic works. And then I have to basically think about how do I want to describe this mechanic in words? Because it's all well and good to show a mechanic and be like, and literally read the tooltip and be like, this mechanic does X, Y, Z and great. But then how do you deal with it? Like, how does that mechanic work in practice? Are there any interactions with other mechanics in that fight or dungeon or whatever that you need to be aware of? And there's like a lot of things you need to consider and you need to make sure like, how do I include all of that information in a, you know, short, but still informative part of the video? Um, it takes a lot of time sitting there, scripting it out, figuring out the exact right way to say everything. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, a lot of fucking work. And then, of course, when I actually go to edit the thing, editing those videos takes a while. Not only do I need to get a ton of footage, but usually I will get like for raid bosses. Obviously, I only have the footage that I can get during the limited testing hours. But one of the reasons why the full normal run is really good is because there is no time limit. You know, I can just say, all right, wipe, pull again, and we have as much time as we need for that type of thing if I really need footage of a particular mechanic. Um, but generally speaking, I just got to work with what I got. But dungeon testing, a lot of times I'll try to do like at least two to three runs of every single dungeon and experiment with like different strategies um, if it's a brand new dungeon. In this case, we've played around with most of these for a while. I think Vortex Pinnacle is still the main like unknown because it's getting like a revamp. Uh, so that's one that I do probably want to test a bit more. Um, but I want to test everything, see how it works. You know, if the first dungeon didn't go so great because of a few different hiccups, we try to patch that up in the next one, try a strategy that, strategy that works better. And then I need to make sure I have footage clearly demonstrating every single mechanic uh, because I don't only want to explain how you do something, but I want to explain or, or visually show how it works in game. And a lot of times I will, uh, I'll be sitting there in Premiere editing it together and I, I'll realize, shit, I have no good footage to demonstrate this one mechanic. Like for whatever reason, every time we did that boss, either it didn't target me or somebody near me so I couldn't get a clear angle of it, or there was like a lot of other uh mechanics going on at the same time that just made it really hard to see and really hard to tell what was going on so it was just really hard um i'm grabbing my my water really quick and then i'll have to say all right well i need more footage of that and i will have to you know get my friends together to do that and all of this comes out in one two three four weeks so i have to make eight dungeon guides basically all of that recording scripting editing all that fun stuff um, in those four weeks and then actually get them published. Then, you know, there's more work on, on the thumbnails and stuff like that. Uh, making good thumbnails takes a surprisingly long amount of time uh, to, to put all that shit together and to make it actually look not garbage, right? It's a lot of time. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say with all of this is I figure some people may just find it interesting to, you know, hear what goes on behind the scenes in terms of planning all that. Uh, but the main reason I'm ranting about this is because when I need to do all of that, when I need to put in all of that work to make that stuff happen, and then I set aside like hours of my day, like I stopped recording this video because I needed to do raid testing and then I show up and nobody's there. It's like just insanely frustrating because now I missed out on Mythic Rashok footage. I just don't have footage of that boss, which Mythic admittedly is not the biggest thing in the world because when I'm, I might try to make Mythic guides this tier. I might not, honestly kind of depends on how much time I have. But at the end of the day, I'm never going to make a Mythic guide for a boss until I've killed it. And something I'm probably going to try to do this, this tier to make it a little bit easier. I drink some water.
yeah, something I'll probably try to do this tier to at least make things a little bit easier on myself is I'm going to, before I get to a boss, basically script the entire boss uh, video, the guide, right? Uh, exactly what I, th how I think everything is going to work based on, you know, my builds, preparation, and strategies, have my guide ready to go, um, probably even record the audio in advance, assuming I don't need to make any changes or something like that, and then basically put the video together for the most part using footage from our early pulls or something like that whatever i get footage to clearly demonstrate a mechanic and then when we actually kill the boss i will probably stay up that entire night do last minute editing on the video uh any strategy updates any you know additional footage from the remaining pulls that i can use to improve the video right and then i publish it the next day to make sure that it is accurate because i use that strategy to kill the boss but that way i'm not starting the video after I actually killed it, which I think was really the thing screwing me over beforehand. Uh, so I'm going to try to do that a little bit differently this tier, at the very least. We'll see how that goes. But dungeon guides I need to have out by May 2nd, and I need at least one uh, video covering all of the heroic bosses is my plan, at least for tanks is how I'm going to do it this time around. Uh, just the tank guide for Heroic Abaris, and then I will make more generalized guides for the rest. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, I still need footage for that, and uh, at the end of the day, there isn't a ton that I can do on my own. It's nice recording all of the, um, the general, like, uh, like, world content stuff. Like, I, I haven't been... I haven't tested Zerla Caverns a ton, because one thing that I learned from testing the Forbidden Reach is that, um, at least until Blizzard makes a significant change, I am just done testing their world content early, because they just do not give a damn. I, I don't even know why they have, like, Zerla Caverns and, like, Forbidden Reach and stuff up for testing as early as it is, because there were generally, genuinely multiple things in the Forbidden Reach that just did not fucking work the entirety of the PTR. I went on there day one, multiple things were fundamentally broken to the point where I effectively couldn't do any testing, and a lot of that stuff never got fixed. It ended up being fixed when it was on live servers, so clearly they had, like, a private developer build, um, which, you know, I'm glad, at least in that case, they managed to get it working, but there were a few minor things um, that I just wasn't really able to provide feedback on because they just didn't really have it functioning properly. And they also are really bad about giving you ways to test, like, certain systems that require massive time investment. The fact that, you know, in order to fully test most of the stuff in the PTR, you do need to log in every single day for, like, a week and constantly sink time into it. Because there is no way to, like, expedite the process. And, like, I want to test this part of the patch. No, you just need to play through it the entire way. And, it, you know, if Blizzard was really good about... Um, making sure things released in a polished state, I wouldn't be complaining about this. You could argue it's like, but Harlan, who gives a shit, right? Like, at the end of the day, as long as the content comes out and it's squeaky clean, who cares? But they don't have a good reputation of doing that. Uh, they've been consistently dropping the ball, and a lot of the patches have been releasing in a... Well, I, I, I don't love 10.0.7. I think 10.0.7 was kind of a fundamental failure of a patch. I think the idea of sinking so much development time into a lot of content that just isn't fun and requires like a lot of mindless grinding i just really don't understand why they did this i don't really understand who the forbidden reach is for like it's obviously it exists from like a catch-up mechanic standpoint but you know you could have just done something more interesting with it and just added the tokens to primal storms like there are multiple ways to get that catch-up mechanic stuff into the hands of the players without you know just making all of these garbage things. I think the biggest issue that myself and many other people have with the Forbidden Reach is the, the Onyx Annulet. I I don't know why they designed that. It's like they spent so much effort making that thing and doing like all of this tedious balance on it just for it to go away next patch. So what's the point, guys? Like, why are we sinking all of this developer time into a ring that is just going to be used for literally a month? Is that really how we want to be spending our time? I I don't know. It's it's just baffling to me. I don't really get it. And um, 
I don't really think any of the new content is enjoyable. The Scare of Alts is cool, like, the first time you do it. So, I guess that's something. The Scare of Alts is maybe the entire highlight of the patch. But maybe it's just not for me. Maybe some people out there really love the Forbidden Reach. They've been having a blast playing around on it, and I'm just a cynical downer. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't get it. Uh, did I buy... I bought, like, most pieces of gear for, like, main slots. Yeah, and then... Main thing I want to get is miscellaneous pieces. I need a cloak. Rings. Yeah, see, like, greens are dirt cheap at this item level. If only it was like this the entire way through. Held an offhand. That is a neck. Nice. Uh, let's go with the quick blade one. Uh, take that one. Uh, what else? I need rings. That gave me Agi, right? Yeah, it gives... I think this gives Agi. Meraldar Amulet of the... Yeah, it gives Agi. Sometimes the tooltips on here are incorrect. So I need to be making sure I check that. Uh, let's see, Black Wolf Ring. Okay, I can use this. So I should go... Uh, let's go... Peerless and Aurora. Black Wolf Ring of the Aurora. Sure. Uh, and then are there any trinkets I can buy? Like, really cheap ones. That just give, like, primary stats or something. Uh, I don't see anything. Nah. They, like, if it's at a lower item level, I would take that too. Six Demon Bag? Nah. No, that's a necklace, not a trinket. And... None here. I'll go one item level lower. Just on the off chance. It would make my life a lot easier. Here, I'll specifically search for trinkets. Uh, Enchanted Rock Feather... Corsair's Spyglass Fault. Ah, yeah, that's the one from before, the 19 gold one. Yeah, so all the trinkets are. I mean, six demon bag is. I it, it's better than nothing, and it's five golds. Might as well, I guess. It genuinely cannot hurt. It is an upgrade. Uh, but I think that's it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can't get anything else. And then weapons. Maybe I should have bought that first, because I want to make sure my weapons are actually good. I have usable only here, right? I'll do one-handed, just because no point including uh, bows in that list. Immaculate Scepter, that's Intellect. Intellect. There we go. Agility. Mace. Uh, I kind of want to go with Axes, though. Oh, but the Maces are dirt cheap. Let's just go with Mace of the Quick Blade and... Mace of the Aurora. Eh. Alright, there we go. Um, yeah, anyways, all that to say, uh, I'm not going to be doing extensive testing on Zerilek Caverns just yet, because it's one of those things where... I, I actually, I did try, just in case maybe Blizzard was doing something differently this time. I didn't want to assume that Zerilek Caverns was a complete shit show, and it was just... Garbage. Absolute garbage, right? Not in terms of, like, the content itself is garbage, just the way that they set it up. It's, like, it, it's literally untestable. I just don't even understand why they bothered releasing it in this state. Like, I guess you could argue that maybe they're doing it just, um, for raid testing, right? And that's the only reason why the PTR is up this early. But it is... It, it is effectively untestable, is how bad Zara Like Caverns is right now. Uh, just none of the shit works. And... You know, I could, in theory, try to slog through it and try to figure out my way around all of these broken quests and try to understand how all of this stuff works uh, and get some early information. But it's like, I did that for the Forbidden Reach. I tried to slog through all of this. Most of the content was broken, and I spent hours trying to figure out how to do these different events. And then the end result was, oh, Blizzard just doesn't have it working yet. So I, I just wasted my time, right? And that's really frustrating. Um, 
I don't want to do Broken Shore. There we go. Tanan Jungle. You have to pick up the quest here uh, to get the breadcrumb. And then I forgot to... Well, technically speaking, I have a flying mount, but I forgot to buy one um, off the vendor, and I need to buy one off the vendor, and I still need to get my Darkman Fair buff. I'm not going to forget again. Uh, because this is supposed to be a fresh account, right? Where I have literally nothing, so I want to make sure that I am actually buying things off the vendor to simulate what would happen if you didn't have a mount. Like, how do you get one? Well, you have to go buy it. At some point, I'll probably need to get more coffee and water or something like that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, it's... At the very least, one of the nice things, you know, I'm complaining about the fact that they don't have it ready, but at the end of the day, to get my videos for the Forbidden Reach done, which I wasn't even able to get all the ones I wanted done, whatever, it's, you know, it's a minor content patch, 10.0.7, so I didn't care too much. But, uh, let's just buy... Let's buy a swift one, right? Let's buy the the green wind rider. Why not? Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it looks cool. All right. Uh, yeah. For for the forbidden reach, I basically ended up using barely any of the footage that I actually recorded early on in testing. And then what ended up happening is I just had to like binge play the PTR for like three days straight. Uh, completely threw away my weekend effectively to get the footage I needed for my videos, and I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I, what I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm not going to make the same mistake, right? I'm not going to do Zerla Caverns testing early on. I'm going to test it, like, a week away from the patch. I'm going to play the shit out of it, figure out everything important, uh, get guides written on all of that stuff, and, you know, have it published then, because it, I'll probably need to do that anyway. Uh, the only difference is this time I won't be wasting a bunch of my time right now testing it, only to have to get all of that footage a second time, like, one month later. But, I will have to make some videos on that. So, I don't really know exactly what I'll cover, right? Because I, I don't know all of the stuff that's in the patch. Because every once in a while, right, you know, one of the videos that performs well is something that, you know, I didn't even think of until I started doing testing. And I'm like, oh, a detailed guide on this is something people would probably find useful. Um, oh, I forgot to set my Hearthstone to, uh, no, I forgot to set my Hearthstone. I don't want to do this now. Uh, I think I, I just need to suck it up and Hearth to Sludge Fields and, um, yeah. And, uh, take the flight point back and waste another five minutes. That's how it goes. I knew I was forgetting something. I always... It's hard to keep track of all of this stuff, quite frankly. Uh, but it's not too bad. I can just... Uh, would it be faster to just fly directly to the Undercity? I think it might be. Because the flight path through Silver Pine takes me on like a really meandering path, whereas here I could just fly directly to the Zeppelin Tower, which would probably be a little bit easier just directly there. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Um, but yeah, it's... I'll probably make a guide on, like, Lone Niffin, the new reputation. Uh, anything important there. That said, you know, that's generally something I aim for, but I didn't end up making a reputation guide in patch 10.0.7, because the way to get pa reputation with, like, the new faction, new quote-unquote faction, the Drakthir one, is just do stuff in the Forbidden Reach. And the rewards were, like, non-existent, right? There might be, I think there's, like, one mount... Uh, that you need to get through a rep, but it really isn't anything important. So there were a lot of things that I thought about making for the Forbidden Reach, and I'm just like, nobody's going to interact with this. Like some some people might use this for like a week or so after the patch goes live, and then they'll forget about it. But let's say Loam Niffin has um, a lot of like really good crafting recipes. Like for instance. Uh, the regular renowned factions in like base dragonflight actually did reward uh, a lot of really good crafting recipes so whether it's good or not is kind of debatable right but important recipes like the ones for crafting equipment which a lot of people wanted um, and they early on had gear rewards so a lot of people wanted to you know farm rep with those factions 
I was actually initially going to make a rep guide on them, which that was one of the things that I had to scrap because I just ran out of time going into Dragonflight. Uh, but assuming the case is there still for Lone Niffin that they drop a lot of good stuff, I would probably make a mini reputation guide. Um, I wouldn't include any like bullshit, you know, dumb information like do quests, do the campaign. If anything, I would do like a, a one sentence thing on, you know, just by doing the, the quest in the campaign, all that stuff, you can get up to this amount of renown. And here's how you get the rest of it. Like, you know, the stuff that people actually need to know. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I would maybe cover. Um, based on what I know about the upcoming patch, uh, I've already said I'm going to do eight dungeon guides, heroic raid guide, affix guide is probably something I'll cover, how to deal with the new affixes. Um, obviously, for the record, if you're listening to this now and you have a good idea on like, you know, oh, I heard this one thing about the new patch and I, I'd love to learn, learn more about it. Can you make a guide on XYZ thing? always looking for good suggestions a lot of times uh my best ideas are recommendations by friends or viewers like one of my friends will be like ah, i can't figure this out and then i'll i'll like help them through it and then i'll realize oh that would actually be a really good thing because i'm sure a lot of other people are struggling with this too so you know if there is something like that that you would love to learn more about always happy to hear about it oh, yeah that only took three minutes that wasn't uh, a massive detour um uh, you might be noticing one small problem, though, which uh, is what it is, right? Uh, but I forgot to set my Hearthstone again, which, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It Once again, not a huge problem, just because um, uh, when I... I'm not going to have to go back, hopefully, until the time when I actually leave Draenor. So... Uh... What could I do? I could maybe just, like, fly to, to Warspear or something like that and take the portal there. It honestly shouldn't be too long of a flight because I'll be in Gorgrond by that point. So, if I fly from Gorgrond to uh, Warspear, it won't be too bad. Oh, that tank is levitating, huh? <laughs> um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, definitely I want to make a video on the new gear upgrade system because it is just extremely convoluted. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, I would recommend at least taking a glance at it now on Wowhead. Uh, I still don't understand it, but it's good to understand what you're going to be dealing with. Basically, Valor, Valor is being removed, and they are introducing like this new, really garbage high watermark system that is meant to be a simple replacement to Valor. And I just do not understand how shit like this gets off the drawing board when it's just it. It is so overly complicated. You know, there are so many ways to make that system better. But hey, whatever. I could sit here and I can complain about how Blizzard is making dumb decisions again and needlessly overcomplicating the game because they don't know how to design simple systems anymore. Or I could just figure out the garbage and try to solve that problem by making a really simple guide that explains all of that stuff in an easy-to-understand format. So... That's what I'll definitely be doing, because whenever there's a topic that even I don't understand, I'm like, oh boy. If even I can't figure this out at a glance, and even I'm reading the description on Wowhead and scratching my head like, huh? They, it works like how? And, and it, it's just so needlessly complex, I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I, this is prime video material right here. Uh, so definitely gonna make a guide covering that, because, oh boy. Uh, Blizzard really um, don't know what they were thinking. But what else can I cover? I mean, I don't really... I, I'll probably focus more on my other stuff, unless there is, like, a system in uh, Zara-like caverns that requires, you know, a, a lot of figuring out or something like that. I haven't looked much into the world events. Maybe one of the world events is complicated and could justify a guide. But I'm not going to make guides on things that people can just kind of figure out by on their own, right? That are, are basic and easy to understand. I would want to cover things that people actually might find confusing. Oh, wait, I can Blade Flurry when I'm leaving stealth, and it still lets me get that. Okay. That, uh, that makes my life a little bit easier. Doing that. Okay... Uh, I'm not going to use Blade Flurry here because I want to have it. Look at how fast these mobs are dying. Oh yeah, the gear... Having gear there, it's night and day. 
Uh, I also need to fix one of my keybinds. Extra action buttons. Uh, where's vehicle controls? Miscellaneous. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out is how to make that flame button have a bind. Action bar. Extra action button one. Is it that? Uh, and now, of course, I'm blanking on what I had it bound to. Um, I think it was Shift Z. Yeah, I think I had it bound to Shift Z. All right. Now I can do ambush coming out of. Uh, Oh yeah, that is sweet. Having triple ambush with blade flurry coming out of stealth, that does a lot of damage. And now, you know, stuff is actually it's actually dying pretty quickly with all this new gear I bought. I think this was definitely a better investment than getting like gun shoes and golem gliders. Yeah. My keybind was shifty. It's one of those funny things where when I when that pop-up happens, like the little set fire to the buildings pop-up, I can tell what my keybind is on my main account because I just I go to press it and my fingers instinctively move to the keybind that I'm used to pressing. So when I'm just thinking about it, I'm like, what did I have bounds or for my bind for that? I can't remember it. But then when I go to press the button and my fingers immediately go to shift C, I'm like, okay, yep, yeah, that was it. And it's just funny how, you know, the human brain works sometimes. That like, you know, my fingers have better memory in that case than my actual fucking brain. All right, Harlan from the future, chiming in real quick, just letting you know I'm skipping ahead slightly. I've cut out about 15 minutes here just because I kind of talked a little bit too extensively about, yo, what are my video plans going to be? And it was just, I don't know. It, it wasn't like a terrible rant, just wasn't extremely interesting. And like I said before, I have to decide what makes the cut and what doesn't because I am trying to get this thing under nine hours and... uh I, I'm having to make some real tight shaves here. I'm especially pissed off at Razageth because uh, one thing that I didn't mention is my raid actually failed to re-clear this week. Um, we technically only raided one of our two uh, normal knights, so uh, if we had um, gone through with our second raid night, uh, we probably would have actually re-cleared because we've been doing one night re-clears for a while now on Mythic, and... Uh, in one case, we even cleared in three hours. We got out of there early. Felt awesome. Uh, but then last night, because Razageth things, uh, or it wasn't last night. At this point, it was two nights ago. Because of Razageth things, actually three nights ago? Uh, two and a half nights ago. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily blame everybody because one of the, the main things that really pisses me off is the way they nerfed Razageth. They basically made it harder for guilds that al had already killed her. There are so many things you could have nerfed about that boss that just make it easier for everyone in general. And instead, they chose a nerf that makes it specifically easier for guilds that fail the damage checks. But in doing so, actually made it harder for my guild. Because one of the things, you know, it, it sounds like this is going to come off as like a weird flex, but okay. But my guild does too much damage. And, and genuinely, that caused problems for us. Because, like, no bullshit, one of the problems with the Razageth changes is by giving just, like, a flat fucking health reduction to a lot of the different adds, what you end up having happen is we've already predetermined our groups, and everybody has done this fight on, you know, the same assignments for hundreds of pulls, and then you get to the same thing again. We're all used to exactly where we plan out our cooldowns, and suddenly, because things are just dying infinitely faster our cooldowns are completely thrown out of whack and the worst one is it for people who haven't done mythic razageth in mythic razageth uh, intermission 2 there are these three big wind ads and the way that it went on prog is let me just spend my talent point real quick before i forget uh dancing steel and go night soccer all right uh, the way that it worked on Prague is uh, I don't really know exactly what the ranged group does because I'm I'm the tank that, you know, a lot of people call it the hit squad. Uh, I don't really know why it got that name, but that's what my raid leader calls it. So that's what I know it as. But there's like one group that fights a single ad and then like a ranged group that bounces between two ads and like baits Razageth's breath in a certain direction. And on my group, we 
do half of the health of this one ad, uh, then Rasageth breathes through the middle, we run away from it, dodge the breath, then the ad teleports. Um, then, uh, like, whenever the ads teleport, they spawn a bunch of little ads in their place. And, oh, let me quickly get a second ambush off. Nice. Uh, so they spawn a bunch of little ads in their place. And then we have um, everybody run into the middle, group up, and they get the ads get mass gripped. We nuke them down. Uh, and, yeah, we just kill them. If any, like, somewhat slip through, I have, like, Ring of Peace that I can use to try and recover it. Stuff like that. Basically, we get all the little ads killed. This is standard strategy, by the way. My guild doesn't do anything special. I'm only explaining this for the purposes of people who haven't done Mythic Razageth, which I would imagine is a lot of people, right? Um, and you kill all the ads, and then you go back to DPSing your ad. And the idea is you kind of get, like, all of the ads to, uh, like, really low health, and uh, you, you get them to, like, around 50%-ish, and then they teleport one more time. And then, ranged finishes off one ad, melee finishes off another ad, and you want them to die at roughly the same time. Because when one of the big wind ads dies, the other ones get buffed. And on that final set of wind ads, uh, you have them all group up in the center, and then a Rester Druid mass entangles them all. And the idea is you're effectively just trying to burn the big wind ads down before mass entanglement falls off. And then you have one final ad, because there's big three big wind ads, that is double buffed and is doing heavy pulsing damage and healers use cooldowns and stuff like that. Uh, and it teleports right into the melee group, and then everybody groups up and you just have the entire raid burn down that final ad. We chain Monk Ring of Pieces to keep the uh, little ads off us if needed, and then you kill that ad and Razageth transitions into the final phase. That's how it's supposed to go, and that's how it went for every single pull of Prague for us. But now... What's happening is we have so much damage that we are killing the first wind ad, and it's not even like we have so much damage. We do so much damage, and the health nerfs from the recent changes uh, make it so the ads die really fast. We are killing one of the wind ads before it even teleports a single time. And what's happening is then for the entire 30 seconds of the fight where, you know, we're normally killing those little stormling ads in the center and we're, like, trying to lower the ads and get them to die at the same time, right? That entire part of the fight, a good 30, 45 seconds, you have two mega-buffed wind, ad wind ads that are just demolishing the raid. So we're just pushing way too fast, and it's causing problems for the healers. So that is not an, you know, insurmountable thing. You know, the, the solution there is you just stop damage. But still, it, it's one of those things where we, by the time we got there, uh, so we had a few people who were still new to the fight who were, like, trialing or weren't there for, like, the first kill. And, you know, they're still making mistakes on, like, Phase 1 and Intermission 1, uh, which, you know, that's just Mythic Reclear in a nutshell. You're going to have people who are still learning the fight, who are still trying to figure it out. There's going to be some learning pains. That's expected. But then, basically, our first three pulls, when we actually got to uh, Intermission 2 were completely ruined because, you know, we were still trying to figure out exactly, you know, where we could put our cooldowns. And we even had one case where, like, my defensives just weren't up. And, you know, admittedly, I could have planned ahead, but right? But it's it's one of those things where when you've been doing the same thing for 200 pulls, you don't really think about, like, oh, because the ads got their health reduced by 15%, that means we are going to phase approximately 20 seconds early, which means that my Dampen Harm will still have 10 seconds left on its cooldown by the time I get to this one part of the fight, meaning I will have zero defensives to survive this massive burst of damage, and I should probably delay my CDs or rearrange them or something. You don't think about that, right? That's the kind of thing that when you eat shit and die to it, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, I, I didn't really consider how the health nerfs impacted my defensive usage two phases later into the fight, because everything, you know, sinks with each other. But then, you know, it, it, that caused one wipe, right? And then we had another really unlucky phase three wipe, and in the end, we didn't finish off Razageth. We killed every other boss on Reclear, but Razageth was, um, it was like three hours, yeah, literally, I wouldn't say three hours, but two and a half hours of our Reclear was just wiping the Razageth, which... You know, wasn't fun, right? It was kind of miserable. That's how it goes. Um, but the end result was that uh, I, I don't know for sure if I think what happened, I don't think people in my raid called out intentionally, but I think a lot of people, because we've been like one night clearing for three weeks now, just kind of assumed, oh, we're going to one night reclear again and made plans like they made dinner plans or work plans or babysitting plans in one case. 
And then suddenly there's like six people like, uh, yeah, I have plans Thursday night at raid time. I won't be able to make it. Uh, so our raid leader was just like, uh, fuck it. Okay, well, we're canceling raid for Thursday and we're not re-clearing this week, which, I mean, if I'm honest, I, I was really happy because I really didn't want to do Razageth, man. It's like, it, it is, Razageth may be one of, if not my least favorite bosses to re-kill of all time. It is just such an unfun boss. Like, a lot of times, you know, progression on certain fights can be a bit miserable. Like, one that surprises me is Dathia. I actually really like re-killing Dathia. Re-killing Dathia is fun. I hated Dathia on Prague. Dathia fucking sucked on Prague. It was easily my least favorite fight of the tier. Razageth came close, though, for actual Prague. Um, but Dathia re-kills are actually really fun. Because we've been using a strategy where we only do one platform, and then the end of the Dathia fight, just have like a million fucking tornadoes zigzagging all over the place. If one tornado hits you, you're dead. And it's like this really tight DPS race to the finish. And it's a really, really fun strategy. I really enjoy doing it. Uh, so I actually like that. That's kind of one of those fun situations where one of the bosses that I have the most fun in on ReClear is one of the ones I hated the most. Uh, Kurog is interesting too. We actually had... Uh, we had, I think, the fifth fastest kill on Mythic Kurog on one of our reclear pulls because I, I actually fucked up. And yeah, I wanted to pick this. Maybe it upgrades. It didn't. Yeah, not a big deal. Um, but I actually fucked up. So for anyone who doesn't know how Mythic Kurog works, there is a really annoying mechanic where you have to, as a tank, precisely time the exact moment in which you drag him into the next section of the room because basically the way that his uh, mechanic works with his add summons is he will um I'm, i might die here i'm actually kind of getting fucked up um but he summons an ad whenever he moves into a new phase of the fight so like on heroic you can kind of freely move karag between the phases he'll do a burst of damage whenever he transitions so you can't do it too much but you are at least incentivized to drag Karag into different phases and experiment. Like, generally, the heroic strat, um, from what I've seen, almost died there, but we're good. Uh, generally, the heroic strat is, like, you start in Storm and move into Fire. I've seen a lot of different groups. But basically, at, like, 15 stacks, you transition. On Mythic, you don't move phases at all until the intermission. You just go all the way up to 30 stacks and then only do that one intermission. But the problem with that is... Whenever you get to the intermission, if you don't have at least one stack in another element, so on Mythic, we start fire. That's the general strategy. I think it's the strategy literally everybody uses. Um, but we start fire, and because he starts with stacks and fire, when he gets to the first intermission, he will always summon a big fire ad. Uh, so that you get guaranteed. But then you specifically want to make sure... Can I shiv that buff off? I can't. Okay. Uh, you specifically want to make sure that he doesn't summon, um, what's it called? Storm and Ice together. Um, yeah, am I, am I missing? I think, yeah, it's Storm and Ice. And technically speaking, getting Ice and Fire at the same time is really, really bad. So you want to do Storm and Fire in the first set. And because you never spend any time whatsoever in Storm, that's one of the other reasons why you want to do it. Because you're going to spend the entirety of the second phase one in that fight in Earth phase anyway. But Storm phase is so overtuned and so toxic that nobody does it. Uh, you literally completely skip it. So as a tank, what you need to do to make this fight work is you need to drag the boss into Storm phase like a millisecond. It's not literally a millisecond, but just like a few seconds right before he transitions into intermission. Uh, in order to get him one stack of the storm mechanic. But you need to do it at a precise time, because if you do it um, if you do it too late, then he won't get one stack, and he will summon a random ad, which could be the storm ad. Uh, it picks a random one of the three. So you might get lucky, it might RNG in the storm, and then your pull is saved. Uh, but there is a chance that he picks a different one, and then you're kind of fucked, especially on proc. You're really fucked. Uh, because you need to have it be Storm, because if it is, uh, if it is later on in the fight Storm and, uh, Ice at the same time, you're just Omega fucked, because there's, like, a stack mechanic, and at the same time there's a spread mechanic, if you have both of those at the same time, really nasty, um, you need to get that correct. However, our damage for Kurog is at a point where we can just kill him before he enters the, uh, the second intermission, so we kill him... 
in Earth phase. Basically, we start fire, we do first intermission, and then we go into Earth, and we kill him before he transitions again. And because of that, uh, it doesn't really matter which of the adds we get. So, we could get, in theory, ice and fire. Ice and fire would probably still be a wipe, because the ice mechanic is absolutely brutal if you aren't just, like, nuking it down. Um, but ice and er, fire and earth, in particular, is a doable combo. The only reason you don't do that on Prague is because you want to make sure that you have Earth and Ice at the same time, because Earth is like the least, it's like the lowest impact one, so you want to do it with Ice, which is the highest impact one, and there's no really bad overlaps. So, all that to say, uh, I fucked up, and I pulled him uh, too late, so he didn't get a stack of the debuff, and we got Earth in addition to Fire. And then... Uh, at first, I was like, oh, fuck, I guess we have to wipe. And my guild leader was like, ah, just fucking go with it, right? Because we can kill him in Earth anyway. And some of our DPS just went absolutely mental and demolished the Earth adds. Because the Earth adds main mechanic is it summons a bunch of mini Earth adds that you have to DPS down. And they just cleave those things to shreds. So we blasted through that intermission and then we killed in Earth phase again. And it ended up being, like, the fifth fastest kill for that boss. All because I fucked up. So that was at least neat, right? Technically, I still was kicking myself because I'm like, I fucked the timing, goddammit. Um, I wanted to get it done right. Uh, but it was neat that because I fucked the timing, we got to do a different version of that boss, effectively, that we didn't do on prog. And it ended up working out really well. And then, of course, after the fact, you know, a bunch of people were like, oh, you know, Larice, you, you were just trying to help us get good parses, right? You know, that's the reason you messed the timing. It's like, oh yeah, oh, perfectly calculated. I totally meant to fuck up the timing on that. I was just trying to get you guys more pad in the Earth ads because, you know, I'm such a nice guy, right? Um, so I, at least I got to joke around like that. Uh, and of course, my DPS were happy because, you know, they got really good parses. Because normally you only fight like three or four targets in that intermission with like the little fire ads. But because of the Earth ads, they were fighting like six targets at once. That's like mega damage so very very nice but razageth reclear the main thing i was talking about can fucking suck my dick i hate razageth reclearing it is just absolute suffering it is pure misery uh i never want to do it and it is it is just not fun um yeah it, it's i mean the fight in general i think there are so many things where it's just misguided like the winds mechanic is just so frustrating because I, I I don't know. I, I, I feel like Heroic Razageth, the idea that they had with like the lightning puddles and, you know, you put your back to the lightning puddle and get knocked into it. I don't understand why they couldn't have just had one of those on Mythic. The only reason that I can see that like some people in my guild have like thrown around the idea of as to why the little lightning puddle isn't a mechanic on Mythic is because they wanted to force people to bring evokers to utilize evokers utility to utilize um rescue and time spiral and stuff like that to make sure that people are actually using that as a way to like show off their fancy new class which is just such toxic design like designing the fight around one particular class instead of just making a good fight first and like i don't know thinking about potential class interactions second i i absolutely hate it because the end result, right? Thankfully, I play a monk, so I don't need to worry about that stuff too much. But it's just such a toxic fight for anybody who doesn't have um, movement options, and it's still not fun for me. Like, I don't like having to cheat torpedo against the winds and, like, perfectly time my transcendence and stuff like that. So I get back into position and I drop my ring of peace at the right angle, because even if I stay on the platform but I'm slightly off, I fuck my ring of peace and then, you know, the, the interrupts get messy and also the fact that another really annoying thing that we've been struggling with a lot on read clear surprisingly i i think it's like a comp thing because i think a lot of the people that we had in on the kill that were really good at dealing with the um the spark mechanic the one where you have to like interrupt the little guys to make them disappear a lot of our players that really were on top of that and dealt with it whenever they could they are now either not in on replay because they don't want to be, they want to take a break, or they have stopped playing WoW. Like, Koji was always on top of that, right? Um, so we've been having a lot of uh, a lot of sparks go off, 
And that is the most frustrating thing to wipe to you when you're deep into P2 and you finally got a really good pull with like no deaths and suddenly a spark goes off and it's just like, okay, we're all dead. Uh, the fact that that mechanic is designed to be a, a pass fail, fail check for something like that is so, so toxic. Because honestly, the thing about mechanics like that where it just frustrates whoa, words frustrates me to no end that it's designed to instantly wipe you is... There are so many ways to make that a more engaging mechanic to deal with besides, like, fuck you, you're dead. Because on actual, like, first kills, right, people are going to be probably taking a bunch of damage from other sources. It, even if it's just a very heavy dot that it puts on you for a few seconds, that'll probably still kill a bunch of people. But the problem is we'll now have pulls where everybody's completely healthy and we're totally fine, we've nailed every other mechanic, and one spark goes off, and it puts effectively an unhealable 30 second long dot on the entire raid, which it just kills you. It doesn't matter if you start at full health and your healers are absolute gods, you will just die. And especially the times when that happens, I, I mean, maybe it's recoverable, but a lot of times it's like you get that dot into a Tempest Wing or into Storm Surge, and you just cannot heal through that at all. Which is why I think, like, if it was just a nasty dot that was tuned to be healable, right? That way, if you let two sparks go off, well, then, you know, you die, right? I think if you fail more than one, then, yeah, that should be a wipe. But the amount of times when my raid has wiped the sparks, uh, I hate this part. Uh, I, I actually don't think we've had a single wipe to two sparks going off in a very, very long time. Almost universally, whenever a spark does go off, it's just one. It's one stray spark all the way in the back that got missed by Ring of Frost and Ring of Peace. And people tried to interrupt it, but, you know, weren't able to make it there in time. And then the final cast slips through without anybody getting it. And then we just die. So if two stacks was a wipe, then it would force you to do the mechanic correctly. Like you couldn't cheese it. You couldn't just let one go off. Um, but if one goes off and honestly what you could even do is make it so if the spark has three stacks it does more damage i is that i don't think it even works like that which like that would intuitively make sense um razageth mythic uh yeah i'm gonna do the rescue all in humber umber hide quest why not uh razageth mythic let's see it's volatile current right burst yeah so like let's say that this dealt first of all every one second for 30 seconds is toxic but if this was like every one second for five seconds um that would still be really nasty and that would still in many cases wipe your raid but one second for 30 seconds doing that much damage that is just unhealable um so i think a way that you could do it is if this like the more stacks of this buff and frankly you could just add that right now it wouldn't change anything right because it's already an insta wipe even if it's one spark going off with one stack of volatile remaining so that's already a wipe right so i don't see why they can't just make it so the basically if you have three stacks of volatile it insta kills your raid this deals like you know 300,000 damage every one second and then maybe lower this so it scales up exponentially. So this could be like baseline it deals, let's say, 30,000 damage to all players every one second for 15 seconds. And then for every spark of volatile it still has on it, this will go up in damage by, I don't know, um, let's say like 200% or something like that. Um, so then if you have two, uh, if, if you've only interrupted this thing once before it explodes, it deals like 90k per tick. And then, uh, what is 200% of nine or 200 times 90? I don't fucking know. I don't really yet. Yeah, I don't want to think about what 200% more of 90 is. My brain can't do that much math right now. It's too late at night. Um, but you know, you get my point, right? 200% additional damage on top of 90,000 would already be infinitely more than this. And it would insta-kill your raid, just like it already does. But at least what this would do is it would mean that in those situations where you have like a one stack spark going off, like out in Africa, it's not quite as punishing. And it is something you can recover from. Right now, it's just one person misses their final kick. You're done. Wipe. 
and it, it is the most tilting thing to wipe to ever. It doesn't help that Razageth is another one of those really, really long fights, and I just don't know why they keep making these fights. Like, just 10 minute long slogs that nobody enjoys. Like, people complained about Sylvanas, and at least Sylvanas had like an entertaining finish, but I still hated the whole thing. It was never fun when you like make it to the final chain of Sylvanas P2, and then like, you know, one person gets clipped by waves and dies, and another person falls off, and you're just like, oh, there was our pull. And it, it is so, so tilting. Um, I think Sylvanas was an infinitely better fight than Razageth, but it still had a lot of problems. But they're just like, I don't know, man. There, there's so many things about Razageth that I just hate. Uh, I also, the tank buster on phase three is so annoying. I hate the way that like it, it is. So to, to explain why I find it so annoying, I think like conceptually the ideal, the idea of the tank needs to mitigate their damage to um, not make the raid explode. It sounds cool in theory. It's one of those things where you could be like, oh, that's a neat idea, right? Like the tank needs to make sure that they take less damage, not to keep themselves alive, but to keep the raid alive. Cause you can live it and your raid still blows up. That's, that's a neat concept. Okay, I see what Blizzard was going for there. But the problem is you have like certain classes that just don't have as good defensives. And, you know, in, in my case, my raid comp is Blood DK Brewmaster, which we actually do have pretty good uh, ways to defend against that. But, um, whatchamacallit, like if, uh, uh, which, if I'm taking a ton of damage, like, I can't use any of my externals for other sources of damage. I Even if I am almost in danger of dying, uh, when, like, I, I'm getting hit by auto attacks from Razageth, which for me is the scariest part of that phase. Like, I barely take any damage during Thunderous Blast, which is the idea, right? But even if I were to take a Thunderous Blast raw without, like, mitigating it at all, I would still not die. I would still be sitting pretty. The rest of the raid would die, though. But it feels really bad as a tank when, like, I'm getting my ass beat and there's nothing I can do about it because I need to hold all of my defensives for that one part of the fight. I I mean, I don't really know how you change that without fundamentally changing the way the mechanic works, so I don't know. Um, but I also just hate how uh, this is, like, one of those, I, I guess you could say, skill issue things. Like, me and my co-tank could have played around it. But I was getting targeted by the... Um, by the, the Razageth Frontal, uh, the, the big tank blast, Thunderous Blast, and there was a tornado that was about to touch the boss, and I ran in to soak the tornado. One thing I hate about Razageth, though, actually, I, I'm going to interrupt myself just to say, fuck the tornado visual. I don't understand how more people aren't complaining about this. Like, I, I remember I watched Max's video on, like, talking about all of the different Vault of the Incarnates bosses, and he was talking about how much he hates Razageth, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait for him to talk about how dog shit the visual is on the Tornadoes in P3. And he just didn't even mention it. And I'm like, is this just a me thing? Am I the only one who thinks that th those Tornadoes are fucking garbage? Like, they are impossible to see against the background. It is so terrible. It's another classic example of Blizzard using just terrible colors on their abilities. I don't get why it can't be any other color except the exact fucking tone as the floor. Just why? I, I I absolutely despise that tornado mechanic. Not because I think it's a bad mechanic, but because it's so hard to see. And there are times where people are yelling, tornado going into boss, tornado going into boss, and I just can't fucking see it. And I'm looking around and I'm like, where? I don't see a tornado because everything fucking blends in on this dog shit fight. And all that to say, that that's like a mini rant that I, I just had to get that one out of my system. But... We, uh, me and my co-tank were both going for this tornado that was about to hit Razageth, and we both pretty much intercepted it at the exact same time before it went in, but because my co-tank was barely on top of my hitbox when the Thunderous Blast went out, he got clipped by the first tick of it, and he didn't blow up the raid, because he, um, I, he had, like, a defensive on, so it didn't, um, it didn't, like, one-shot him or anything. Uh, so, you know, the raid didn't explode, but then he had thunderous armor on him. So when he went to take the other one, even through externals, he took like half his health and damage. And that was enough to instantly kill everybody else in the raid. And that's a really frustrating way to wipe, especially considering it didn't kill us for another like minute or so. And once again, I mean, that's the kind of thing where there are obviously ways to play around it. There are ways that you can just not make that mistake. 
but it still felt like a really frustrating way to lose a pull. So I'm going to complain about it anyway. As you know, what else am I going to do during this run, right? And uh, we're close to the end of Wad. I'm going to hit 38 right towards the end here. I'm going to do a bit more of Gorgrond. What I'm probably going to do is Gorgrond up to... Uh, I'm going to do like all of this stuff, like the Ogre Place and all the Rexar intro quests. I'm not going to go all the way up here. And I'm going to do probably Crimson Fen. I'll get to around level 42, 43 before I leave because this is definitely more efficient than BFA. And then I will go to BFA and we will do Voldoon up until the end of Voldoon, however long that takes. So I got Exploration XP. And, um, and yeah, then after Voldoon, if I still have a bit longer to go, I will do uh, Zandalar as a way to finish things off. Let's see, what do I want to spend my points on? Improved Ambush. Um, I need Dead and Nerves. Yeah, and then Improved Main Gauche. I think that's how you say it. Gauche. It's a fun word to say. Maybe it's Gosh, and I'm just like pronouncing it completely wrong. Um, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, what I think is because at least for this immediate moment, I kind of need to take a break. It's one of those things where... It's, how long have I been recording? At this point, I've been recording. Uh, this session has been two hours. And I've been talking for maybe, like, a little over one hour. Uh, Savage Bike Club. Uh, but still, even though it's, like, one hour technically isn't as long as, like, you know, a traditional speedrun. Normally, I have to talk for, like, three or four. It still gets, like, grading. Especially because I need to focus on the run. It's, like, really stressful focusing on both the run and what I'm saying at the same time. So I need to take at least a short break. And one thing that I, I will do because uh, here, let me, um, I don't want to make Beast watch my home. So I have my garrison hearth. Uh, yeah, one thing that I'll do is I'm going to, I'll just, I'll stop here for now. I'll pause the timer. Uh, when I resume, we're going to do a little bit of fast forwarding and maybe I'll, uh, I'll do some talking over it. I might just cut out this footage. We'll see. Uh, because I do need to make sure this is under 10 hours, and more realistically, I need to make sure this is under, like, 9 hours, because videos longer than 8 hours tend to just get fucked on YouTube, like I said before. And we're already at 8 hours, um, so I've already had to speed up a little bit of the footage. I think what I might do is, just because you've seen Gorgrond a million times, I'm just going to cut that part out. Uh, I'm not going to show it, and then we'll pick up when I'm level 43, and I'm entering BFA. I've already talked about exactly what I'm going to do here. Standard Gorgrond routing. I'm going to do all this shit. I'll probably give a quick recap on if anything special happens uh, when I get there. Um, but yeah, basically just doing Gorgrond up to like 42, 43. And then we'll swap to BFA and then I will resume recording. All right, I am back. So we are, well, physically in the same spot that we left off, I think... Last time I was recording, I was actually in Beast Watch, but obviously a lot has happened since then. I'm now level 43. I've cleared out most of the quests here. As I mentioned, I stopped around the Rexar area. Uh, did a lot of stuff here. I think I picked, yeah, picked all my talents, got all this stuff set up. Um, and you'll also notice, uh, real quick, I can show, it's at this point that the quests turn green. Now, you still get reduced experience from the stuff in Gorgrond, but I think it is kind of important to consider, like, when I say that Gurgrond is a really good zone, a lot of people think, like, ah, oh, yeah, but isn't, like, this one other zone, like, almost as good? Um, oh, yeah, and for the record, I still forgot to <laughs> change my Hearthstone, so we're gonna go do that now, right? It's uh, the last time I should really have to do this, thankfully. Um, but I will need to do, once again, the, uh, the Flight of Shame from the sludge fields all the way back to under city <laughs> i've this is bad man i don't know how many times i've made this same mistake in one run it's like you think that by the third time i go back to orgamar i'd think hey you should set your hearthstone there but i just keep forgetting and i, I don't fucking know i don't know but yeah what i was saying before is um uh gorgrond is just that good of a zone like even with all the nerfs it had before right even on top of that, and eating effectively a slight XP reduction, it's still really good. Now, once the quests turn green, they actually give less experience. So, at yellow, the quests are giving effectively equivalent experience to level 40. So, up until, like, the end of 42, you're still gaining level 40's worth of experience from Gorgrond. 
Uh, and considering how good of a zone Gorgrund is, just in terms of quest density, it's just worth staying there, uh, at least for those few levels. But obviously, at this point, after I turned in all my quests, now I am actually gaining reduced experience. But that is how good, like, Gorgrond, Hillsbrad, and Silverpine are. Even when you are getting slightly reduced experience from them, because they are not scaling, they are still better than a lot of alternatives. Now, you could argue, right, that... Um, Technically speaking, maybe Gorgrond isn't as efficient at um, at a reduced XP scaling compared to, like, Valshara. But the other thing that you need to consider is you're already in Gorgrond. Because you're already... Well, what about words? You're already going to be doing Gorgrond from, like, levels 36 to, to 40, regardless. So you can, technically speaking, do Legion quests from 40 to 45. And I actually experimented with this in those early runs I did. The, you know, the other characters, the Paladin and the Druid. Um, I actually experimented with going to, uh, Legion, and I think I actually did High Mountain, not Valshara, uh, which is not terrible, but not quite as fast. Valshara still isn't amazing, but it's like, you know, if we're really gonna, um, decide on which one is slightly better, it, it is ultimately going to be, um, Valshara, right? And, uh, I actually, I helped my sister do that when we were leveling, but the thing about it is, for starters, if we're assuming it's a fresh account, you need to complete the Legion introduction once on your account if you want to get access to Legion zones. And it's terrible XP. It is god-awful XP. It's probably the worst of all of the intros. Like, even the BFA intro is... Actually, no, the BFA intro is pretty shit. Uh, BFA intro and Legion intro are, are close. But, like, the Ma intro gives more experience than the Legion and BFA intros to give you an idea on how fucking terrible it is for time investment. That being said, of course, you can skip those after the fact. Uh, so, in my actual route, I do not run the Legion intro. You skip it, and you go straight to Dalaran and get the Dalaran Hearthstone. Now, you could maybe make the argument that doing the Legion intro early and getting the dollar on Hearthstone on a class like this that doesn't have the ability to bypass it, and then maybe doing Valshara at level 40 could be worth it, but I think it's one of those things where the only merit I could actually see to doing that would be if you wanted to get the Legion introduction out of the way, like on your account. So if you basically were like, well, in the future, if I want to level a bunch of characters, I'm going to have to do it anyway so that I can easily get the dollar on Hearthstone on alts, you know, you might as well get it done. I could honestly see that logic. I, I would not argue with you. I would say that is a pretty logical conclusion. Uh, one thing we're going to do now, we're once again going to buy items uh, to replace everything. So first things first, I'm going to buy uh, same thing. I'll just do this as I talk. Just want to at least comment on the fact that I am doing it. Um... But yeah, like, I could genuinely understand the logic in saying, well, I want to make sure that I unlock the Legion intro, and in that case, I don't even think you would bother still questing in High Mountain or Valshara. I think the only reason to do that would specifically be to unlock the... Uh, why are there no fucking Agi weapons, man? What the hell? I can't use a dagger. We already learned that. That's strength, that's intellect. Man, all these fucking intellect and strength axes. What in the world? Intellect, intellect, intellect. Goodness gracious. Uh, that's agi. It's a little bit on the pricey end. Do I have any better weapons? No. I, I Weapons especially, I... I need to shell out for that. I think... I think I can use a knife in my offhand, is what we learned. Because I need a main hand... Uh, for dispatch to work properly, so that one is important. But offhand, I'm pretty sure it can be a dagger. So I'm just going to do that. And yeah, it looks like dispatch is still enabled, so that's good. Uh, anyways, back to what I was saying. All right, yeah. So, it, honestly, when I did it before, it wasn't terrible. In fact, because Legion goes up to 48... You know, it, it gets to the point where you can actually do, or Legion goes up to 45 naturally, you can do the quests up to 48, kind of like how I did WAD up to 43. So there's an argument to be made that, like, technically speaking, if you leave WAD at 40 and you do the Legion intro to unlock it permanently on your account, you're maybe losing a little bit of time in the immediate moment, but you're arguably saving time in the long run because you have to do it at some point. And it's not bad, definitely is a solid option. And quickly check to see if there's any slots that I don't need to replace. No, I definitely need, ideally, an item in every slot. 
But um, all that to say, I don't really think it's worth it. Uh, I would rather just do a Legion intro on at max level at some point to get it unlocked for my alts in the future. Somebody might disagree, so I at least wanted to mention that it is a thing you can do. Uh, but I would say, even let's say you already had the Dalaran Hearthstone unlocked or something like that, for whatever reason, you, you happen to do that already, and you were able to just completely skip it. Let's see, uh, okay, I need belt, yeah. Uh, I still don't think it would be worth swapping to Legion, because you're still going to have to swap to BFA eventually, right? So it's not like you really gain much in that like short amount of time. Superior leggings I need. Let me just at least keep... Because we're trying to keep a mental track of which items I need to buy. A uh, hood I need. Yep. Um, shoulders. Yep, I need that. I think that's everything. I got gloves. I'm missing bracers, right? Yeah, boots, gloves. Boots, gloves chest belts um pants just bracers i believe bindings of the harmonious that's a little bit on the pricey end i don't really want to shell out for that um is there a cheaper pair of bracers that's waistband scouting clothes yay 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 honestly at that point I'll just I'll, I'll replace the bracers eventually. Not worth because I still need money for uh, ritual cape. That's intellect, intellect. That's too pricey. Firebond gorget too pricey. Glimmer hoof drape. Uh, Seventy nine gold. Can I get something for cheaper? Oh, here we go. Oh fuck, that's one of those capes. Uh, uh yeah, I'll take that. One of four. Yeah, that's still. Still a sizable upgrade for 34 gold. That's cheap enough. I'll take it. Uh, let's go for neck. What can I get for this? Breach of the Aurora. 4 gold. Agi neck, 97 item level. Yeah, that's a good deal. Uh, finger. What can I get for that? Finger. Ooh, pricey. Very, very pricey. Uh, it's 94 item level. 26 item level. Let's go for this one. Yeah. This is... That's a minor upgrade. It's 16 gold. Uh, what's this? That's about the same stats, actually. Uh, I'll go for the 16 gold one. Yeah, honestly, the stat upgrade on this is trivial. It's really not great. But because it is so cheap, honestly, might as well. And last but certainly not least, we'll check trinkets just because... If I can find something to replace six demon bag, this trinket is not very good. Um, no, it looks like the only thing that I could possibly replace it with is another six demon bag. Uh, yeah, it sucks that you don't really get many great trinkets while leveling up. Not a whole lot of options here. And now, uh, for my last bit of gold, obviously you can see here I don't have enough to buy uh, advanced flying. Right, so I'm not going to invest in that. Instead, I'm going to spend my last bit on Dark Moon quest items. Because one thing I want to do is I want to now use everything that I can to get free XP. And the nice thing about the Dark Moon quest items is not only are they free XP, but they also give me the Dark Moon top hats. And Dark Moon top hats mean I don't need to come back to Dark Moon Fair constantly. So we should be able to just power through the rest of the uh, questing process without having to constantly come back here, which would be very nice. Ornate weapon, uh, mysterious grimoire, and I think that's all, yeah, that's all we can afford for now. Might buy some other items later on. How does that get moved over? Uh, but I think this will be enough to carry us through to the end. I also, earlier when I stopped in Orgrimmar, before I forgot, I picked up these items. I decided to go for tailoring and blacksmithing because thermal anvils were really cheap. So let's uh, put all this stuff on. Put on that belt. Put that. Boop. 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 And manually select the ring. Alright, decent.
Uh, and then just get rid of all of this junk. All right. So take these things. We are going to head to Darkman Fair. Then I'm going to... Uh, ooh. Um... This is problematic. I didn't consider the fact that my hearthstone would not be up. Uh, how do I want to go about this? Um, no real good way to handle this. I have to go to the Darkman Fair regardless. I'm gonna get that 10% XP buff. Uh, is there another way to get to BFA content? try and think of something. I think, honestly, the only thing I can do is just fly back from Mulgor, which, you know, that's what I gotta do, that's what I gotta do. But, eh. Yeah, that's... That's it. I wish I had thought of that ahead of time, but... Is what it is. Uh, I don't really think there was much else I could have done except manually fly to Warspear. Um, yeah, there, there's no fast way to get to Dazara lore. At least not on a fresh account, right? Like, th there's maybe some toys I could use if this was on my main account, but, well, it's not. So, is what it is. Minor time loss. We've already had multiple minor time losses this run. What's one more? Plant that Darkman banner. Uh, before I turn in the quest, I need to make sure I get the XP buff. You know, just free bonus XP. So the main reason I'm leaving these quests till now is because what I want to do is limit the my time in BFA as much as possible. I want to make sure I spend... Very, very little time there. So, I'm going to wait to turn in all this stuff until right now, because this is when I'm done with WAD and all the other zones, and I can just go straight to BFA. Um, but yeah, uh, the nice thing is, you know, we did all of this stuff earlier. I unlocked, um, I unlocked BFA. I got, you know, Tsar Lore set up. So, in theory, I could just take the portal. Uh, that would require me to get back to org, so I would need to think if there's, like, another portal I can take. And I don't really think there is. Um, none that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, which, you know, it's whatever. We'll just go back there normally. Um, it would be nice if I had artisan riding, but is what it is. I think, in theory, one thing you could probably do if you really want to, I think you can do all of the different profession quests. Now, I don't know if from a speedrunning perspective it would be worth it to, like, abandon professions, but, you know, the main reason I do tailoring and blacksmithing is because you just need to buy the, um, you, you just need to buy the items. So tailoring, it's like if before starting a run, I mail myself over the, uh, what are the items? It's like red dye, blue dye, and coarse thread. If I just send that to myself, then I don't need to worry about uh, prepping anything. Same with a thermal anvil. The only thing you need for blacksmithing is the ability to uh, create these horseshoes, which just requires a thermal anvil. You just deploy it, you use the quest item, and you're good to go. So that makes it really convenient. And you can only do two at a time, plus cooking. Obviously, cooking is another free one. Um, what I can do is, yeah, this, deploy the thermal anvil, and then create these things. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could probably come back later on uh, and, or if you were to do this in an actual run, you would probably start with blacksmithing and tailoring, and then later on you would come back with, like, engineering and, uh, I don't know, something else, jewel crafting, maybe? And you would do those profession quests later on. But really, it's like, I just, I don't see the point. Because at that point, you're adding travel time to go pick up those quests, so, you know, you need to consider, for a single quest's worth of experience, is that really worth it? And I, I don't think so. I don't even think it's that efficient to do the Darkmoon Profession uh, quests. Like, I do it because why not? It is efficient to do at least these ones. But honestly, the main reason why I even do these is because you can just effectively complete them for free. I just treat them as another Darkmoon quest item. Um, now I need to figure out what I'm going to do for this. Uh, I will just have to go to Mulgore. And I don't really think there's anywhere special I can go that would provide me with a teleport. Um, 
I'll just yeah, have to head to Orgrimmar. Not really much else to it. Oh, <sighs> is what it is. And then we can, before I forget, I want to abandon all of my Gorgron quests. Uh, we are thankfully in the home stretch now. I think we're we're close to done, and it's honestly my my projections weren't super far off because we're at we're at like ten hours or we're gonna be at ten hours pretty close to the end. I think based on my current time, I would suspect that it's going to take me about eleven hours, maybe ten and a half hours. I think ten hours forty minutes feels right. It feels like if, what I would guess, because I think, like, by the end of Voldoon, I will be close to done, and I think Voldoon takes about an hour and a half, if I'm doing it correctly. Maybe a little bit longer as Rogue, which is why I would say up to 11 hours. But considering my initial projection, which, I don't know, maybe some people thought I was kidding, but my initial projection for the run was honestly 10 hours. Uh, when I did... Back in Shadowlands, I did a run um, 1 to 50 on a mage. I'm, I've mentioned that a few times, because this reminds me a lot of the run I did on my mage. And that one took me about 14 hours, 10 to 50, or 1 to 50, which is effectively the same. It's roughly the same time. I think it's a little bit faster uh, 1 to 60 in Dragonflight compared to 1 to 50 in Shadowlands, ever so slightly faster. But for the most part, it's the same exact thing. But... Whereas Mage, I think I struggled with a lot. It's been hard to really, you know, I, I cut out a lot of the WAD stuff, but I actually, I'm really getting the feel for Outlaw Rogue. Like, I actually really enjoyed the end of Gorgrond. I was fucking owning. Like, once I get Bleed Flurry up, if I get, like, even decent procs with Roll the Bones at this point, every once in a while I might need to kite, but I feel like I can actually kill things pretty effectively. And I also bought a bunch of these Highland Pomegranates, and I, having this in between combats, just like one or two bites real quick, like every time in between combat, Crimson Vinyl, one or two bites of the food item, and it's like, it's fine, honestly. That's enough uh, sustain out of combat. So I feel like that has been pretty good. Uh, the Goblin Racial really helps. This thing is coming clutch. This does a lot of damage. I mean, it's uh, it, it's like as much as a, a finisher move, right, of... Um, how much is this? Like 377? So it's close to like a three-point dispatch. Not amazing. Um, definitely now that I've been... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit? Now that I have been getting more into the hang of the outlaw rotation, I feel like I've had to rely on Rocket Barrage less, which is good. But it still feels like a pretty strong ability uh, that I've gotten a lot of good use out of. So uh, pleasantly surprised with that. But overall, honestly, I... And not hating this run as much as I thought I would. It's been, there's been a lot of ups and downs. There's been points where I'm like really frustrated, like, oh, this is torture. And I think inherently that's not necessarily rogue. That is, um, that is just like no heirlooms and having to do all the gearing stuff on the fly. It is inherently a really boring process, which is why I like having heirlooms and why I recommend if you are leveling a bunch of alts, get some heirlooms, right? Like, if you're leveling one character and you only plan on leveling one character, I think you've been able to see, right, that I can get shit done with just greens. A lot of times, greens can, for the most part, match the power of heirlooms. It's less convenient because you have to go out and get them. But if all you care about is conserving gold and you just want to level one character, right? I spent a total of, what, 2,000 gold, maybe, across this entire run on getting green items and stuff like that. It really has not been that bad. Uh, whereas, like, getting a full set of heirlooms that scales up to max level is, like, tens of thousands of gold. Like, probably in the realm, like, if I wanted full heirlooms for this character on this account, it would cost me, like, 50 to 100k. Which sounds like a lot, until you realize that, like, for my part, I invested that gold, like, five years ago, and I've been reusing those same heirlooms a million times over ever since. Now, I'm definitely... Um, in the 0.01% of people who have gotten their money's worth out of heirlooms. Not to say that you have to be in there to get your money's out of it. It's just I've really gotten my money's worth of heirlooms. But I think if you level enough characters, like, you'll get your money's worth from it. Um, if you're comparing it to the cost of greens, maybe not. But I would say in terms of convenience, I value the convenience factor very highly. I value the fact that I can just slap those bad boys on and they're, like, my best in slot for the entire process. That means a lot to me. Uh, I really like having that uh, flexibility. So I would recommend it if it's something you're doing for a while, but obviously as I've shown in this, it's not required, but it does make the entire process quite a bit more tedious. Uh, we will unlock Voldoon. Go. 
And yeah, once again, if I had been, uh, if I had only just been starting BFA now, I can attest to this on the other character I did this run on, I would have had to unlock it from scratch. I would have had to do the entire uh, thing um, on my fresh account, right? And it would have sucked. Uh, but because I unlocked it at the start and got the Desire Lore Portal active, I'm pretty sure if I wanted to go back to... Um, yeah, if I wanted to go back to Sylvanas, like, in Orgrimmar, it would probably give me the option to do that questline still. Why can't... There we go. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to. You don't want to do the BFA intro. The BFA intro, like I said, really, really, really bad. Uh, and I will say I'm not 100% sure whether Zuldazar or Voldoon is faster I think it's pretty safe to say that Nazmir is the slowest of the three Horde zones. So that one I, I'm not even really too concerned about. I always hated Nazmir. A uh, lot of garbage in that zone. But Voldoon is pretty good. The only reason why I'm not entirely sure about Voldoon being faster or not is this intro RP. There's like a good five minutes that you actually have to spend before you get to Voldoon. So I would say... If we're talking about, like, if you had instant teleportation straight there, Voldoon would probably be faster. Pretty safe to say that. However, there's an argument to me that, like, since Zuldazar is still pretty good, maybe with, like, the five-minute RP cutout, Voldoon is still uh, not as efficient. I'll probably do more testing on this, and if I find that Zuldazar is, like, significantly more efficient than Voldoon, then I will maybe do another Horde run showcasing that, but... Uh, just based on my testing so far, I believe Voldoon is better. Uh, but I will be completely honest that I have not done as much testing as I would have liked. I wanted to do a bit more testing this week. And I just, with everything going on, I simply didn't have the time. So. I tested Voldoon. I knew Voldoon was fast. And I'm like, yeah. Worst case scenario, Zuldazar is, like, ever so slightly faster. I don't think it is. But I'm just saying, like, my math could not have been so wrong that Zuldazar ends up being, like, so much better than Voldoon, and Voldoon is actually shit. Voldoon's a pretty solid zone. But, like, here's the thing, right? I think this goes to show why, like, a lot of people will ask me, why does an X zone fit into the route? And this will be a good way to show that, because you'll be watching me do Voldoon, and you'll be like, wow, this zone actually seems pretty good. I wonder why you don't include this in the actual routing. But uh, one thing to keep in mind, by the way, you do not get, oh, well, I guess, technically speaking, um, you do not get the early skip into BFA unless you are starting on a level one character. It does not work for allied races. It only works if you are coming out of Exile's Reach. Now, that being said, if we were to do this in an actual speedrun format, which is what I was more referring to, you would have the BFA intro skip regardless, because I use the intro skips in all of my runs. So that's kind of a moot point. But even if you did the BFA intro skip, and you did all the setup and stuff like that, and then by the time you flew all the way out to Voldoon, like, by the time you get here, it may be a solid zone. But is Voldoon really that much better? I don't even think it's necessarily better than, you know, other options like Gorgrond and stuff like that. It is arguably worse. Is it that much worse? No, it's still a solid zone. But when you factor in, you know, the travel time and the fact that there's... BFA isn't a very cohesive continent. Um, it, you, I mean, Nazmir, like I said, I don't actually think is a good zone. Zuldazar is okay. I don't think it's, like, terrible, but it's, it's not amazing. So... Let, let's say that Voldoon was better than Gorgrond. Would you end up doing Voldoon? No, I, I don't actually don't think you would. Because you still have the Watt intro, you have the garrison setup stuff, which is good, right? And then you have Gorgrond, which is a really good zone. And then in my actual, you know, speedrun, obviously I had to cut it off here because, well, I hit level 43 and the stuff stopped scaling. But in a normal speedrun, I wouldn't have left Gorgrond at this point. In a normal speed run, I would have continued doing Hillsbrad Foothills all the way up to, um, like, level 40 or something like that. Uh, it, I probably could have gotten close to level 40 um, without, like, any of the uh, fancy XP modifiers. That's something a lot of people will, like, complain about. They're like, oh, the numbers on your leveling guide aren't exact. And it's like, yeah, it, it, it's never going to be perfectly exact for you. But that's why I have, like, a lot of buffer on my actual leveling guide, so that you can uh, quest somewhere else, should you... Oh, hey, there's a... 
There's a druid here, actually. Another person. I did not expect to see another person out here in BFA leveling zones. Uh, maybe he's also on a fresh account. But... Um, yeah, like, and look at this kill speed, right? Like, shit's just dying. This is, you know, honestly pretty good. Like, I sure, I have the NPC helping me out, so that helps a little bit. But compare this to earlier, where it was taking me, like, forever to kill a single mob, and now I'm able to actually do, like, semi-large pulls, and, like, with Blade Flurry, I can get shit to die. And it's, like, pretty solid. Um, still, in this case, like, I gotta kite a little bit, right? I, I really hope I don't eat my words there. I actually eat my words. Oh, that a main bugged. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't let Karma get the best of me, please. Oh, that would be so tragic if I just got fucking owned like that right after talking shit. Okay, I'm alive. All right. I, I, I'm fucking, I'm... I'm done. All right. All right, game. Uh, you've shown me the error of my ways. Talk shit, get hit. Um, I, I am- I'm very mortal. I understand that, you know, I can die at any moment and you can rip this Darkmoon Fair buff out of my cold dead hands. Uh, please let me live. I'm sorry that I got overconfident. Uh, but I mean, still, even still, I- I was doing infinitely better on that pull than I was doing earlier. Earlier, it was like, we were struggling hard. Uh, but whenever I get this thing, Buried Treasure, it's like, oh, baby, I can just fucking take on anything. Like, bring it the fuck on. I have infinite fucking energy regen, and I can just keep up the fucking dispatched blade flurries. It's beautiful. And I mean, here, obviously, there's a Feral Druid helping me out, so it's not accurate. But I've also been getting better about shifting into stealth before I start combat. And I, I think, like, between the eyes... It's just been letting me down. I feel like in many cases, just using Dispatch is better. Because sure, if you're in a long fight against like an elite mob or something, yeah, Between the Eyes is going to do work. But in so many of these cases, by the time I actually get enough combo points to spend on Between the Eyes, the target's just dead. And I would have ended up doing more damage. Just, um, mm, okay. Scary. No, we're good. Yeah, see in there, that case, Dispatch crit and just insta-killed it. Don't even need to worry about it. Uh, going to I can go up here, go around the top, and, uh, oh, 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 I feel so fucking fancy right now doing a little grappling hook tech, alright, just skipping right across that gap, so fucking fancy, alright, kill this guy, loot this, uh, item, and there should be a treasure chest up there that I can grab. I don't know how much XP this gives. BFA treasures are... Where is this? It's that thing. Right. Blade Flurry, Dispatch, Kick Lesser Healing Potion. I'm gonna just pop Evasion here just to not get my ass beat. And Dispatch, nice. Like, that feels so fucking clean. How much XP is this? No XP from BFA Treasures. Okay. Uh, ooh, I got Bracers off the first quest. Love to see it. That was the one green that I couldn't replace. Uh, Nisha's attack plans from this guy. Shift F. Uh, I'm just going to vanish to get these birds off me. Alright. So yeah, for a guy like this, putting... Um, between the eyes up is going to be worth it because he has enough health that I'll get the full value out of that. And then I think we'll do slice and dice here. Gonna cloak of shadows off the spit. Pistol shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still taking a lot of damage, but I can do crimson file. Yeah, it always feels bad whenever I don't get the uh, buried treasure proc. I am convinced buried treasure while leveling is the best one. Like at first, I thought you know maybe. Uh, I just haven't played around with the other ones yet. But, like, sure, having, like, Sinister Strike hit an additional time is great and all sometimes. And, you know, doing a bit more critical strike damage and whatnot, it's fine. But consistently, whenever I get Buried Treasure, it's just my damage fucking skyrockets. Because I'm just able to continually do Sinister Strike, Sinister Strike, Sinister Strike, then fucking Dispatch, and ah, oh, it's so good. It's so fucking good. I love that rock. 
Also, one thing I realized the other day, uh, and I never knew this while doing BFA, but uh, I went doing testing for this run and I did Voldoon. I picked up my phone, like, because I got a text the moment I picked up this quest, and I realized, oh shit, I forgot to bomb the guys. And I realized you don't need to do it. <laughs> it's completely optional. It's like the, uh, uh, what's it called? The thing in BFA, yeah, the BFA, uh, not BFA, WAD intro, where you don't actually need to shoot the cannons. They literally do nothing, but the game tells you to. It's like, oh, you better shoot those cannons to stop them, and it literally does not matter. Uh... I'm pretty sure every single time I did this quest back then, I used the firebomb because I thought it did something. But no, a lot of these quests, they give you the illusion of choice. You know, you think you're doing something by chucking it, but it, it actually does nothing. And to think I never would have realized if somebody hadn't texted me the moment I uh, started that quest the other day. Uh, definitely like weapons here. Let's go with... Um, Let's go with the sword just to be safe, because I don't know if fist weapons can be used with dispatch. Uh, we're going to replace my club. Right. Uh, all right. Do all this stuff. Um, oh, did I spend my talent point? I did not. Acrobatic strikes. Oh, that's going to be quite nice. And then... What did Koji tell me to spend these points on? I think he said heavy hitter, audacity... Um, triple threat? I want let, let me double check Koji's build that he linked me. I want to make sure I'm not fucking it up. Uh, no. Heavy hitter, audacity, and what am I missing? Oh, loaded dice. Uh, okay. Mm. I think I'll take loaded dice last. Like I can see the value now at loaded in loaded dice of like, you know, when I'm doing an elite with adrenaline rush, having at least two matches is definitely going to be a nice thing, but I don't really think it's necessary at all. Uh okay, can I Yeah, I want to make sure I open with blade flurry. All buried treasure. Let's fucking go. Oh, Oh, I am going to fucking delete these mobs. Oh, look at that damage. Look at that beautiful, beautiful cleave damage. It's so glorious. Oh, I am getting shit on, though. But, like, without Buried Treasure, I don't think I would have been able to put out that much damage during the Blade Flurry window. Like, across the entirety of, you know, my, my damage burst, it is possible that the other ones would give me just as much. But the fact that Buried Treasure allows me to just... Uh, put out an insane amount of damage in the short window of Blade Flurry, I think makes it really good. And it's just solid for sustain, right? You know, you can't go wrong with it. I just, I really like Buried Treasure so far. Uh, okay. Let me, can I do something fancy here where I could just hit these guys? Yeah. Just jump, Blade Flurry, ambush, ambush, roll the bones... Come on. In the eyes. Nice. Almost fucked that one up, but we're fine. I am going to take two quick bites of this thing, because I don't want to play insanely risky. Jump. Hit him in midair. Nice. Alright. Buried treasure. Love to see it. Kidney shot. And then Crimson Vial. Sweet. I am, like, riding on the edge of death here. <laughs> this is... I am playing very risky for literally no reason. I could stop and eat. I mean, it's not literally no reason. It is fast, right? This is definitely faster than stopping to eat. But I think Rogue needs to be able to play like this for it to be called efficient, right? Any class needs to be able to play like this for it to be called efficient. Um, so I think the fact that you can technically play Rogue like this, and considering this is my first time ever playing Rogue, and I'm now finally starting to get the hang of it, um, 
it's hard to say if I would have been able to play like this earlier on had I gotten more experience or if I had heirlooms or something like that. It makes me actually want to give Rogue a fair shake on like an actual run where I have heirlooms and stuff where I can compare it one to one against the other leveling specs because I do feel like maybe I've given it less credit uh, than it deserves. But it does, at the same time, I do think that it really is more of a case of Rogue really doesn't come online until you get all of this stuff. Because without Roll the Bones, I wouldn't be able to put out this much damage. And it still is a little bit RNG, right? Because I still, you know, maybe somebody in the comments can tell me I'm wrong, or maybe I'll probably ask Koji later on, like, give him my thoughts on leveling Outlaw, and be like, hey, was I doing anything completely wrong here? Did I, like, get anything super incorrect? Uh, but it does really feel like you are kind of reliant on good roll the bones procs to consistently do damage, specifically buried treasure. Because when I get that, it feels great. When I don't, it's not great. And it also does feel to a certain degree that even still my sustain is bad. Like, I feel like I, I should have some sort of spammable heal. Like, it doesn't need to be amazing, but I, like, didn't rogues used to have something called recuperate or something? Or like it was a heal that they could throw on themselves and uh it would like heal them over time or something like that i might be crazy but i feel like even something like that if i had like one additional heal on top of crimson vial i just need to be able to heal at least like 50 percent of my hp in between each combat like if every five pulls i stop and eat like a pomegranate and it's hard to reliably full heal okay that's fine you can make that work but at this stage, even still, I do need to stop and heal eventually, and I'm playing, like, ridiculously risky to make this work. So, don't love that. Uh, what do I spend my last two points on? Oh, shit, I forget the, I forget the Koji build. I, I want to say, um, I think Koji recommended Shadow Step. I really don't feel like I need Shadow Step, like... I've just, I've kind of ignored it, and it's like, 70% increased move speed. I don't know. Like, I already have Grappling Hook. Grappling Hook, like, in the cases where I'd want to use it, it's fine. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's effectively, Improved Sprint is just going to be better, right? Improved Sprint, I think, is better Shadow Step, because Sprint is really good for, like, long-distance running. So I think having that up more often is nice, but I'd also just rather have um, Iron Stomach here for additional healing. So, I don't know. I don't really know if I need Shadow Step. Um, I'm not going to run it. The, oh yeah, I need to, to pick this thing up. But yeah, from here on out, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It, it's nothing special. You're just effectively questing through Voldoon. So just replace the end of my route with Voldoon, or I'll figure out what I'll do for Alliance, because obviously uh, that's one of the problems with BFA. It's, it's different for every class. Or every, how do you say class? Uh, faction. Um, different for uh, different factions. So, oh, let's go bury treasure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I fucked that up though. I hit, um, I hit between the eyes instead of dispatch while I had my, uh, my blade flurry up. And I'm pretty sure between the eyes doesn't blade flurry. Because I remember Koji ranting about that where apparently a lot of people in the Rogue Discord, like, whenever they get, like, a really good pull in AoE as Outlaw, they'll spread this propaganda that, like, oh, I think Blade Flurry affects between the eyes now. And, or, yeah, 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 Blade Flurry affects between the eyes. And then Koji always gets pissed off because then he has to go, like, hit a target dummy and confirm that it still doesn't. Um, but every single time people will bait him into thinking that, you know, Blizzard finally changed it and then they didn't. And I, I remember, like, I was in Discord at one point with him when somebody said that in the Rogue Discord. He was like, fuck it again, now I gotta go test it. And I'm pretty sure it's just, you know, oh, they did a lot of damage. And they're like, oh, it must be that. Uh, clearly, I didn't just get really good procs and, you know, do a lot of damage through normal means. Uh, but, I mean, I can understand. It also doesn't make sense intuitively because, like, I think Pistol Shot is cleaving it. Maybe? I can't tell. Um, but... Uh, it definitely feels like, yeah, when I press Blade Flurry, I do a lot of fucking damage. Um, let me, once again, Blade Flurry, and then Ambush, Ambush, Roll the Bones. Uh, 
I'm using Cloak of Shadows to make sure. I saw an ability called Venomous Claws, and I didn't want to get got by it. Ooh. I'm just going to play it safe. I'm vanishing. Oh, fuck. I had poisons on me. All right. Yeah, I played too aggressively there. I didn't have enough health to do that pull. I also, I was like still used to having buried treasure and I just didn't have it. But we have five Darkman top hats, which is why I feel a little bit more comfortably comfortable playing aggressively here because I have the Darkman top hats because death doesn't mean I lose 10% XP. Death means I just use one of my many Darkman top hats that I now have. Uh, so it's a little bit less punishing. I still probably shouldn't be playing that risky. There's absolutely no reason to do that. Um, I'm just going to be adding time onto the already gargantuan run. And the nice thing about it is it is 7 a.m. And I uh, I still need to edit this whole thing. I still haven't recorded the segment that you listened to earlier where I go through my Google Doc and I talk about, you know, the, the different ideas I have and stuff like that. Um, still need to do that. Uh, let me before I forget. Yeah. Uh, and then I need to reload because it fucked my UI again. Uh, so I still need to record that whole bit. Uh, I need to edit it all together, fuck around with it in Premiere. Then I need to let the whole thing encode. And then after it encodes, I need to uh, go ahead and upload it to YouTube. So we're probably not going to have this done for quite a while today. It's, it's going to be a process. Um, I did it again. I think this time, if I kite early, I should be fine. Problem there was I waited too long to actually go ahead and kite. But now, yeah, now I have enough health that I can just power through. And we're good. Alright. Still taking a beating here. Because that's at, like, most of my health. That is fucking rough. Uh, Alright, I need to... I'm gonna wait for Crimson Vial. And just stealth. I'll kill this one guy because I can quickly burst him with the uh... yeah goblin racial still is a pretty nice chunk of extra damage all right go stealth here uh see so yeah, I need to find Tarkaj I think I just walk into the cave and he's right here right so stealth helps with that I think stealth actually bumps rogues up maybe one tier over what I thought. It's like, if rogues are dumpster tier by their combat ability, which like maybe isn't as bad as I thought, but still isn't amazing, they definitely do get points for stealth. Because I, I've talked a little bit about um, how I would rank the different classes on my Discord. It's something that people always ask. They're like, Harold, then how would you rate uh, X spec? Um, and, you know, do you have a tier list or something like that? And it's like... I will make one eventually, which is one of the reasons why runs like this help. Um, but one thing is, I remember a lot of people were asking me, like, how I would separate, like, S tier and A tier. Like, how I would separate the classes that are just good and the ones that are, like, considered S tier, like, the best ones. And uh, maybe this is, I, I don't know if I've talked about this in an actual run before. I know anybody who's been on my Discord and was part of that conversation, obviously, this is going to be familiar to you. Um... But I thought it was an interesting conversation because it was something I never really, like, put into words. But if I had to name specs that would be S tier, uh, the only two specs that I think would make it into S tier would be Guardian Druid and Windwalker Monk, at least for right now. And it's, I would say if I had to put classes into S tier, I would probably just include those two classes as a whole, even if I don't necessarily think all of the specs deserve to be there, because, like, Balanced Druids don't have the killing power while leveling up that Guardian Druids have, but they are still Druids, so they are still really good. Balanced Druids, I haven't done a run with them, but I would imagine that a good Balanced Druid would probably fall into A tier, um, you know, if they could really make it work. It's one of those things, though, where you would have to be really good at Balanced Druid just to get, like, a performance that is worse than Guardian, because Guardian can just pull as much, or, uh, like, do as much damage on large pulls as a Balanced Druid at lower levels, and they just don't die, so you're never in any danger. You never need to play your pulls carefully. Feral Druid, I think, is probably safely in B tier, because I do not think they have the AoE potential that uh, Guardian or Balance have. Hard to really count Resto. I, I mean, I don't even think there's a point in ranking Resto Druids. Like, you could maybe argue that there's a point in ranking, like, uh, 
discipline priests because maybe some people don't want to play shadow but like if you're leveling as a druid and you are not playing as either guardian or a damage spec like what the fuck are you even doing at that point just reconsider your decisions <laughs> you know you're playing a class that has an s tier spec that is extremely broken and can do literally any pull in the game without breaking a sweat and you're choosing to do quests as a healer why why would you put yourself through that so it's like i don't even know if there's a point in giving a rating to resto druids for like open world questing because just why would you play as one whereas you could make a genuine argument for why you might want to play as um uh whatchamacallit why you might want to play as like a disciplined priest over a shadow or something like that uh or like you know i've seen arguments made for restoration shaman um, I've seen people say that, you know, maybe it has some survivability benefits compared to Elian Enhance. Back in the day, it was actually considered to be one of the best Shaman leveling specs, uh, if not the best Shaman leveling spec. Now, Shaman was a terrible class to level as. It was on Rogue tier and Shadow Priest tier back in Shadowlands, right? Which, you know, you know it's bad when people are genuinely considering the healing spec as the best one for leveling. Um... But I think that still says something about the fact that, you know, Resto does have potential as a Shaman. But that is also, once again, because Shamans just had such low potential in leveling in general. And I think in that same vein, it's like, why would you level as a Mistweaver Monk? Um, like, Brewmaster Monk, I would not put in S tier. I think prior to uh, the nerfs that are coming in patch 10.1, which if you haven't heard, they are gutting, uh, what's it called? Um, Incendiary Brew. Incendiary Brew is literally, actually not even gutting it. It's removed from the game. So that entire interaction that made Brewmasters really good in leveling is just gone entirely, which, eh, I mean, I get that they're not balancing PvP talents around leveling, but that does feel really fucking bad. Um, and I get that it caused broken shit to happen in PvP. I understand why they're removing it. It still feels really bad. Because... It's one of those cases where, you know, sure, it might balance out PvP a little bit, but losing that PvP talent for leveling single-handedly takes Brewmasters down from maybe genuinely being another S-tier contender to being B-tier. Without Incendiary, Brew Brewmasters have fucking nothing. You know, because their survivability is not at the same level as Guardian Druid without Incendiary Brew. Their damage is not on the same level as most of the other, like, tank specs or Windwalker without Incendiary Brew. Like, Incendiary Brew single-handedly made Brewmaster a spec worth running. I still don't think it was comparable to Windwalker, like, directly. I think Windwalker would have been better, which is why maybe even then I probably would have pushed come to shove, put Brewmaster in, like, high A tier. But... You know, it, it is a monk, right? And the reason why Windwalker gets S tier is because of the Peak of Serenity quests, because I think there's a lot of specs that ha have the same, like, killing potential and survivability as, like, Windwalker and Guardian Druid. Like, I would actually argue, in, if we're talking the specs that can kill things and survive the best, Protection Paladin is hands down the best spec for leveling in the game. It is so fucking good. Uh, Rhett, with the changes, might be up there, too. Rhett used to really be squishy. Now, maybe it's better. Hard to say. Uh, I would have to test it. But, you know, it's only been out for a little bit. So, hard to say for sure. Um, but Protection Paladin is just so fucking strong. The only reason that it isn't S tier, it's high A for sure though, uh, is because Paladins have nothing special going for them. They're a fine leveling class. The class as a whole, I would definitely put in A tier. But Druids have Flight Form, which is just so insane flight form is like god tier in terms of time save and just you know quality of life efficiency everything it's so so nice and nothing compares to that i would honestly maybe even say like one of the interesting questions that um i was considering is uh if uh which we call it if the best or if all races could be druids and monks would guardian druid be better than windwalker monk for speed leveling because all races, for the most part, or I think as of right now, as of this latest patch, all races can be monks, actually, because goblins finally got it, and worgen. Um, so now all races can be monks. So, you know, monks are definitely really good. They are S-tier because of the Pika Serenity quests, which are very, very, very efficient. But if I had to say, like, which one is better, the Peak of Serenity quests or um, uh, Flight Form, 
I would honestly say Flight Form is better. Flight Form is just on another fucking level. It's so useful. It, it is just such amazing versatility when it comes to leveling. And the Peak of Serenity quests are good, don't get me wrong. But they're not, like, brokenly overpowered like they used to be. Like, obviously, Monk leveling back when it came out, where you just got, like, a flat experience bonus that nobody else could access, that was insane. Obviously, that made monks ridiculously broken for leveling. Now the quests are still good. They are just no longer completely overpowered like they used to be. Um, to the point where I would say flight form in a vacuum is probably better. But then when you think about it, well, it's like, well, why why don't I use Druid anymore for the runs? And a lot of my early world records still used Guardian Druid, right? So it is very, very strong. But you cannot use... Um, oh my god, these guys fucking hit hard. That guy just teleport to me? Fucking teleports behind you, nothing personal, kid. Fucking goddamn, dude. These mobs are a little bit ridiculous. Uh, that was... That was fucking stupid. I did not expect to get absolutely clapped by just three generic trolls. This is where it starts to get frustrating. Obviously, I'm playing aggressively, but like I've said before... Whenever I can't just press W and pl press my buttons and, you know, I actually need to think about leveling, when I'm trying to do these runs where really it's more about just, like, telling stories and talking about shit, um, like, this isn't meant to be a challenge run. This is meant to be a an information gathering run. It is kind of a challenge run because of the whole no heirlooms thing, playing rogue, etc. Uh, but it's not a fun type of challenge. It's a, uh, not again type of challenge. Um... But yeah, I would say if Guardian Dru or if um, Dark Iron Dwarfs and Volpera could be Druids, then I would probably play Guardian. Uh, just because you can't really compete with Volpera Racial or Dark Iron Dwarf Racial. It's just too good. So considering they can be Windwalker Monks and Druids cannot, it's a pretty clear no-brainer which spec uh, or which class ends up being the one that I pick. Um, and just make sure I don't fuck this up. Yeah, pure single target, like... Fucking hell, that, that was good damage. Yeah, pure single target, this is good. It's just when I start pulling multiple mobs, that's when it starts to get rough. Because if I can't kill things in the burst, then it just falls off. And that, that darting dagger is bullshit. Oh, fuck. Alright. Uh, ooh, that's a... That's a good pull, and I have I have Blade Flurry, I have full energy, full combo points. Alright, do this, pop evasion, and then dispatch. I need to do that. Didn't get the good one. But I still, I still evasion that initial hit. Fucking darting daggers. Can't die again. Good, we're good. I can live this. Nice. Alright, recovered. Now... I take this gamble. I think I do. Yeah, I can do this. Blade Flurry. Especially with Goblin Racial. Made it out. That was definitely close. <laughs> I still almost died there, but I, I made it out with my life, so. Alright. Uh, where was I? Yeah. Um, but I think if we're talking about, you know, it, the things that, right, push Guardian Druid and Windwalker Monk into S tier are advantages that no other class has, right? They're insanely good at killing things. They're really fast. Um, they're really, uh, like tanky both of them but the thing that they have that separates them from 
let's say, Protection Paladin, that is just an absolute monster in all of those categories, is they have that one uh, bonus that nobody else can beat. And in some ways, rogues actually have a bonus like that in the form of uh, stealth. Stealth has proven to be really, really, really nice. Uh, I just, I don't really know if stealth is enough to make up for the fact that, you know, a lot of other stuff is really weak. A new PvP talent is available. Oh. That's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking for a second. So we have the best dialogue in the game coming up. The best reason to run Voldoon. If you've done the zone, you you obviously know what I'm talking about here. I think it it's you get to that section, and that's when it starts. If I'm right, if and it does trigger right around that canyon, God, my memory will have to be really fucking good. I've just done this so much, I remember the exact point where it triggers. Any second. Dot are my best friends. They pull my wagon through dunes of sand. They have small teeth and they love to eat. They're the best packers in all the land. Okay, there we go. I was spot on. <laughs> it's right when you get to that fucking candy. <sighs> okay, yeah. Mira makes the fucking entire Voldoon quest line worth it. God. Okay, anyways. Uh, what else? I think I kind of exhausted that point, right? Already talked about why I think those are, are the best. I will eventually make a tier list drinking all the different specs, strengths and weaknesses, etc, etc. Uh, which I think will be interesting, but, you know. I, I don't really think it's too surprising, right? None of what I'm saying here is I'm gonna make anybody go, Really? You put Windwalker Monk in S tier? Right? Um... I think some people may disagree on the whole, like, ranking stuff only in A tier if it doesn't provide any special bonus. But at the end of the day, it's like, as much as I love Protection Paladin, and I would absolutely love to do a run with them, there's a reason why, despite the fact that I have never used Prop Alley for one of my world records, but it is still one of the specs that I've used the most in my speedruns. Like, whenever I'm doing just a casual run for no reason, I almost always do it as Prop Paladin. Because even though they aren't, like, a good speedrunning spec, you know, they don't have the same advantages as the other ones, they are still just really fun to level as. Because you can completely shut your brain off and just press Avenger Shield and Blessed Hammer and, hammer and Shield of the Righteous and stuff, and you just cannot die. So it's perfect for the exact type of format that I'm, you know, doing here, where I just don't really want to have to focus, and I just want to shut my brain off and just kill shit while I level and talk about other things. Because I can do that with Prop Alley, and I know for a fact where I only need to start paying attention if my health drops below 50%. And then I'm like, oh, that's funny, these mobs are actually doing damage to me. And then I press, like, Word of Glory one time, and it's just, I'm immediately back to full health. Oh, it's so nice, I love Prop Alley. I would probably play Vengeance Demon Hunter for runs a bit more, too, if it didn't start in, like, a weird category. Because the fact that I can't use Vengeance, or Demon Hunter in general, for... Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is very bad. That's cheap death. Um, I think getting that... Um, th There's no way out of this. I'm just going to vanish, and I'm not going to risk it. Uh, yeah, getting that patrol is really crap. That was just really unlucky. Not much I can do about that. Uh, let's see. I really hope the normal run tonight goes well, though, because if that falls through, I'm just going to be so tilted. Because, like, what, what I'm probably going to have to do today... I haven't managed to sleep in between, like, recording these segments, so I'm not really sure when I'm going to do that, to be honest, but, um, I obviously, I have the normal Abaris run that I need to put together at, uh, 8pm, and I'll probably start forming it early just in case I'm sure there are going to be no-shows as much as I'm saying I hope there won't be. People inevitably just put their name on the sheet and then don't show up for whatever fucking reason, um, is what it is, right? But, uh, I need to get that done, so... If, if that falls through, I'm absolutely screwed, because then I, I don't really know. I'm still missing a decent amount of footage from 
Assault of the Sakali. Uh, that boss I really need footage for. Come on. I haven't gotten buried treasure in a while. Uh, and... There we go. Um, yeah, I need more Assault of the Sakali footage. I need a bit more uh, Forgotten Experiments and um, Amalgamation Chamber footage for like the, the final video I'm making. I'd like a bit more Zaskarn and Magmarax footage and ideally Echo of Neltharion, but like, you know, it is it is at the end of the day the second to last boss. If we don't get there, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. A lot of the other bosses like Rashok, I have plenty of footage for, but I would definitely not be upset with more. But all this stuff is, I need to get this done. And if I miss it this weekend, who knows if there's going to be another full normal clear. There probably won't be. Uh, with the, you know, pace at which they're doing testing right now, I could just never get that footage again, and then I would just be completely fucked. Um, I don't know. Oh, fuck. Yeah, they're, they're just, I randomly pulled a bunch of lashes, and... What? Uh, grappling hook? Does it not, like, go through floors or something? If you hit it in, like, a wrong angle, do you just get absolutely fucking shit on? There's nothing you can do? That felt really stupid. Excuse me? <sighs> Alright, now I'm down to two Darkman top hats. I need to stop. Man, that, that this is just... The grappling hook thing, I think, just kind of threw me for a loop. I, I'm making excuses, but that that was just... Like, I expected to be able to kite, and when that didn't work, I should have just vanished. I should have just said, yeah, no, clearly I, I'm fucked if I keep doing this, but I tried to play greedy, and I should have just waited on evasion. Man, it's just... Yeah. I'm, um... I'm playing bad, and, uh... I'm, tr I'm trying to rush a little bit too much to get out of here, because I want to be done with this. The entire point I'm trying to make with all this stuff saying, you know, how much shit I have to get done is I'm getting stressed out, right? Because it's already almost 8 in the morning, and I have, like, a lot of work that I still need to do if I want to uh, get this video up, and then I need to do Mythic Plus testing, and then I need to do the other stuff later tonight, and then at some point in all of that, I need to find time to sleep. Right, because I, I'm not like a robot. I do need to rest at some point, otherwise I will literally just fall over and die. So, yeah. Uh, not the patrol again. Not that patrol, please. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really know what my schedule today is going to look like, but it's probably going to be Omega fucked. And that's that's just work. Right? That's not even considering anything I might have wanted to do for myself, right? Which it's like, I need to work on my Demon Hunter on retail, but at this point, I can't really justify putting more effort into my Demon Hunter, because the more effort I- the more time I put into my Demon Hunter, it fucking ate my grappling hook again, man. Jesus. Um, yeah, I can't really make videos on my Demon Hunter. It's not a topic that anymore, at least, I can really cover, because, well, uh, the catch-up videos- as I already said earlier, are going to be outdated if I spent too much time on them. So I'm kind of inherently pigeonholed into not allocating time to that, but that sucks because, like, I need to? Because <laughs> if I don't get my Demon Hunter ready, there's no way that my raid leader is going to let me swap to it next year. And... I, I mean, I, to be honest, if I have to play another tier of Brewmaster, I just won't. Like, I... I it's one of those things where, like, there's no easy way to bring that up. There's no easy way to tell your raid leader, like, I, I am not playing the spec. Like, I, I really, I don't want to. And it's like, I get it, you know, as a tank you need to be flexible, but I don't really think Monk at this point brings anything major to the table. Like, they're not bad, but it's like, what does Monk offer that the other specs don't? You know, it's not even the top on damage, like, there's things I could play if I wanted to be top on damage. I'm just not enjoying it, right? I think that that is the most important thing. I could justify it as much as I want. At the end of the day, if you're not enjoying something, you shouldn't be playing it. And I have made it very clear that I am not enjoying Brewmaster Monk anymore, and that I will not be playing it for Abaris. And I haven't gotten a definitive answer, yes or no, which is like kind of what uh, my friend Milk was asking earlier. Like, did they officially say, like, you can play uh, your Demon Hunter? And they haven't. They haven't officially said, like, okay, yeah, we're fine with you playing it. Um, 
they also haven't said no they haven't told me like we want you on monk um but all they kind of said is like we need to make sure that your demon hunter is like actually ready so i think that my takeaway from that was they you know and if my demon hunter isn't really really prepared going into abaris and they can tell that like i can play it at the same level as my monk then they're just not going to go for it um but i did try to be clear that it's like i i am not playing brewmaster like and, and i love this guild right and i think they'll be reasonable and it's like at the end of the day i hope that they'll understand like i can play vengeance demon hunter i know what i'm doing even if like let's say at the end of the tier right like right now my uh brewmaster monk is 420 item level haha <laughs> 420 funny number um but uh yeah i should take this it's significant upgrade compared to six demon bag um but yeah even if let's say i only managed to get my demon hunter up to 410 before the patch hits you know i should be able to get enough gear to bridge the gap and i would be able to out gear my brewmaster in enough time and you know sure in the immediate moment maybe would my brewmaster be better um ideally you know obviously my uh, the ideal situation is my demon hunter is just better in all situations um that would make their decision very easy which is why i'm kind of hoping that i will have time to get that done and i will have time to make sure that my demon hunter is really good but there is a reality <laughs> very possible reality that i just do not have the time as much as i want to um because i have to get all this shit done but at the same time it's like you know I can't just sacrifice all of these videos for the sake of getting a bit more gear on my Demon Hunter. At the end of the day, um, that has to happen. That has to get done. And uh, I know for a fact that I can play it well, and I know for a fact that it wouldn't be a detriment to the raid team. If they can't realize that, then I guess that would just be unfortunate. But um, while I do want to do everything I can to get things prepared, I, I yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm just worried. I, I have a lot of shit that I gotta manage, and it's, um, I just don't have enough time to do it. So, that's why I get really stressed out when runs like this don't go exactly as I had planned them, because it's like, I really, really wanted it to go well, and it's not, and it's like, uh... Oh my god. No! Why? Why is this happening? This is like three times in a row, Grappling Hook just fucking bricks, and doesn't do anything. What is going on? That is really, really fucking annoying. I, I don't know what's causing that. So that really just screwed me there. I, I There's... Yeah, I just... I need to let these reset. I just need to accept the fact that that just completely fucked it. Yeah. Might be able to fight too. But I'm probably still gonna die. Nice. Yeah, grappling hook. Um, I now hate this ability. Uh, just, I, I fucking hate this ability. Any ability that just has a chance to completely not function, especially when it's a mobility tool like that that you need to use to escape shit, fuck that garbage. How do you live like this, rogues? I would imagine if this is a common thing, a lot of you are probably sitting here like, yep, yep, I fucking hate it too. Because, God, if, like, my cheat torpedo just didn't work sometimes, I would not be playing Monk at all. I would have re-rolled a while ago. That is such fucking trash. Um, fucking hell. At least I didn't die again, but the fact that, like, I almost just had that... Like, was it out of range or something? Was it because, like, I tried to use it too far away and the animation went off, but because it was too far, like... Maybe if you use Grappling Hook and then get too far away before it, like, lands, it just won't fucking go? I don't know. That... I do not like that. That's frustrating as fuck. Okay, whatever. We're alive. Um... Man... this is this is pain i'm getting too tilted uh i mean i i need to pause again i'll just I'll, I'll resume immediately in the editing um but personally i just need to walk away for a second i don't want to sit here and just you know constantly bitch because i'm getting to that point where i know how i am i will just keep spiraling it will not be fun to watch i need to walk away all right uh, i'm gonna 
where we're gonna continue the run, hopefully finish it in this particular segment, and not worry about all the other stuff to it. Can I just... My name is Akunda the whatever. Uh, yeah. So, I, I'm... I, I think I've kind of purged all of the, uh, the toxicity from my veins and tilt and stuff like that. We're, we're good to finish. I would hope. Um, but at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, it, it can be really difficult to do a lot of this stuff when you're trying to give commentary and whatnot and not get, like, mega tilted. But, you know, it's it's like the whole serenity prayer thing. I gotta accept the things I cannot change. I can't change how long it's gonna take me to do this run. Um, because one thing I very quickly realized is the more time I spend... I also, unfortunately, I kind of left my game running and just kind of walked away, which has the downside of letting my Darkman Fair hat tick off. I uh, should have logged out and preserved that buff, but uh, it, this shouldn't take me longer than 60 minutes. The only thing that can screw me over is if I uh, if I fuck up and over pull and die or something like that. That would be very tragic. Uh, but we're nearing the end. We're nearing the end. We're in the home stretch. If I hit my projection of 10 hours, 40 minutes, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. Uh, it's about what I was expecting. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I honestly, I don't even fully remember what I was talking about before. We're just gonna, gonna kind of do this one at a time. I'm gonna do normal pulls, not anything super crazy. And, and yeah, uh, just accept the fact that Rogue, you know, it's, it's not an amazing puller. And of course I immediately get an extra mob. Oh boy. <laughs> We're jumping right into it. <laughs> Fucking, I did not mean to pull that Withered Lasher. I wish Blade Flurry had a longer uptime. That would make this a lot more tolerable. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, so I think one thing for the very last hour of the speedrun. Um, I, I'm, I kind of... Um, I'm, one thing I'm worrying about is I'm still trying to think about how I'm going to do all the editing. And I'm trying to tell myself not to worry about that. Uh, what I might need to end up doing, just to make sure that this goes a little bit shorter, is, you know, I, I think at the moment, what I'm assuming is by the end of this, after all of the editing is said and done, like after I've cut out the wad sections and skipped around a little bit, I'm probably going to put like a fast forward effect on um, part of it. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think what I'll do is... I'll, I should probably try to get this down to eight hours because I think at eight hours I've uploaded runs that are around that long that didn't run into issues. Um, you know, my recent world record run was a little over seven hours and that one was totally fine. I didn't run into any problems with that. It's specifically when stuff gets to nine hours that YouTube starts to get finicky. And I'm just really worried, right, because I've already talked a lot. I would actually say that is probably the leading cause of my anxiety right now, the potential of the run going really long, and specifically running into editing issues. Because, here's the thing, if the run goes a little bit long, and this ends up taking me a little bit more than I initially planned, I'm kind of fine with that, you know? Uh, it's That's not something that I really care a ton about being here for an extra hour, in terms of, like, the my time investment. You know, I, I can live with that. The thing that concerns me is the possibility of this thing extends too long and then I have to like cut out a section of the run just because I can't fit it up to YouTube. Or worst case scenario, I try to fit a bit too much in and then I run into YouTube issues. Uh, because I'm already going to be a little bit pressed for time just getting all of this out on its own. So the absolute last thing that can happen would be... Uh, technical difficulties if i run into technical difficulties i am just royally fucked and i think if the youtube upload fails it's going to be one of those things where i will just have to postpone it by a day and i really don't need to do that because um i really don't want to have to do that because as mentioned earlier i already have a pretty tight schedule of when i need to have everything uploaded and i've been trying to at least adhere to a schedule of like once every other day at, at a minimum um because I feel like a lot of times, you know, I'll post two videos back to back and then I, I will have the other one get delayed. So I've been trying to at least space them out by like, you know, one full day as a way of making sure that each video has, you know, a full 24 hours to like, you know, live and get recommended. 
because uh, a lot of times if you do it too early, YouTube kind of just like shoots down the original video and replaces it and stuff, and that's never fun. Um, so lots of stuff to consider there. Do I just go back? Oh no, the turn in is over here. Okay, cool. And then while I'm down here, I'll complete some of the other quests a little bit further north. That little quest line, I'll do that. Um, yeah, let's let's get this ring. Let's throw this over a band of freaking needles. Oh, I have to do. Forgot about this quest, right? Um, yeah, worst case scenario, if things do really start to run long, I could always just cut out like a bit of extra. Uh, but that would still require going um, going through all the footage, finding the objectively like most uh, non-interesting part of the run, and trimming that footage out. Uh, which is hard to say. I don't really know exactly where that would be. I want to include all the BFA stuff because I've never shown Voldoon in one of my runs, right? So... Even if I don't necessarily have amazing commentary to provide at this point, the fact that you get to see Voldoon at all, and, you know, my recommended path through the zone and how to optimize it and stuff, I think um, for anyone interested in this, it would be nice, right? Because if somebody just cares about seeing my path through, let's say, uh, Silver Pine Forest, they have lots of material to draw from from that. So it's not, it's not a very pressing matter. Um... But yeah, I mean, that, that's enough talking about that. Because here's the thing. If I just sit here and talk about that, I'm just going to stress myself out. I think the best thing that I can do right now is just try to get into the zone and, and talk about something. I think the easiest thing would be to just talk about something that's on my mind. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, this was actually the thing, the thing that I'm going to talk about now is the thing that I, I was talking about earlier that I was debating actually discussing. And... You know, I was like, eh, is it too personal? I don't think it's too personal. I think, like, as long as I don't overshare and I keep the topic, like, relevant and still, like, what I'm thinking about right now, I think it's still fine. Um, nice, level 50. And let me spend... Koji said... This, alacrity, and then deeper strategy. Um... Yeah, so... Uh, the entire topic that I was discussing earlier, that I cut that out and replaced it with, like, the fast-forwarded footage, probably, that's what I'm planning on doing in post, uh, with, you know, me discussing the, the speedrun stuff, or the challenge run stuff, is, um, recently I did something fairly difficult. It was, it was actually one of the harder things I've had to bring myself to do, at least that I can remember. I, I'm gonna make it sound, like, all over dramatic. It Basically, I... I reached out to a friend who I haven't spoken to in five years. And I, I mean, I say friend because I still, I mean, I guess I consider them a friend, right? Like, it's one of those things where it's like, if you had a really good friend um, and you still haven't spoken them to five years, are they still your friend? Can you still call them your friend? And I would say, yeah, right? If you were actually good friends with them and stuff. And in this case, I definitely was, right? So for a variety of reasons... Uh, you know, every once in a while, you, you fall out of contact with somebody. And sometimes it's really easy um, to, like, reestablish contact. Like, I, I've... Uh, one of the things I talked about is... And I think I've mentioned this in some of my other runs as well, just talking about some of my friends. I have friends who I don't talk to, like, every so often. And I still consider them good friends. I have friends who I speak to maybe, like, once every year or something like that. Who, you know, I used to raid with at a guild a while ago. And I still, whenever I talk to them, I really enjoy talking to them, and I consider them, like, good friends. Um, and there have been situations, right, where, uh, for instance, my friend Ard, who helps me out with, like, a lot of uh, running the raid stuff. I think I mentioned earlier that when I uh, overslept and uh, almost missed raid testing, or well, was late to raid testing, uh, my friend Ard was the one, ooh, that's like a, that, that's the full buff thing, got the full package there. Uh, so, I'm gonna really shred things now. Um, but yeah, my friend Ard uh, helped me set all that stuff up. Basically, completely saved my ass. Because if she wasn't there to put together the group for me, raid testing probably wouldn't have gotten done. And then I would have lost all of that potential footage. And, you know, 
I've already gone at length talking about how bad it is that, you know, people didn't show up once, so imagine if I had managed to screw things up for myself by oversleeping for raid testing. It would have been absolutely disastrous. Um, so she's, like, a really good friend of mine, has helped me out a lot with uh, running a lot of that stuff, and there was a period of two years where I did not talk to her at all. Not because, you know, I hated her or something, but it was just one of those things where, um, actually, I met her in the Cheating Officer Guild. So, uh, if you've been around the channel for a while and you remember some of my very early speedruns, uh, specifically the video Speedrunning Alliance and Telling Old WoW Stories, I think I still have that one, um, not unlisted. I think it's still public. A lot of, like, the classic WoW speedruns, even if they're from Shadowlands, I've still kept them up. Uh, you know, from a speedrunning perspective, they don't really hold up. They're, you know, out of date, but they still have a lot of good stories. That one in particular, the story of, um when the officer cheated on his wife who was in the guild uh, with one of the trials and then basically had the raid team try to cover up for him. But then it turned out that one of the hunters in the raid team was also receiving nudes from the same trial <laughs> and he sent it to most of the raid team and then the guild just imploded in the most spectacular fashion. That's a, that's a classic story right there. That's like when most people say, oh yeah, I like watched your speed run and I love the cheating officer story. It was good. And I'm like, yeah, you can't make that shit up. It was one of the fucking craziest guild dramas I ever experienced. But in that particular instance, I actually met my friend Ard for the first time in that guild. Uh, and I was kind of like in the position where I was um, friends with everybody. So I was trying to resolve the drama. And I remember at the time she was kind of of that mindset of like, fuck all of this bullshit, you know, I'm not going to deal with all these idiots basically just torpedoing their own guild. So she ended up just fighting somewhere else the raid, left everybody completely, and when they reformed the guilds, uh, and basically like split off from the guild with the cheating officer and like a bunch of the raiders um, were, like rebuilt the raid team, she didn't come along for that. And she went her own way and stuff like that. But when we were raiding together, you know, we did a lot of Mythic Plus, we were pretty good friends, um, but, like, not good enough friends that I was like, oh, yeah, I want to make sure that we stay in contact, um, you know, after you leave the guild or anything. Nothing bad, right? It was just, like, we naturally stopped talking, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and then, next thing you know, two years later, uh, I joined a guild in Sanctum of Domination, and I saw her name in the Discord, and I'm like, oh, you're in this Discord. She's like, oh, yeah, I just joined this guild as a trial, like, a week ago. And I was also joining that guild as a trial. Um, so naturally, of course, we started talking because we both ended up being trials in the same guild. And we had known each other from a few years ago. And then uh, this was... How, how long ago was Sanctum of Domination to this point? It feels like yesterday. Like, man, this snake has a lot of health, huh? What? Is, it's healing. Hello? Wait, no, it's not healing. It's just the health bar is bugged. What the fuck? I'm sitting here thinking, like, how is the snake healing? Why is its health not going down? It is taking damage. It's just not showing it. Um, I I absolutely do need to stun this, though. I don't know what the fuck is going on here with this, um, this fucking snake. I'm gonna have to kite, apparently, and wait for Crimson Vile. Yeah, if I had realized early on what was happening with the whole snake, I probably would have, um, done something about it. Okay, is this grappling hook gonna work? Yes, okay. Alright. That's a, a weird little bug that I don't think I've seen before, where the mob health and the little health bar above its head doesn't match up. Huh. Definitely need to heal after this pull. I'm gonna wait on Crimson Vial real quick and then eat this. Um, but yeah. Sanctum is what? I think it was what year 2021 so it's been it's been uh almost two years i guess about like a little over a year and a half since i started talking to my friend art again and i mean in that time because we raided uh together for most of the end of shadowlands but then also um just kind of at that point this time did stay friends right so now art who is one of my good friends like i said the other day saved my ass on raid testing there was a period of two years where I just didn't speak to her. And sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes you do just lose contact with uh, one of your friends. And, you know, maybe they even end up being a really good friend later on. If you, like, reestablish contact and stuff like that. And uh, and you never know. 
Um, and a lot of times I will think back on like some of my old friends who I haven't spoken to in a while for whatever reason, um, especially like years and years ago. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, I always wonder like, yeah, I wonder how they're doing these days, how everything's going with them. But it's the kind of thing where, I don't know, I'm not like the most outgoing person in the world. Uh, I It may come across that way based on the way I can like talk in my speedruns. And I'd like to think I can hold a conversation. Like, I always like talking to people on Discord. If somebody messages me, I'll always try to give, like, a good response and, you know, be nice and not an asshole and stuff like that, usually. Um, unless you're an asshole to me first, in which case, you know, I don't give a shit. Um, but, you know, like, what I'm trying to say is I can hold a conversation. I'm not, like, socially inept or anything. It's not like, oh, I, I can't speak to people, right? But at a certain point... There is a certain, like, element of nervousness reaching out to somebody who you haven't spoken to in a while. Because it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, how do you go about that? How, how do you just, like, start a conversation out of nowhere? You know, because in the case with my friend Ard, right, we had a, a natural reason to start talking again. We were in the same guild. So it was kind of like, oh, apparently we're trialing for, for the same guild. So we naturally started talking about that, and then it got into like, oh, how are you doing? You know, haven't spoken in a while. How's so-and-so, you know, person we used to raid with, right? And it's kind of a natural segue. Whereas, you know, if you were to just start talking to somebody who you haven't spoken to in a while for no reason, it's really difficult to just have a natural segue. A lot of times it may come across as, like, awkward or forced and stuff like that. And it's weird because there's, like, no good way to do that. There's no good way to just be like, hey, haven't spoken to you in five years. Um, how you doing? Because uh, then they're going to be like, why are you messaging me? You know, it's like you don't have that uh, that reasoning of like, oh, well, we're in the same guild now. It, it's literally you're just messaging me out of the blue after five years. Why? And it's, you know, sometimes you just want to, right? Like in, in this particular case, the one that I, I'll get to tell the specific story, I just kind of felt like it. I'm like, you know, I kind of want to talk to that person. Um but, like, I've had that thought before, right? Of, like, you know, I really want to talk to that person. I wonder how they're doing. And sometimes I'll reach out. Sometimes I'll I'll shoot them a message or something like that. If I have, you know, a particular question or something I want to ask, you know, I'm, like, really curious about how they're doing. But a lot of times it's, like, you know, it's usually a, one friend in particular. Like, actually, I have a perfect example of the inverse happening. I, you know, mind you, it wasn't five years, right? Um, but my friend Kagrig, who... Uh, was in the same guild as me and my friend Ard, actually, but not in the uh, the cheating officer one. He was in the, the one in Sanctum of Domination. Uh, no good drama from that guild, I'm afraid, which, well, I mean, maybe it's a good thing, right? Uh, that guild is, like, it's, it's actually a really boring guild in the sense that a lot of the people I met in that guild were really cool people who I'm still friends with, and, you know, the guild ended because some of the officers just got burnt out and wanted to stop playing. And, you know, they were very, unfortunately, very mature about the situation. And they were like, hey, yeah, sorry, guys, we're just, we're really not feeling it. We don't have the motivation to raid lead anymore. No hard feelings. And, you know, everybody left off in the guild being friends and everything was like, you know, nice. And every once in a while, I still pop into that discord and, and like, see how they're doing and say hi and stuff like that. You know, really unfortunate. No good guild drama there. I kid, of course, obviously. I <laughs> I'd rather have a good situation like that where, you know, I get to keep all my friends and nothing bad happens. Um, but, you know, it does make for really good storytelling when uh, shit does hit the fan and people act like immature idiots. As stressful it is, as it is at the time, you know, it makes for great storytelling later on. Um, but this was one of the rare situations where everyone was just, a, you know, a mature person who actually... Uh, handled human interaction correctly, and as a result, I'm still friends with most of them, which is, I guess, a plus. Um, but in particular, one of my friends, Kagrig, from that guild, who I haven't spoken to in, uh, about, like, six months? Yeah, like, six, uh, seven months or so. Um, he just reached out to me, like, literally an hour ago, in between recording this segment and the last one, uh, and he was like, uh, oh, hey, remember that drunk raid that we did back in Sanctum of Domination, which if anyone was around uh, at that time, I turned that into a YouTube video, which I loved making that YouTube video. That was really fun to make. It didn't perform well. I think it only got like a thousand views or something, which relatively speaking is atrocious performance, even by 
the views I was getting at that time. Uh, but it was like one of those videos where I didn't make it for like views. Obviously, it wasn't a topic that was gonna get a lot of views. It was just me and my friends fucking around, having a fun time. They were all drunk, and we were doing heroic sanctum of domination reclear, and it was just you know a fun time with friends, right? So my friend Kagrig messaged me, and he was like, "Oh yeah, remember that drunk raid we did?" And apparently, like in his new guild, because they just killed Mythic Razageth, and I was like, "Oh, grats!" And he was like, "Yeah, we're gonna do." Uh, we're gonna do a heroic uh, drunk raid, just like the one that we did back in our guild um, way back then. So he was asking me like what I thought about like boss mechanics and stuff, and then he was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I saw your YouTube channel's going well and stuff like that." And it's just you know nice to catch up, right? We didn't talk for a lot, talk for about like five minutes or so, just you know about what I just said, literally, and that and that's it. But it was still like a nice conversation, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, Kagrick, I remember him, nice guy." Um, so sometimes it is really nice. I like I didn't expect to get a message from him out of the blue today, but you know it, it made my morning better because then I was like, you know, Kagrig reminded me of the the drunk raid, and I thought about it. And I'm like, yeah, that was a fun time. You know, it's just it's nice every now and then is what I'm saying. So I I've always had good experiences is what I'm trying to say when I like reconnect with old friends and stuff like that. So it's something that I want to do. But the thing is, like with Kagrig, it's you know, a little bit easier. With other friends I've reached out to in the past, it, you know, it's much easier. If I message them and I'm just like, hey, how's it going? It usually ends up being, you know, just a little conversation like that. And I'm fine with that, right? You know, it's great. I like that interaction that we had this morning. That was cool. Um, it's a little bit trickier when it's somebody who you were like really, really good friends with. Like one of your best friends at the time. And then, you know, for whatever reason that fell through. Somebody who you like talk to all the time and actually like, you know, talk to about personal shit, right? Where you weren't just like, you know, friends who messed around and did like Mythic Plus or something. You were like actually really good friends. Then it's a little bit more difficult because, you know, with that kind of stuff, where do you start with a conversation like that? Because it's like, you know, you know a lot about the person and obviously at a certain extent, um, you, uh, you don't just like forget about all that stuff. In fact, the entire reason why I thought about this in the first place is because I was, um, like, I, I was telling my sister a lot of, like, old WoW stories and stuff like that when we were, uh, you know, leveling up and basically telling her about, oh, what the hell? I just fucking full healed me. All right, nice. Um, telling her about, like, a lot of these old guild drama stories, like the cheating officer story, uh, regaling her with all the tales that I've told on YouTube videos because, you know, she hasn't watched all my YouTube videos, right? Um, uh, I think that's, I'm guessing that's a wanted quest, Zoroku the Grifter. I vaguely remember that. Um, yeah, so I told her all those stories, told her about, you know, some of my old friend situations and stuff like that. Um, and I think, you know, because one thing is, uh, what do I have to do? Oh, use the healing bomb, okay. Um, and then, like, when I was telling those stories and, and talking about, like, you know, a lot of uh, personal things with, like, my friends at the time and, you know, all, all that stuff, and... My sister, I think I mentioned before, was dealing with her own stuff with, like, you know, she was going through, um... Oh, it's an Agi Dagger. That's actually... it's actually quite a good upgrade. Uh, and that is a good cape upgrade. And that is a good glove upgrade. Very nice. That's, uh, three really good green BOEs back-to-back. -back. Uh, I will take that. Um, but yeah, my sister was going through her own stuff at the time with, like, you know, a bad breakup and whatnot. And one thing that I remember she asked me is, like, you know, how do you just, like, forget all this stuff? Like, you know, does it ever bother you that you, like, remember all these things about these people? And it's like, you remember all these stories and all these, like, interactions we, you had with these people who, like, you used to be friends with? Like, obviously, in some cases I was. But she was like, don't you ever get the urge to, like, just message them? Um, and, you know, reach out and see how they're doing after all this time? Because, you know, her entire point was she already struggles with, you know, um, wanting to message the guy who, you know, she just broke up with, right? Because she's, like, wondering how he's doing. And even though she knows it's not a good idea, she's, like, you know, she already knows so much about him as a person. And she wonders, like, you know, oh, yeah, he was telling me about that thing um, that was going on in his life or whatever. What do I do? Glittering Sapphire? Uh... Forget how to do this quest. I know I need to turn into the snake to pick up this one other quest, but I want to do this one first, just because I will probably be a little bit easier when I have flying. Can vanish if that guy aggros. Yeah, we should be fine. 
Um, and it, like my answer to that question was, you know, in case it wasn't obvious, you don't really. At least I don't. I still remember everything about most people, right? And, you know, in some cases it makes for interesting storytelling. It's not like I'm going to sit here and like reveal somebody's deep, dark secrets that I haven't spoken to in a while. Um, but at least, you know, for some of the stuff that is less innocuous, or especially if somebody was like an asshole to me or something like that, um, then I have no problem sharing the story. But yeah, it, it does sometimes bother me wondering, you know, how some of those people are doing and, you know, are, are like, how did things work out for them and, and all that stuff. And it, it, it nags at the back of your mind, definitely. That's what I kind of told her. I'm like, you know, you don't really forget. It is something that, at least for me, I do think about a lot. And there's a lot of times where, like I said, I do think about, you know, maybe I should message that person. Maybe I should reach out and, you know, see how they're doing and stuff like that. And in a lot of cases, I don't, because in a lot of cases, I'm just like, it is kind of the situation of, well, they weren't really like that good of a friend. And I, I mean, it feels weird to like rate your friends like that, because I never am upset with having friends. Like, I'm never going to just like, I don't know, ditch one of my friends because it's like, oh, well, you're not that close of a friend to me. It. it I, I don't really believe in that, but it is one of those things where if I haven't spoken to them in years, it is inherently a difficult process of reaching out to somebody, for me at least. You know, maybe some people can very easily just shoot a message to a person they haven't spoken to in a very long time, and that wouldn't phase them whatsoever. For me at least, I, I get nervous. I it, It's like I don't know what the fuck to say. You know, I have enough time, uh, enough of a difficult time just like starting a conversation um with like, you know, a regular person in a normal situation, not like, you know, breaking the ice after five years of silence. That That's fucking difficult, uh, especially five years, and especially if it didn't end super well, right? Like, you know, if the last interaction with one of your friends was like a fight, it's, it's difficult because it almost kind of like colors your entire memory of them, where, you know, you try to remember that, no, 90% of the time when you talk to that person, you know, you got along really well. And it's like, they were a really good friends. And, uh, you know, just because you had one fight where it's just unlucky that that one fight was the thing that ended your friendship, right? And that and that's like the lasting memory that you sit with of like, gee, I wonder if I could have handled something a little bit differently. Um, it's difficult to think back on that and be like, well, obviously that was just like one instance. And especially, so in this, you know, I, I'm kind of beating around the bush here. Obviously, point is, in a lot of cases, I wouldn't make the effort to reach out. In this case, I did. Because in this case, going into details, uh, I was a friend I had specifically back in um, late Legion, early BFA. And um, talked to them for like a lot, right? Uh, they, uh, it was... Like, final, like basically a few months into Antorus, and I was in this one guild at the time where I, I, I didn't like that guild, right? It's one of those guilds where it's not, I haven't really talked about the drama. I guess this is the guild drama story. It, it is, frankly, a guild drama story that I don't think I've ever told. I may have made, like, references to it. Don't I? What, am, what is this quest? Oh, it's just, I'm, I've been looking around for those orb things. Meanwhile, I've gotten all the ones I need, and I just need to kill Sethrak. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really think I've ever directly told this guild drama story, partially because it's not terribly interesting, but also because it's kind of, like, depressing, right? It's one of those where, you know, a lot of guild drama stories are, like, funny. You know, it's people doing something stupid. It, it's not really as fun when you're telling guild drama stories where somebody was just really fucking mean for no reason. Um, and this was definitely one of those cases, you know, and the the bad stuff about that guild in general wasn't anything like, you know, haha -ha entertaining. It was your typical like they they were a guild that for a while had been like an AOTC guild. And I joined them around the time when like a lot of other people were, um, you know, who were really good at like, you know, mythic raiding and stuff were joining. In fact, a uh, raid leader at the time, um, maybe some people will know him, uh, Kylier. Uh, has still been, you know, around in, like, the, the top 100-esque mythic scene along with myself now, which it's kind of funny because we um, we bumped into each other in Sepulchre of the First Ones, uh, and I was like, oh, shit, Kylie, you know, I've been a while. And uh, he was honestly the nicest person in that guild, and honestly, 
the fact that he was the raid leader was one of the main reasons why I took so long to leave this shit guild. Because in almost all cases, when I have problems with a guild, it's with the raid leader. A lot of times the raid leader is the issue. Well, in this case, Kylier was the raid leader, but the dude was just the nicest man alive. Like, ah, uh, I love Kylier. He's amazing player. He's, I think he still plays BM Hunter. Um, and he's like a damn good BM Hunter, like one of the best. Um, and it, the funny thing is now, though, because I raid an occasional excellence and he raids an astral. And obviously anybody outside of those guilds isn't going to know. But if they have like some beef going on, obviously it started way before I joined. So I don't know all the details. But all I know is like my guild leader or, or rather the guild leader of astral hates my guild leader. And I've asked him about it. And he's like, yeah, some stupid drama way back in the day. And like he misinterpreted something I said. And now he like hates me with a passion for whatever reason. So, technically, me and my former raid leader are in rival guilds now, but, you know, I, I have nothing against the guy. I still really like him, really nice. Um, all that to say, he joined this guild around, I think, a little bit earlier than that, but he took over raid leading for it around the time when I joined in Antorus. So, it was like a former mostly AOTC guild that would push into Mythic, and now they were making an actual serious push for, um, for like, Cutting Edge. And... It was definitely, like, at the time, a bit of a step down for me, because I had gotten Cutting Edge the previous tier um, on KJ. And I thought about, like, just joining, you know, a, a better guild to guarantee Cutting Edge or something like that. But I had some friends in this guild, so I was like, you know, as long as they're going to try for it, um, you know, I'm fine with it, right? And it's kind of those that thing where I think a lot of people in that position um, have maybe done stuff like me in that situation right where i had been raiding in like low tier mythic guilds for like a few years at that point and i had been used to that but then over the last few years i had made a push to like actually get cutting edge and you know i kind of told myself oh well you know i used to raid in like low level mythic guilds for a while i could totally go back to that and raid with friends again right and um wrong i could not it was it's like once you've gotten a taste of like cutting edge rating and like mythic progression and stuff it's really hard to just go back to that um especially when people are like you know aggressively not taking it seriously like if people are just messing around and having it fun that's fine but you know it was very much like the mindset of a lot of people were there to kill bosses and then a few people were there with the mindset of like you know fuck you you don't pay my sub um like, there, there was one dude, one French dude, who was banging the guild leader, and he was absolutely dog shit at the game. He played a rep pally. And he only had a raid spot because he was banging the guild leader. And, you know, it wasn't, like, any serious drama, because when I finally did call him out, and, you know, I wasn't like, oh, you have a raid spot because you're banging the guild leader. That's a little bit too far. But at one point, like... I, I called him out for basically consistently underperforming and then making excuses about it, right? And that's the thing that I have, you know, issue with generally in most cases. Like, I will always try to help somebody, but when they clearly show no interest in improving and they are willing to blame, like, anybody else or any other factors on, you know, their un underperforming nature, that's what really irks me. So, like, I brought something up, he made, like, a million excuses, and I, I called him out and basically was like, you know, cut the bullshit. Um, you know, you clearly don't deserve to be here if you have that mentality. I forget exactly what I said. It's been a while. Um, I also, I'm also getting very off topic. Point is, um, I basically pissed him off to the point where he told the guild leader, it's him or me. And the guild leader was like, well, uh, Haraldin, or uh, they knew me, I guess, by Lenara. Lenara's our tank, so, um, him. <laughs> Even though... They were sleeping together. They weren't, like, in a relationship or whatever. So he was pissed. Absolutely hated me. Uh, because, I mean, she basically, I think she kind of told him, like, fuck off, right? Stop being a baby and just, like, you know, own up to it and then show up to raid. So she didn't, like, tell him fuck off, but she was basically like, I'm not kicking our main tank out of the guild because you got your feelings hurt that he called you out on being shit. And, which, you know, I guess as as much as she was a bitch, and I will get into why she was a bitch, um, I at least respect her for that, for being willing to put her foot down on that one particular instance. Um, but basically, uh, when uh, I, I met this particular friend, the one who I, I recently reached out to, in Raided Battlegrounds, actually, because I was trying to get a crit verse piece uh, and upgrade it from raiding 
because it was like I was super min maxing and crit burst was my best stat. So it was like marginally better than an item I could get from Mythic Plus or rating. Um, and I met them in raided battlegrounds. And uh, after I became friends with them, I basically was like, hey, uh, I think they started coming to my Mythic Tomb of Sargeras runs because, you know, like I said, this was during Antorus. But I was still putting together runs for Mythic TOS because, well, I wanted to do it because, once again, there was another piece of Crit Verse gear, specifically a tier helmet for Vengeance DH that had Crit Verse on it. And it was like 40 item levels below uh, Antorus gear. But if it had Titan Forged 40 levels, which, you know, Titan Forging was a thing back then, then it would have been my best in slot. So I was running Mythic TOS on the off chance that I got a 40 item level Titan Forge on something that would be a minor secondary stat upgrade, which in hindsight, I had way too much time back then to be doing shit like that. Like, God, I wish I still had enough free time to set up an entire alt raid for an old raid content just because I wanted some minor optimization piece. Ah, fucking college. Oh, those were the days. But anyways, um, so I put together a Mythic TOS group for that exact reason, and my friends started showing up to that. And eventually, uh, after we started doing Mythic Plus and stuff, I was like, hey, you know, my guilds... Oh, is this guy going to try to fuck me up? I I will not win. Truce. Let me... Let me uh, slash hug, slash truce. Okay, he's walking away. I don't think he wants to hurt me. I, I do have three levels on him. Little does he know... I would absolutely get demolished in a 1v1 because I don't fucking know how to play rogue in PvP. So, you know, he could kick my ass if he wanted to, but thankfully it seems like he does not want to. So I I at least get to walk away with my life for now. And maybe he's thinking the same thing. Maybe he's like, oh, this rogue would absolutely dumpster me. Uh, and that's why he's keeping his distance. I'll let him think that. Maybe I should have, like, slash taunted him and be like, ha ha ha. You better run, um, but it looks like whatever I did worked. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I basically, like, I asked my friend, you know, do you want to come to our alt runs and stuff like that? And they said sure, and um, uh, tagged along for those. And uh, it was one of those things where the, the alt runs weren't meant to be, like, a guild's only thing, which is why I invited them. And I... I probably ask like Kylie or, or somebody else like one of the officers like is it okay if like I invite my friend to the alt runs and I'm pretty sure they said fine um because you know they didn't really care right uh you, a lot of people brought their friends or family to it um but here's the thing this particular friend was a girl right and my guild leader was also a girl and I I think the only explanation I still have to this day as to why my guild leader randomly just turned into a massive bitch is like she was used to being the only girl in the guild. So every single time my friend showed up to these heroic runs, my guild leader was just the most toxic piece of shit I've ever seen. Just harassing the shit out of me and my friend constantly for absolutely no reason. Just to be a dick. Just constantly teasing her whenever she talked, constantly, like, picking on her for random bullshit. Just massive, massive fucking asshole. And it got to the point where it spilled over into our main raids. And she wasn't even in our main raids. But, like, they would give me shit about, like, the fact that my friend showed up to the heroic runs during main raids, making little quips. Like, she and her little her little fanboys, right? Some of the, the other healers in the guild were, like, massive fucking simps. And, um... Uh, just, like, basically anything the guild leader said, uh, the healers of my guild would echo it and be like, Ho ho ho, wow, that's so funny, ho ho ho, I'm just gonna repeat it and tease Harald in for no fucking reason. Um, so really fucking annoying, right? I had to deal with that bullshit. And then finally my friend was like, why are you in this guild? They seem like assholes. And I was kind of like, well, some of them are cool, like Kylie is cool, and I had a few other friends, like my friend Lub, who I'm still friends with to this day. Admittedly, I knew him from before this guild. So he joined the guild because of me, but at the same time, I didn't want to tell him like, all right, sorry, man, I'm leaving this guild, um, which at this point, he's kind of used to it. Like he had followed me around through so much guild drama. Uh, even he was in the cheating officer guild for like a few weeks. Uh, he joined right before all that bullshit happened. <laughs> and then, you know, years, this is years after the fact, right? Because the cheating officer stuff was in Nihilotha. But I just remember telling my friend Love about like, yeah, so... 
Um, I know that you were planning on raiding with us and gearing up your character, but uh, here's what happened with that guild. Uh, and then he's like, I don't even know why I'm surprised at this point. It's like every single guild you join seems to implode. Like, yeah, <laughs> that that's just how it goes. But so far, so far, you know, this, this guild, I've... I think this might have been the longest I've ever been in a guild. And there has been no major drama. I'm doing really good this time, guys. I'm avoiding guild drama. I'm not causing any problems. You know, th this is like uh, my my redemption arc for getting out of guild drama and stuff like that. Anyways, um, so point being, I eventually left this guild, which, like I said, it was already not a great environment. I already didn't like it there. There were a lot of things that I didn't love, but the reason I don't like talking about it is because it's not entertaining. Like, there's there's nothing funny about all the shit that my guild leader was saying at the time. It's just her trying to be really fucking mean to a random stranger that she did not know at all. She did not know my friend whatsoever. My friend just showed up for the heroic runs and made the mistake of talking in Discord, and I, I think my guild leader felt threatened. It's still, to this day, the only logical explanation I can think for it. And I wasn't, like, into my guild leader or anything like that, so it's not even like she had that reason. I don't know, just in case anybody gets that idea, right? Um, I, I think it was very clear that, you know, I did not like her from the start, so there was- it was, wasn't, like, a competition thing, as weird as that sounds, right? I, I- I don't know, I'm just trying to explain why the fuck, you know, a, a grown woman would act, like, that fucking abnormal, uh, and I don't know. Um, I, like I did say, though, she had, like, a lot of simps in the guilds who, uh, would constantly, like, you know, just praise her for doing basic shit. Like, she would disengage out of a mechanic as a hunter, and everybody would be like, wow, you did such a good job! And she's like, yes, yes, I know, I am amazing, as she's gray parsing on a BM hunter. I think she played Marksman, actually. Who fucking gives a shit? Um, uh, do they have 30-minute Hearthstone? I'll take 30 minute Hearthstone. I would have to re-log to get that, but that would actually uh, be a time save. Um, but, let's see. First thing I see upon joining this guild, can anybody give me 5,000 gold for flying? Like, yeah, sure, dude, let me get right on that. <laughs> uh, some people. Like, man, just level up to max level. Like, if I can do it, you can too. Fuck it out. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide guild chat so I don't need to read this random ass guilds. What are their name? Only hordes or something? Fuck it out. If you didn't give me 15 minute Hearthstone cooldown reduction, I wouldn't join you. Um. Anyways, back to the story. So point being, after my guild uh, leader, you know, started being a massive dipshit, I decided to leave that guild and I actually formed my own guild in BFA. Which is different than the guild I formed at the start of Shadowlands, which some people may remember. Uh, that was a completely different guild that I made later on. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I also decided I was going to make a guild of friends at the start of um, BFA. And that one didn't go quite as well as the Shadowlands one. Shadowlands one technically didn't really go great either. Uh, if we're being completely honest about it. Um, let me just blind this guy. Oh, fuck. I have Blade Flurry active. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, I did not get buried treasure. But thankfully, he's doing a bunch of swirly AoEs, meaning I take no damage. I'm gonna do Kidney Shot here. Blade Flurry. Come on. Oh, I'm so fancy. Oh, look at that fucking sick play. Okay. Roll the bones. I did not get buried treasure. But I think I'm still fine here. Going to do kidney shot. Come on. No. It can't end like this. Not after how cool that was. I do have cheat death. I'm going to proc it. I didn't even proc cheat death. Easy fucking game. Woo. <laughs> All right. Oh, I need to. I need to heal. That was fucking intense. All right. Um, let me. 
I really don't want to... Let me just sap that guy. Don't want to get into combat. And... Alright, we're good to go. I should probably do the quests down there. I also... I don't really need to do these quests. Like, I could just ignore this. But, eh. It's whatever. Um... Just make sure I kick that. These guys fucking hurt, though. Okay, good. What do I need? Sethrak Arsenals, Temple Defenders Rescued. So I need to find the cages. There's one over there. I could maybe get some of these with Sap. Like, could I do Distract, Sap, and then just grab these from here? Oh, and I get the last Temple Defender? Yeah! Rogue Tech, baby! Let's go! Okay. I'm getting the hang of it. Alright, how do I want to... I want to approach this. Uh, there's a patrol right there. So... Sap you. Um... Distract so that the patrol stops, and then I should be able to grab this. Ooh, okay. All right. I think I played that well. I am proud of myself for that. I've already shot past my projection, and I'm going to miss it by a little bit. I'm going to go past 11 hours. But you know what? If I get to do cool rogue shit like that and really show that I, I, I'm kind of getting it, you know? I, I'm learning. Then uh, it's all worth it, right? I also probably have enough gold to buy a few Darkman quest items right at the tail end of this. Hmm. Could be a good way to close it out. Alright. Two quests here. Uh, not enough to fully complete it. Almost, though. Uh, missing a few talent points. Fan the Hammer. Alacrity and Deeper Stratagem. Yeah. Uh, all this to say, right? You know, I'm getting long-winded in the storytelling. Basically, um, my friend joined my new guild, a, a bunch, along with a bunch of my other friends, um, my friend Lub, uh, one of my friends Chris, who I also haven't spoken to in a, a little while. Um, I know he's busy doing, you know, his own stuff, uh, which we call it. But yeah, um, main problem, right, is it was kind of, uh, it was like I wanted to, you know, have the guild be semi-serious. I wanted to at least push for cutting edge. And I was taking things seriously. I had all these plans about how I wanted the guild to be run. Um, you know, I, I wanted to recruit people who were semi-serious. Uh, but there were a lot of people who were still somewhat casual, right? It's difficult to get, like, you know, amazing players, especially because we were on Wormrest Accord. And Wormrest Accord isn't necessarily, you know, the most amazing raiding server in the planet. A lot of people don't go there for Mythic raiding. Uh, now, at the same time... I met, uh, the irony of that is I met a lot of really good players when leading that guild, who I'm still friends with to this day, who are really good at just, like, a lot of different things. Like, uh, I have two friends, Sen and Trail, who uh, were initially recruits in that guild that I was running, and I'm still friends with them. I had a friend, Ezu, also a recruit in that guild, still uh, talk to them every now and then, and uh, they are both very good players, and I played, like, Final Fantasy, and uh, Sen and Trail actually got me into New World way back when. I played on the same server as them. I even streamed it on my channel at one point. Um, so, yeah, the irony of all of that is I did actually meet a lot of good players on Wormrest Accord. So, not saying that, like, oh, yeah, Wormrest Accord, it's like some RP trash. No, there, there is a lot of really good players there. But it is di still difficult to find enough people to recruit for, like, a full Mythic team. But the main point is I had a lot of friends in there, like my friend Lub, who, you know, he was an officer in the guild, right? And... Love is the kind of person where, you know, if I need him to get something done, he gets shit done, right? Like, he was always of the mindset of, like, I think there's two, like, the classic example of, like, something that people think when they think of, like, a guild run by friends and, like, you know, friends and officer roles is the people who kind of slack off and, you know, they scrape by because, you know, they're friends with the guild leader, right? And, you know, they know that they're going to get a pass. And I did not let off my friends. 
In fact, uh, two of my friends actually quit the guild because I think they kind of thought that they would be able to just like show up and put in minimal effort and get raid spots because they were friends with me. And I basically told them like, no, you show up, you put in the same effort as everybody else or you lose your raid spot, no fucking exceptions. And in one of those cases, one of them was my cousin, right? But my cousin also it, like acknowledged that fact that he knew he should be putting in the same amount of effort. And when he realized that he wasn't going to be able to, he didn't want to put me in that position of feeling like I needed to keep him on, despite, you know, the fact that um, he couldn't spend as much time. So he did the uh, the mature thing and he stepped down on his own. And he was like, you know, I know that I can't dedicate to this and I'm not going to put you in a tough spot and basically make you choose between sitting your cousin and um, uh, whatchamacallit, you know, playing favorites. So, you know, he, he did the right thing, right? And... Uh, one of my other friends was like a little bit upset about it and frustrated and was kind of like, you know, you know, oh, you're being a dick and stuff like that. But it's like, hey, the the alternative is, you know, you create an unfair environment where some people are expected to like carry others who aren't uh, doing all the work. And I hate that. I absolutely fucking hate that. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, my friend Love, for instance, one of the reasons I felt comfortable giving him the officer role. I know for a fact he's the kind of person who if I'm like, I need a job done and I'm like, Love, I need you to do this. He's like, I got you. And I know for a fact that I can count on him for, like, literally anything. Because he's always of the mindset of, like, you know, he doesn't want to, um, he doesn't want to feel like, you know, he he's just earning a raid spot because he's friends with me or whatever. He shows up, he wants to get shit done just as much as everybody else. Uh, and, you know, that that's the kind of mindset you need from a good raider and especially a good officer, right? Uh... So it, it also one of the reasons why I'm still good friends with him to this day, like, you know, when you have somebody like that who is exactly on the same like wavelength as you, you're bound to get along, right? So there's a reason that we're still good friends. Um, even though uh, he's been trying to get me to play Destiny 2, which um, I've heard a lot about Destiny 2, actually. Uh, and, you know, people saying it's good. Apparently there's like a new expansion. So he's been like, oh, I'm telling you, you'd love it. Because he knows I like, you know, this solo content stuff. And he was telling me how there's this whole, like, scene around doing, like, raids solo. And he's like, I know you'd fucking love that. So he did make it sound, he, he did make it sound enticing. But it's one of those things where it's like, it sounds cool, but look at how much fucking work I have to do already with all this shit. You know, I, I just don't have that much time these days to just try out new shit. There's so many things that I want to try. And, you know, as much as I'd love to do that, you know, maybe. I just, it, you know, especially within the next month, there's absolutely no chance I will have free time to uh, to try a new game. But he did make it sound interesting. Minor tangent, right? Um, uh, but yeah, so all that to say, like, I had another friend, Chris, too, who was also... Chris was, like, he, he's been doing cutting-edge rating for years before even I was doing it. Uh, he was... Uh, I met him because he and my friend Paul were, like, on one of the best challenge mode teams in the world... And they convinced me to tank with them, and I was not, like, an amazing tank when I first started. Because, like, I literally learned how to tank from Chris and Paul. Like, they're the people who taught me, right? Uh, so they were infinitely better than I was when I was first learning. And Chris was, like, way above my level. But the point is, you know, because we were friends, he was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll, I'll join your guild and stuff like that. Uh, but he was also of the same mindset of he wanted things to be taken really seriously. So basically... We were in this environment where, like, all of the guild leaders and stuff... I just realized I've also been forgetting to put banners in these guys. Uh, shit. Uh, I need to do that. I always I hate these quests where you have to, like, put banners in their corpses, because I always forget. Um, uh, but yeah, so we were in a guild where, like, a lot of the players had that mindset of... They want to get shit done, they want to take things seriously. And my other friend was still very new to Mythic Raiding. You know, she hadn't experienced it a lot before. So I think she was kind of, I, I don't want to speak for her, right? But I'm just guessing based on the entire situation and how it worked out. I got the impression that she felt, oh, can't forget the banners, can't forget the banners. Felt very, like, overwhelmed by the whole thing and, you know, all the expectations there. And it wasn't like I was forcing her to do it. But, you know, she had agreed to, um, you know, help run the guild and stuff. And, you know, there was this m mindset of, oh, we're going to get all this other stuff done, right? And I think... She got very overwhelmed by it. And uh, she didn't communicate that to me, as far as I could tell. Um, 
but I got the impression that I think she felt bad because everybody was doing it and she was the one left out and she felt like she had to. Uh, and I was kind of, I guess, uh, continuing that expectation, not really intentionally, but just because it was like the thing that we were doing, right? Um, and I think she got overwhelmed, kind of snapped, and we got into like, you know, a stupid fight over all of that stuff. And it was, and then she quit the guilt, right? And obviously, I'm not going into, like, insane detail here, but we were really good friends up until that point. And uh, I, I always had considered, after the fact, reaching out. I didn't at the time because, you know, I had a lot of other stuff going on, and I was kind of like, you know, it, it seemed minor to me, so I didn't really think it was, like, a big deal. I didn't think it was something I should reach out. But I kind of realized, like, I, I definitely could have handled the whole situation better, especially at the end. I was kind of rude when she got, like, upset about the whole guild stuff and i definitely could have could have handled that better right um so i felt kind of bad about the whole thing but it's like i don't know there's there's no good way to like reach out and start that conversation so, so i just never did it it's not an easy conversation to have and it's like sure i know that i could get along with this person really well uh, aside from all of the stupid drama about the guild thing which you know especially in hindsight sounds so minor and so unimportant um, but how do you just, like, ignore the fact that the last time you talked to them, it didn't end super well, right? Um, even if it was over something really stupid. Well, let me complete this quest, and... Oh, what the fuck just hit me? I guess I'm in combat with something. Uh, where's the turn-in? It's inside here, okay. Yeah, so all that to say, I thought about it for a while. She um, she messaged me at one point uh, accusing me of stealing her name on uh, one server. Uh, I guess she thought that, like, because it was taken on, I think, Emerald Dream or something, and I used to play on Emerald Dream, maybe she thought I did it, which, no, I didn't. Um, so I don't really know what that was all about. I still never asked. But... Um, there was also, like, at one point when I started making YouTube videos... Uh, she randomly left a comment on one of my YouTube videos, basically just saying, like, hi, or something like that. And I never really thought much of it, because, uh, what, what should we call it? Well, there wasn't, like, too much there. It was literally just kind of a way of saying, hey, I see that you're making videos. Cool, is kind of how I perceived it, uh, how I interpreted that whole thing. And I didn't really think it was worth giving, like, a long, detailed response to or whatever, or reaching out. And it's like, I, I don't know, I just felt still uncomfortable about the whole previous situation and wasn't really sure what to say so once again i didn't reach out and then it gets to the point where you know it's been i need to vanish to make it past all these guys yeah and it got to the point where you know it had been at this point you know five years or whatever and all that to say i was telling my sister stories and telling her stories about this guild and all that stuff and um she kind of mentioned she was like why don't you reach out to that friend it's like you know clearly you got along with her really well, right? And, uh, like, why why did you just never reach out again? And why haven't you thought of reaching out now? And it was kind of that thing of, like, well, you know, at this point, it's been so long, I don't know if I really can, right? How do you just reach out to somebody after five years, right? But uh, my sister kind of convinced me, and I was like, eh, oh, fuck it. I guess I'll, I'll at least give it a shot. I'll see. Um, I'll see. And I, I oh, fuck. Uh, wasted my grappling hook again. Uh, I don't want to die, because I'm worried that in the process of dropping combat with these guys... Okay, good, I got out of combat. So I need to kill eight mobs, kill Shathkar, and kill Krog Tamer... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's Shathkar. All right. Um, yeah, so... Honestly, I wasn't really sure how to go to go about it, so I thought about it for a while, almost a month actually, before actually saying anything. But then, you know, you, the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, how how do I have that conversation, right? Like, oh, what the fuck? Did I just fully fill my combo points with a single pistol shot? Is that what Fan the Hammer does? That's kind of fucking bonkers. What the hell? Ooh, ooh. Oh, baby. That's actually really sick. It's a shame it's so far down in the tree and you don't get it until now. But that that is absolutely whack. I feel like if Pistol Shot was a stronger button, Rogue leveling might be good. 
Because having like a semi-ranged ability that you can use to potentially kite, that does like a lot of damage and can reliably generate combo points, that would be great. But right now it feels like unless I get a pistol shot rock, it's just not really worth it, which is a shame. Ooh. Come on. And cloak that off. Nice. Uh, definitely going to heal here. Don't want to risk it. I only have uh, 61 seconds on my last Darkmoon top hat. So I need to make this next one really, really count. Um, but yeah, all that to say, I did... I keep saying all that to say, right? Just because it's an easy way to kind of get myself back into focus after the fact. Um, but I did reach out, uh, finally, because, you know, I, I was thinking about how I want to approach it. And I decided probably the best thing to do would be to just send a friend request first. Uh, just see how they respond to that. Um, obviously, if she just, like, declined the friend request, I'm pretty sure she would recognize my Discord tag. Um, so if she just had no interest in talking to me whatsoever, then sure. Sure. But she accepted the friend request, and I spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, how do I how do I approach this? Like, what exactly do I say here? Um, and I kind of just, you know, opened innocuously enough, just saying, like, you know, oh, hey, um, just uh, thought of you after, like, you know, talking to some of my old friends from BFA, because it's like, you know, it's kind of weird to say, like, I was talking to my sister and telling her stories, and she was like, oh, you should reach out to some of your old friends. Like, hey, I don't know, doesn't really sound great comes out off as like weird so i was just like yeah i was talking to some of my old friends and i thought of you and i was wondering how you were doing because we haven't spoken in a while and um we caught up apparently she plays final fantasy now has uh completely quit wow was, like two years ago or something like that and um seems to be doing good right and then we chit chatted for a little bit uh talked about how ian has Acostas is a piece of garbage and <laughs> partially kidding uh, obviously uh we both don't really like the design decisions by wow devs right that's something i can absolutely relate to god knows i've complained about it enough in my runs uh but uh what's it called um I make sure i get this okay i want to oh this is a good opportunity want to just kill only one so i can complete this quest and then i'll do between the eyes and all the bones got nothing so dispatch pistol shot and that does so much damage that's so sweet and then there's a guy in this cave that i would need to kill uh yeah but you no know, honestly got along fairly well i uh, had a pretty good conversation but ever since that that was like a few days ago i just haven't really I haven't said anything. I haven't reached out. It was like, nice conversation, went better than I expected. I was worried, um, you know, she would say like, why the fuck haven't you messaged me in five years and why are you messaging me now, right? Because it's like, you know, there is kind of the question of why now, right? You know, why would you just randomly message them? And it's like, almost like, what do you want out of this? Like, it, it's just, I, I don't know. That's uh, honestly one of the reasons why I have never done it because I'm always worried about how it's going to come across. But um went definitely better than i expected but at this point it's like i don't know it's like what do you what do you say to somebody at that point because you know we had a good conversation but clearly we still at this point run in like different circles right um i play final fantasy but it's not like i play it all the time or um you know play it super actively final fantasy has very much been like a side game for me a thing that i play in between wow patches so I don't know. It's, it's like, I don't really have any great, like, segues of, like, how can I continue that conversation? And it's, it, you know, on one hand, I could just not say anything, right? You know, I, I could just completely drop it, and that's fine. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, it was a good conversation. You know, it, walking away from it at that, it's still perfectly fine. And, um, and on one hand, it's like, you know, there's it, cases like with my friend Kagrig from this morning, where I have a good five-minute-long conversation with him, and I'm perfectly content with that. 
you know, if Kagreg were to message me again right now, would I be like, oh, cool, and respond to him and continue talking to him? Like, would I be upset that Kagreg was messaging me more? No. Um, but, like, do I feel the need to message Kagreg? Do I, like, want to talk to Kagreg more? No, not really. Nothing against Kagreg. It's just, like, I don't really feel like it's something I have to do. I didn't realize that this just was a mount. I could have just flew, I think. Yeah, whatever. Um, that said, I do feel like I kind of want to talk to this friend more. There's, like, a lot of questions that I have. A lot of things that were, where I'm, like, I am wondering, you know, how did all of that stuff work out, right? Uh, and there's no easy way to ask that, because, you know, on one hand, I don't want to pry, but it's like, you, I don't know. There's no good way. There's no fucking good way to do that. Um, yeah, I, either I just continue messaging and, you know, maybe she also wants to talk or fuck, I don't know. Uh, it's difficult. That's where it's like, it's been, it's been something that I've been debating on. You know, what do I say? How do I bring it up? Should I even bring it up? Should I just be like, hey, look, you know, uh, is what it is. Um, can't really continue that conversation. Eh, eh, fucking, I don't know, but that, that's been on my mind lately a lot. And I, I've been debating on how I want to handle that, what I want to do, what I want to say. And um, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not the easiest thing in the world to figure out. Uh, certain conversation starters, I, I, I just can't think of. Uh, but I guess, you know, one of the things I like to do in these runs is just talk about what I'm thinking at the moment. And I always worry about stuff like that. Cause like, uh, funny, funny story, uh, in, in relation to that, that's kind of all I have to say on that particular topic. Um, I guess, I, I don't know, maybe, I'll, maybe if, it, if I manage to figure shit out, I'll, um, in like a, a future run, talk about how it all resolved. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it depends. Maybe I won't. I don't, I, fucking whatever. Um, but the the reason I get worried about like talking about things that involve like friends of mine or people I know and not like random people from guilds who I don't talk to ever again. Like obviously, if my friend Kagrig mess or watches this, like I doubt he's gonna give give a shit that I discuss the fact that he messaged me about the drunk raid. Right? It's like a super innocuous thing. But uh, I ha the the one of the more awkward ones. It wasn't even bad, it was just, like, awkward, because it wasn't, like... It was something where it was kind of similar to this, where I just decided to talk about it at the very end of one of my runs. And I was just like, fuck it, you know, it's something I'm thinking about in the moment. I'm just gonna fucking say it. And then they actually watched it. Uh, and it was like... Uh, I'll, I'll give the backstory, right? So, uh, for this case, it was... Uh, about, actually, yeah, it's been a year at this point. Oh, it's been a while. Um, about a year ago, uh, when TBC Classic was still out, I did a video leveling my warrior up to 70 in TBC Classic. Um, obviously, the nature of TBC leveling, it's the kind of thing that you can't do the entire thing in one sitting. So effectively, I did, I think it was like five hours long. And I did just level 69 to 70, and it still took me, like, five hours. Because uh, I spent a lot of time talking, like, fucking around, doing random stuff. Um, and I just, I made that into a video. Because, like, people had asked me to do classic leveling, and it's like, I didn't really want to make, like, a classic leveling video. But I had already been leveling my warrior in my free time, so I figured, fuck it. Uh, around that time, I had been doing a lot of, like, um, patch 9.2 guides. So I hadn't done a speedrun in, like, five months or something like that. And people kept saying, like, do another speedrun, do another speedrun. So all that to say, I ended up doing a classic WoW speedrun. Not really. Um, classic WoW leveling run in this kind of format where I just talk and rant about, like, random bullshit. Um, and at the time, uh, something that was on my mind is uh, kind of a new friend that I made in um, one of my... Or the guild that I joined at the time. It was actually the guild's... Uh, how do, can I, like, just stab you with the spear and do extra damage to you? It does not look like it. Uh, it was, it was actually that same guild, uh, that I w met, uh, Kag and, I guess, re-met my friend Ard in. So, same one, but at the start of Sepulchre, the first ones, we got a new Resto Druid trial. And I started running a lot of dungeons with this Resto Druid trial, and 
uh, we were getting along pretty well, but it was like one of those things where we would like talk, right? And at random points, they would just like shut down. And it was like, it, it felt like we were having a good conversation and then it just brick wall. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing again because I, I technically have already told this story once and talked about my thoughts with it. And it was like one of those things where I, I was at the time kind of in a similar situation, not sure what I how to approach this thing. And it was like a, a lot of times it's kind of like almost like solving a puzzle, right? Like I'm constantly trying to solve this puzzle in my head of like, what do I say? How do I approach this situation? Um, what's the correct move here, right? And, you know, obviously in this current situation, I'm not sure. And at that situation, what I wasn't sure is I, I had never really been in a situation like that where... You know, somebody was, like, sharing a lot, and, you know, we would be talking, and then just mid-conversation, almost, they would just completely shut down. And it was like, you know, like I said, hit a brick wall, like an invisible brick wall just out of nowhere. They're like, I don't want to talk anymore. And then it, was, it wasn't like it was a one-time thing, and then they just didn't want to talk in the future. It was, like, a consistent thing. Like, I've definitely talked to people before where it's, like, they, they decide out of nowhere, like, oh, you know, too personal, like, you know, crossed a boundary or something. I don't know. Not often, right? Like, I, I generally like to be pretty, you know, considerate. Uh, I, I don't, like, ask people a ton of, sh like, personal questions. But sometimes everybody has, like, that one thing that's off topic where, for whatever reason, they have, like, some personal history with, like, a certain subject. And they're just like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't know. Like, simple things as much as, like, you know, oh, like, how... Uh, like, how do you have a cat or something like that? And then they're just like, my cat died two years ago, and I've been depressed about it ever since. That I, I'm kind of honestly making, like, a straw man argument here just to, like, give an example of what I'm talking about. And then I feel bad where I'm like, oh, sorry, I didn't know. And then it kind of, like, kills the conversation, right? And then I feel like an asshole because I didn't realize that that was something that would cause a problem. That kind of conversation is what, I, what I'm talking about, right? And in a lot of those cases, it is just awkward. And then I'm just like, whoops, I guess I shouldn't have brought that up. Um, and then generally speaking, things fizzle out from there. You know, if there is a situation like that where the person, um, kind of felt uncomfortable talking, usually it is naturally accepted, right? That, you know, it's like, okay, you know, they, they just aren't really big into talking about personal stuff or they have like a lot of, uh, boundaries that they don't like want to cross. They just don't want to divulge. Understandable, right? And I just won't bring up personal stuff. But in this case, she kept bringing up like more personal conversations and I was like, I just had no idea how to approach it because it's like on one hand i'm like okay like you know i i i'm fine having conversations like you know if you want to tell me about xyz like your family or whatever i'm um, sure but then it's like i i don't know because then you know if i start asking too many questions and then she randomly shuts down it's like well you know i'm fine talking to you but do you want to have this conversation i don't get it and i was just like not sure how to approach this right it's been a while so i'm, I'm and i also at this point don't want to get into all the details right but point being um i talked about this and basically i just kind of said you know uh gave like a tldr of the situation and said something to the effect of like i kind of feel like i'm in an awkward spot because like you know i want to be a good friend right i want to listen to them and talk and stuff like that but i almost feel like a lot of times when i am talking to them i'm like walking on eggshells because i don't want to set something i don't want to say something that's accidentally going to set them off but then i feel like sometimes i'm just being really distant and not like being an active listener even though like i am listening but i don't want to like you know, a, a lot of times the way that I like listen and the way that I kind of interact in conversations is like when somebody says something, you know, I ask for more information, right? They'll like say like, oh yeah, um, you know, there's this thing that I really like to do and I'll be like, oh, tell me more about that. You know, like, uh, like, what, what, like, what does it involve? Like, you know, maybe I haven't heard of that activity before or something like that. I, I don't know. I'm trying to give examples um, and it, it's difficult. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll ask, like, more questions, get them talking, because usually, obviously, people like talking about things they enjoy, right? So, if I can clearly tell that one of my friends is, like, interested in talking about something, then I'll, I'll keep asking about it. Like, you know, my friend Love, for instance, uh, right? He will talk for hours about his, like, classic WoW prog. And it's like, I'm not actively progging in Classic WoW, so it's not like it's something that, you know, I'm actively doing. But when he's telling me about, like, Algalon progression, I'll ask questions about the fight. And, you know, I, I don't know a ton about Algalon, so I'll be like, oh, how does this mechanic work? And he'll he'll be, like, explaining the fight to me. And it's like, at the end of the day, you know, do I really care about learning how Algalon works? 
uh, when it's a fight that I'm not going to do? No. But, you know, Lub's my friend, and he's clearly excited about Algalog Prague, and he clearly wants to talk about it. So, of course, as a good friend, I'm going to listen. I'm going to ask him questions. Uh, right? That's just, that's what you do. Right? So the entire point that I'm trying to make is in this particular situation, I felt trapped because I'm like the, the usual way that I talk to my friends and show them that I'm like listening and stuff by like actively asking questions and, you know, asking for more, inf more information. It was clearly making the rest of Druid uncomfortable. And... It, but like only sometimes where sometimes she like I would ask her a question. She'd be like, oh, yeah, and just continue and give more detailed stuff. And then sometimes I'd ask a question. Boom, shuts down. And I just I was like, ah, I don't know. I feel bad. I wish I like understood how to like properly approach this situation. And I just dropped it. And then months later, like way after the fact, she watched that video because, and, you know, I never expect my friends to watch my fucking speedruns, especially the entire way through. This is a fucking five hour video, man. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, who the, who the fuck's going to watch one of my five hour classic WoW leveling videos? I don't know why you guys watch this. Like, I appreciate it. I'm glad you enjoy it and get some entertainment out of this. But like, I definitely don't expect one of my friends to randomly be like, I'm going to open up his YouTube channel and watch all five hours of his fucking video. So like... I didn't really think there was a chance of, you know, my Resto Druid friends watching my my five hour classic WoW leveling video, especially because it wasn't something that like had really come up in conversation a lot. Um, but then fucking what ended up happening is my my fucking guild leader at the time. I, I don't even know why he was watching it, but he I think it popped up in his recommended one of my videos and then he posted in our guild discord about it like you know how uh, my videos showed up and recommended and then he got that classic wow leveling video in his recommended because he clicked on like my first video about like I think I had a video about like tanking advice and then you know because I, I was tanking in this guild right. Uh, he linked it and he was like, oh, wow, Harlden, great taking advice here. Great, like, at being completely sarcastic. Like, I'm really glad that you, you're you teaching other people about how to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, fuck off, right? Like, it, it was a video, the, the one in question. I actually was really proud of that video. I thought it was a real well put together video. But it was like one of those where I wasn't sure how to market it. It's like certain, there are certain tanking tips that... I think a lot of people should know, but you know, a lot of people don't realize what they don't know and they don't really know what to look for. So if I have a video, I think it was called like, you know, five tanking tips you should know or something like that. And it's like, I'm pretty sure there were, there would have been a lot of people that would have found that video useful, but just didn't know that it's probably something they would actually get use out of. So it didn't perform super well, right? Um, but I, I still stand by that video. I thought it was good. Um... Anyways, point being, my guild leader decided to, like, you know, take the piss out of me for it and be like, oh, ha, ha, you know, uh, it's a goofy video about tanking stuff. And I'm just like, oh, whatever, dude. He wasn't, like, mean about it, but he definitely was, like, joking around. And it's it's one of those things where I, I think it's kind of hard for people to understand what it's like to do this and what it's like to, like, actually make these videos and stuff like that. Because, like... I mean, I get that a lot of people, and I, I think my dad kind of had ran into that difficulty earlier where, you know, he would kind of initially make jokes about some of it. And it's like, you know, I get it. I'm making YouTube videos, right? But at the end of the day, it's something that I do care about a lot, right? Like, you know, I put a lot of effort into, you know, making these and, and doing it. So when somebody kind of like, I, I don't expect everybody to like, you know, love my videos right like i'm not like i said i'm not expecting my friends to watch these things but when somebody is like dismissive of and it kind of makes fun of it and stuff something like that like i'm not going to be confrontational about it and i'm not going to be like yeah um you know please don't say that um but it is one of those things where it makes me feel bad because it's like i have to be like yeah haha -ha, yeah i know goofy tank video and then you know internally i'm thinking like yeah, I, I, I put a lot of effort into that one and I was really proud of it and I think it turned out really well and, you know, I actually really liked making that video and, you know, thank you for for criticizing it, right? And even if it is in a joking way, right? It's like, you know, to me, that video wasn't a joke. I, I really enjoyed making that and whatever. And I don't know. Um, It's like, you know, it, it's kind of like... I, I, it's kind of like that with, like, any form of art, I guess. Right? Like, YouTube videos, in a sense, are art, 
right? Like, if, if you make a drawing and somebody tells you, like, oh, your drawing looks funny, right? Like, you're going to feel like shit about it, right? Same general principle. Um, so, yeah. Point being, I wasn't thrilled with the fact that my guild leader was kind of, like, making fun of my YouTube videos. And then especially, you know, he was he started watching that um, that classic WoW run and, like, making jokes about it, like, ooh, you're telling all these, like, funny stories and whatever. And I, I, I don't even remember what it was, because it wasn't the thing about the rest of the Druid. He didn't even watch that far. So, thank fucking God he didn't get to that part, because then maybe he would have figured it out uh, that uh, I was talking about that rest of the Druid and giving me shit about it, right? Um, but he, um... Uh, whatchamacallit, like, it was one of the earlier parts in the video. Oh, yeah, I remember what it was. I, I fucking, I had a face cam on at one point. So he made fun of my fucking face cam. <laughs> and the fact that I was like, oh, look, you have a face cam on. Hee <laughs> hee hoo hoo. So funny. And it's like, yeah, yeah, so funny. Not something I'm massively insecure about, which is why I almost never do it. Totally, uh, this interaction totally isn't the reason why I've never done a face cam ever since that one video, by the way. Even though, honestly, it genuinely is. I didn't even think of that, but like, yeah, actually, that, that one interaction is probably the single reason why, um, I still haven't done a face cam. Because I tried it out, and like, I mean, it, 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 like, you know, comments were nice, people were nice about it, like, oh, cool, face cam, right, whatever. Um, and, but then, that one interaction from my guild leader at the time, just, it, you know, that that like inner anxiety of like worrying about what people are gonna say and like hearing him even like jokingly making fun of me for using a face cam and stuff like that um especially considering like i never used it for anything else and never used it in raids so like other than that video nobody had any idea what i looked like and it's like you know even if it is like illogical it's just that kind of slammed on all of my insecurities and as a result i have never done one since and you know i i've been trying to to push myself to do it again my dad keeps nagging me about that like every single time i make a video he's like oh you're gonna add a face cam to this one like you should really add a face cam right you know uh and then he sent me uh, i don't know like this person right so i don't want to like accidentally insult a random person or well secondhand insults or somebody by saying something my dad sent about them but my dad watched one of my videos and he left it on autoplay and then he came back to his computer and he sent me a screenshot of he apparently it auto played to somebody making a a classic wow blood dk guide and it was uh like a balding dude wearing a, a leopard tank top a leopard print tank top and he was like if the balding guy with a leopard print tank tank top is showing his face on cam then you have no reason not to and i'm just fucking hell like that that's it, so i feel bad on the off chance i don't know who that is uh, my dad just sent me a picture of the video, but if anybody knows who the, the balding guy with a leopard tank top is, nothing personal against him. Yes, my dad did shit talk him, but like, you know, I have nothing against balding people or people who wear leopard tank tops. That's just so happened to be the insult of choice that my dad had on that given day. Uh, but all that to say, yeah, he's been pressuring me to do it, but ever since I, I don't feel like I can, right? It's, you know, like I said, anxiety, right? It's a bitch. Uh, okay, yeah, so I can put this in my main hands, and this... Yep. Okay, mostly done with Voldoon now. I think I can go back here, and there's a few quests I could do over here, probably. And then, uh, I think I will turn in a few Darkmoon things, and that'll get us, like, almost to level 60. And then the rest you could probably get, like, Zuldazar or something. Um... Let me finish the story though that I, I was I was saying. Uh, yeah, so basically, rest of druid friend, um, uh, and I, I. And here's the thing, right? Of course, I know what video that is, right? So, I like it was. This was months after the fact, and uh, at that point, I had kind of gotten to the point where I I just my my solution to the problem i posed in the the video about like how to handle my friend is i just kind of stopped really bringing up anything like that and i think at one point i i had a conversation with her about that and i basically said something to the effect of like you know look i enjoy talking to you right but i don't really know how to handle this and i was honest and i and i just said like you know because she told me something to the effect of like you know she uh 
she, a lot of times she just doesn't like talking to people and she likes being alone. And a lot of times she gets into a position where she just, there are certain things that she doesn't want to share. And then she's not exactly sure how to say that. I don't know. Basically, I wasn't sure how to handle it. She clearly wasn't sure how to handle it. And I kind of said, you know, nicely, look, I like talking to you. If you want to message me, go for it. Um, but I am not entirely sure how to respond to you in these particular cases, just being, being blunt and, you know, uh, it is what it is. Right. And I, I kind of, I tried to express that to the best of my ability. I don't think she fully got it. Right. Um, but then, you know, we were still friends, right. But then my, my fucking guild leader links that and is joking about it and, and said something to the effect of, you know, the face cam and something else, some story that I told, uh, oh yeah, I think I told a story about our guild or something like that. Some, some dumb thing that had happened. And, uh, I think my guild leader, actually that one he enjoyed because it was something where I think it made him look good because it was something like dumb that happened in one of our boosting runs. And I was talking about how like some other person did something stupid and he thought it was funny hearing me recount that and like, you know, tell that story from my perspective. So he, he, like, and that, that's the thing. I don't hate my guild leader for doing this right which is why i said i feel bad i know he was just trying to be funny and joke around and he even did message me after the fact and say something to the effect of like you know i actually enjoyed watching it like he watched it for two hours and he was like i enjoyed watching your video for two hours like basically thumbs up good job you know your, your video is cool and i was like thanks you know thanks but you gave me like you know uh severe anxiety by the fact that you said that thing about the face cam right uh which i'm, I'm not gonna bring that up right but i was just like yeah yeah thanks thanks for i'm glad you enjoyed it right whatever um so he was at least trying to be nice about it which is why i don't like hold any grudges or whatever for that even though it it, it is what it is right uh i i know he meant well so i can't be too upset about it um but uh, what you would call it? He started posting about it, and then the rest of Druid was like, "Oh, really? He told that story? Oh well, now I gotta watch it." And I'm like, "Oh, fuck, no! That's the video where I talked about the fact that I wasn't sure how to talk to her in that conversation. Obviously, I never mentioned. Oh, by the way, I um, I I mentioned that in one of the videos that I recorded, and uh, you know." I didn't really think it was a big deal because I thought you were never going to watch it. Like, I didn't say anything bad, but it's still awkward. It's like, how do you approach that? So I kind of joked around and I'm like, ah, oh, no, you don't need to watch that video. Ha 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 ha. And then internally, I'm like, oh, God, please. Oh, God, please do not watch the video, please. <laughs> and she watched the video. And um, then like a few hours later, I get a message saying, hey, so... I watched your speedrun video. This is exactly how she said it. I watched your speedrun video, one sentence, all of it, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, oh, oh fucking kill me right now. Uh, the, how is this going to go? She handled it pretty well, all things considered. I, of course, did not handle it well at all. And I feel bad because I was like freaking out. I'm like, oh, God. Uh, she's gonna, like, I thought she was gonna be pissed, like, you know, why did you say that or something? But she was, like, actually said something to the effect of, like, um, I'm actually glad I watched that because it gave me some more perspective on, like, you know, what you were thinking and what you were saying before and, like, how you approached all of that. So, like, you know, I get it. And, um, and, like, thank you and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Uh, like, you know... Uh, I should have, like, talked about that, and I'm like, you know, obviously we discussed this a lot, you know, later on, and I'm like, I recorded this months ago, you know, it's been a while, blah, 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 trying to think of any excuse I could do to deflect. Man, my my brain was going a mile a minute there. That was, like, one of the most embarrassing moments of my entire life. <laughs> so, of course, naturally, I'm talking about it on a fucking run. Uh, right at the end, once again, so hopefully nobody watches this far. Right? Because clearly nobody would watch to the end of a five hour fucking video. That one. Oh, man. I guess it's, it, that is technically not the only time that somebody in one of my videos has, like, heard themselves mentioned. 
Um, but that is one of the only times one of my friends has watched the entire thing and heard themselves mentioned. And especially something like that, where it was like mildly personal. And I think she kind of knew that it was mildly personal and something I probably didn't want her watching, considering the way she phrased it. I still remember all of it, dot, dot, dot. And I'm just like, <laughs> fucking screaming internally. Um... But yeah, I mean, there ended up not being any really amazing resolution to that. Still, like, friends, but, you know, that's about it, right? There's only so much that I can do in that situation. Um, wasn't really sure how to how to keep that going. I think, honestly, I think I handled it pretty maturely. I'm not really sure what else I could have done, all things considered. But, you know, I was, I was nice about it. I, I tried to... Uh, maybe the only thing I shouldn't have done is talked about it on a fucking youtube video but in the end i mean it you know clearly it didn't bother her that much so it could have been worse oh, but yeah um so that that was like one of the most embarrassing moments of my life and it all happened because uh somebody decided to watch my youtube video so who fucking knows you know maybe a few months from now um this other friend will end up watching this youtube video because apparently that's something people do um and uh and maybe I will end up being mortified all over again, and I will have the second most embarrassing moment of my life, or maybe it'll even top it. Who fucking knows? Um, <laughs> I, I hope not, because that, you know... And that's why, like, I almost considered not saying it in the first place. In fact, that was my entire reasoning for not saying it in the first place. And just, I was like, yeah, no, actually, I'm not going to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about, you know, my challenge run format instead. And then I kind of thought, you know, um, fuck it, do it for the content, right? Because if it does happen again, that you know, it, it is a good story, even if it is at my expense, right? <clears throat> but fucking hell. Uh, let me actually focus for this because I want to make sure we're almost at the end. I actually completely forgot this quest existed, because I think whenever I leveled in Voldoon um, on my alts, I never did this general Jekrezek quest, and this probably isn't efficient. I think ideally you probably want to go back now and swap the Zuldazar. I'm just doing this because, like, I felt like it, and I, I actually thought about it. When I saw the quest on the map, I was like, oh yeah, that's actually how the zone ends. I didn't even remember. Like, look at my fucking damage now. Like, every single time, just fucking, oh my god, all the combo points, dude. This is nuts! Fucking, oh, oh, we got buried treasure. All the combo points. Oh, buried treasure. All the combo points. Let's fucking go. I need to heal. I need to heal. No, 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 Yes, I got the kick. Okay. All right. Dispatch. Nope, 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 nope. Night, just DPS. Cloak of Shadows! Come on. Are the- all the NBCs are dead? What the fuck? What? Alright, thankfully res sickness, uh, was only a minute. I guess they changed that at some point, so... Could be worse. Could definitely be worse. Um, I could just, like, not do that quest again, because that was kind of bullshit and a little bit soul-crushing, not gonna lie. Uh, but at this point, like, it's personal. That fucking General Jack Reset motherfucker, that he's going down. Uh, but first, I need to make sure I repair my gear, because I did have to take res sickness, because there absolutely is no fucking chance I'm running all the way down here, all the way into the cave, and then resing. Fuck that noise. Um, so I was actually just ready to pause the timer and come back in 30 minutes or whenever res sickness falls off. I guess it is only a minute now, which is nice. I Yeah, they changed that in a patch at some point, which is good. Um, but anyways, I'm going to fly down here. I'm going to get to level 58 because I'm almost there, and then I'll attempt General Jack Rosette again. Oh, that it's like he just destroys the NPCs and then just starts blasting me. And, like, puts down the totems. That That's actually a surprisingly hard questing fight. Um, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that, like, you know, if this was a challenge run, I'd love to do that. But when I'm sitting here mindlessly telling funny stories, it's not a really the kind of thing that I want to have to focus on. 
Uh, I, can I get any, like, gear here? I, d I doubt they sell repairs. Yeah. Not really much at all. Um. Okay, there's one quest here, it looks like. And then... I guess I do this, the Jack Reset one, and then I probably just go back, and I, I'm missing my Darkman Fair buff, which kind of sucks. Is what it is. Uh, you know, accept the things you cannot change, etc., etc. There's no way I'm getting this video out till like 5 p.m. at this rate, which means I probably won't be able to do much Mythic Plus testing today, but that's how it goes. <sighs> All right. Come on. Speed it up. I got a video to edit. This is, like, some long RP. I'm like, yeah, I've kind of run out of fucking talking points. That that General Jack Rosette shit really fucking took the wind out of my sails, not gonna lie. Oh, there's multiple quests here. Okay. These give good experience? 1,000? Not really. Um, but they're probably breadcrumb quests. Oh, yeah, one of these leads to the undead port. I forgot about that subzone. Yeah, there's the whole undead little port area there. Um, yep. Yeah. I think, yeah, this is, this is one of the breadcrumbs. I don't really want to do these quests, to be honest. Uh, I'm just, I'm ready to be done with this run, honestly. I was hoping Voldoon alone would get me there, but it clearly hasn't, and I'm just like, I'm just so over it. Ugh. I can also just get, at this point, like, really easy experience in Zuldazar, so. Mm. Let's see. Uh, I'll have to stealth all the way back. Tiptoe around. Tiptoe, tiptoe. I can grappling hook and stealth, right? Well, fuck it. Did, why does it keep doing that? That is so troll. Uh, all right. Attempt number two. Fucking General Jackrafuck. Alright, let's go. Let's go. Second time you won't be so lucky. Now I know I need to actually really focus. Can you jump in this pit? Okay, good. You can't. That would have been a fucking dumb way to die. But had to be tested for science. Alright. Go, 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 go. Adrenaline rush. Uh, pistol shot. Make sure I use my heal on cooldown. Oh shit, I fucked that up. Okay. Refresh roll the bones. I probably shouldn't refresh roll the bones immediately. I could probably wait for a little bit. Okay, the Sanguine Ward. I'm gonna try to cleave off it. I don't know if that's gonna help at all. Reroll, roll the bones. There. Full hit. Drink my little thingy. Alright, stab. Fan the hammer. Stab. Stab. Fan the hammer. Blast him. Oh, buried treasure! Oh, let's go. Okay. This is it. This is it. This is it. I can fuck him up now. Oh, that's so many combo points. Sanguine Ward. And a Blade Flurry here. Oh, nice. I got a good roll of bones. I probably should have kept it just to guarantee buried treasure, because that's, like, really good in most of my damage. Need to make sure I heal. Uh, I'm gonna get... pick the next one that he does. Oh no, Sanguine Ward. Okay. I need to kill this really quick. Kick. 
Roll the bones. Dispatch. Fan the hammer. Dispatch. Plasma lightning. Oh, I can't do much about that. There we go. God, I fucking... I love fan the hammer. This shit is so good. Whoa, that's loud. What? It's still going. <laughs> General Jackerset dies really loudly. Uh, informing the horde, speak with Bane Bloodhoof. Okay, so now it's just sending me back. All right. Uh, new talent point available. So at this point, I should uh, go here and head back to Org and. Let's see, I'll grab a few more Darkmoon quest items, because I have to do that anyways. Um, there's no good way to get back to BFA from Mulgore, honestly. I'm just going to kind of have to... I don't really think there is any great way to, to deal with that. The call for allies. Does that give any experience? 975. That's not good. Uh, let's check the AH real quick. Uh, 2,000 gold. I should have enough to get all of the remaining quest items. Let me see what I... Um, world events, Darkmoon Affair, I'm missing Imbued Crystal, let's see, Darkmoon, Darkmoon to Spoilers, I'm missing Imbued Crystal, Soothsayer's Runes, I can just put that on tracking, right? And, um, here, Voldoon, Abandon All Quests, yeah, there we go, right. Uh, so, Adventurer's Journal, let's just do Journal. Uh, Fallen... Oh, that's a fucking lot of money. Banner of the Fallen. Banner of the... F fuck me. Uh, Soothsay. <laughs> okay. Captured. Insignia. Jesus fucking Christ. Imbued Crystal? Alright, well, that's not too expensive. Um... Journal. Fallen Adventurer's Journal. Do I have enough for one more? Uh, I think... Banner of the Fallen. Uh, Banner of the Fallen is 1,000. So I have enough for three of the quest items. Uh, could be worse, I suppose. And... How do I want to get back after the fact? Like, honestly, it could be argued that it might be faster to just, like, go to Zuldazar and do quests there. Honestly, but, like... I don't know. I want to be lazy. I want to just go to Darkmoon Fair. Ah. <sighs> I just want to, to go here, have a chill end to the run, just cruise in to the end. I'll have to stop right before I hit uh, 60, remember? Because, you know, don't want to disable Chromie time in this account. So we'll grab the 10% buff, and then fastest way back would probably just be... Um, What's it called? I think I still just need to fly there. It really, there, yeah, there really isn't any better way. I think we've already gone through this process, and I'm just like, yeah. I guess maybe getting Dollar on Hearthstone for Dark, like if Darkman Fair is active, maybe it is worth getting Dollar on Hearthstone. Just because the amount of time it would have taken me to do the Legion. Legion intro at this point, I probably would have saved it from all the time I've had to spend running back and forth. So, eh, kind of balances out, I guess. It's not the end of the world. I think... Have I unlocked Volpera on this account now, as a result? Uh, I unlocked High Mountain Tarin by doing um, a High Mountain on one of my other characters. There we go. Alright, got those three. Yeah, it's a decent chunk of experience. And then, um, could I, can I do anything in the garrison? Is there any easy way? I think, honestly, the easier way would still just be flying to Orgrimmar. Yeah. Because my garrison hearth doesn't have a portal there until it gets upgraded to rank 3. Which, I wish it had a portal at rank 1 at this point. It would just make the garrison hearthstone so much more useful. Um... But yeah, not a ton I can do. 
I actually didn't end up buying any goblin gliders or anything like that. Like, I guess technically speaking, in a sense, I did what a lot of people were asking me to do and I didn't use consumables. So, like, I guess I did end up doing a no gun shoes, no goblin glider run. I still recommend using it, right? Because it's, it's still really cheap. The only thing here is if I have to allocate my gold between, like, green BOEs, Darkmoon Fair quest items, and goblin gliders and gun shoes... Uh, I'm gonna prioritize green BOEs and then Goblin Gl or, uh, and then Darkman Fair quest items because if we're talking about what saves more time, honestly, that does save more time. You know, I like Goblin Gliders and Gun Shoes, and they're nice to have, but the amount of time they save in the long run is not better compared to like greens. At least greens, if you don't have heirlooms, right? If you have heirlooms, then most of the time, greens aren't going to be a massive benefit to have. They're just going to be, like, a little minor bonus. Maybe for, like, some of the other slots, right? But it is more significant at this point when you have, like, a ton of slots that are really falling behind. Because a lot of times you will end up in a position where, like, one or two of your slots are just complete garbage and have absolutely nothing in it. And, um, that feels bad. But it's like, you know, if the rest of your slots have been constantly caught up or have, like, enchanted heirlooms, it kind of balances out. But if you have multiple slots that are just garbage and the rest of your gear is only, like, mediocre quest drops, then, yeah, it really feels bad. I guess, like, now that I'm almost at the end, we're in, like, the final stretch, final, like, 15 minutes or so, maybe I can give, like, a, a little retrospective on how I think this run went and stuff. Because, obviously, this is something that people have been asking me to do for a while. And, well, you know, it is what it is, right? It's, uh, it, I, like, we all kind of knew what this was going in. You, you fucking uh, sadistic bastards voted for Rogue for a reason, right? Like, you know, I, I know what you're up to. There's a reason I put it on the poll. I know you guys like to watch me suffer. So... Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I absolutely know that that's the reason people voted for Rogue. A few people tried to save me. They tried to vote Enhancement Shaman. I snuck Enhancement Shaman onto that poll on a technicality that it technically isn't something that I had run, which would have been much better. Enhancement Shaman is self-healing, has a lot of good AoE. Enhancement Shaman would have been nice. I would have been cruising through this leveling process. Even though I, I don't play Enhancement Shaman a lot, but I know enough about it to know that it, it would be infinitely better than Rogue for the leveling process when I've had to rely on nothing but, like, Crimson Vial and Pomegranates. I sustain. But, I mean, all that being said, as much as I thought I was going to absolutely hate it, I've only hit points of despair, like, three, four times during this run, which I think is an improvement. Um, you know, when I did the Mage run... Uh, I'm messing around with a, a paper cup, by the way. I think I just accidentally popped that into the mic. My copy, coffee cup words. Um, but, like, when I did the mage run way back in the day, you know, that was pure suffering. That was just, like, that was torture porn right there. I, I was constantly miserable. I had to split that thing up into four different parts because I just could not finish it. Um, one of the, my first ever YouTube videos, it was, I think, the third YouTube video I ever uploaded was I tried speedrunning World of Warcraft's worst category. And it was something kind of like this, except I did it on a Protection Paladin, and that one took like a little over 10 hours, I think. Um, it was a little bit easier because it was a prop pally, so it's like, honestly, a prop pally, even with like absolute dog shit gear like this, is still a prop pally. They still fuck, right? So, you know, that's how it goes. Um, but that one was pretty miserable. And especially that one, I wasn't conditioned to doing long stuff like this. But, you know, I gotta prepare myself for the inevitable Final Fantasy main story quest speedrun, which I will be doing, mark my words. I've been I've been saying that for like three years now, but it's gonna happen. Uh, especially now that they have uh, trust support for all of those dungeons. One of the main reasons I absolutely refuse to do the MSQ speedrun is the RNG on dungeons, because... Q time RNG and player RNG is fucking bullshit. But at this point, you can pretty much do the entire Final Fantasy MSQ solo. Like, even solo with, like, the, the trust groups and stuff and dungeons. So you don't need to rely on anybody else but yourself. And that, oh, that is appealing to me. That's the type of thing that I'm willing to actually invest time into learning. Um, but that is still a 12-hour run at the world record time. Which is, 
longer than I've been recording now, and unlike this current recording, where I guess maybe I shouldn't... I mean, I could speak to Princess Talanji and get free experience, right? Can't hurt. Um, where's the quest that I'm missing? Zolani? I guess up top, probably. And I have to reload to fix this thing again. Uh, yeah, the, the, unlike this run, where I get to take multiple breaks in the middle, the, uh, the Final Fantasy run would have to be in one sitting, and I would have to be focused for the entire 13 hours, which... Or 12 hours, or however long it is, which... I don't know, that sounds... That sounds like a special kind of hell. Uh, but I'm gonna try it eventually. I think the other thing, though, about the Final Fantasy speedrun is, like, I would definitely be, like, more engaged doing that. Because even if it is a Realm Reborn, like, there are still good boss fights and there's still, like, you know, a lot of cool stuff that I could do to speed up the process. And, you know, I would be playing a class that I am comfortable with. I think with a long run like this, the main thing that has made this difficult is the fact that I'm playing, you know, a class that I'm not super comfortable with. So there's been a lot of times where I would have to stop and, like, really focus. But if I'm doing, I would probably do the Final Fantasy MSQ speedrun on, like, Paladin or Warrior, both of which I've played a shit ton, and I'm very, very, very comfortable with, so, like, should be easy. Uh, Warrior isn't, like, completely face roll at lower levels, so I would have to somewhat focus, but at least wouldn't be too bad. I would know what I'm doing. I'd probably go Paladin, though, which might be a little bit trickier, but, like, especially for dungeons, block makes a lot of the large trash bowls really easy. Eh, we'll see. Um, but for stuff like this, I think the main thing that I want to discuss is kind of the format going forward. So, I wanted to, at the very least, do one full run all the way through uh, the entire process of... Obviously, there's been a decent amount of editing here, right? So, you know, it is what it is. It, it is physically impossible. If I did this entire thing with zero editing, I could not upload this to YouTube. Like I said before, 10 hours... Uh, that is the limit. Um, I don't really want to do these quests, actually. I'm gonna go do the ones up here. <laughs> I just came all the way down here, I know, but... Um... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I, I physically could not upload this, so I'm gonna have to shave, like... I don't even know how I'm gonna shave four hours off this run. It's actually gonna be really fucking difficult, um... Which is why it's going to take me a while to, to get all this stuff done. Uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah. Really thinking about that. I, I, I need to just not think about that. Because, like, when I do put thoughts into that, it just makes me go into, like, a whole different other realm of despair. Thinking about all the editing I'm going to have to do for this. Um, but that's how it goes. Uh, but, yeah, I, I need to shave, like, roughly four hours off this video. <laughs> Because I need to shave bare minimum two to even get it uploaded to YouTube, but I need to shave realistically four to make it so YouTube doesn't, like, fail in the processing. Because for whatever reason, I don't know why they say they can take ten hour long videos when they clearly can't. If you try to upload anything past eight hours, you're just risking the entire thing, like, imploding. Um, you know. It would be nice, or it would have been nice if I had gotten a warning about that the first time. At this point, I'm kind of at least accustomed to it. I know that that's how that goes. Wait, this quest sucks too. Fuck this. I'm not doing that quest. I forgot how garbage Zuldasar is. Actually, yeah, fuck this zone. Um, definitely would rather do uh, Vol'dun over this any day. Um, we'll try this quest line. I think I remember this quest line not being quite as bad, but who knows. It's also just I'm in a mindset of like right now, I just don't want to do anything more. I want to be done. I was hoping Voldoon would be, like, my freedom, and it's just not, and now I'm just, like, suffering, because I'm like, oh god, I have to still do more of this fucking questline. No, just get me out. Um, alright, yeah, this is fine. Fuck it. Uh, okay, there's a quest here, and what I need to do, ounces of soul, fuel for the whatever... All right, I can do that. Um, but yeah, I think going forward, I am not going to be doing the... Ooh, that's a lot of buffs. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to be doing the full runs uh, all the way from, like, 1 to 60, because it, it's already a pain in the ass to record all of this stuff and try to think of entertaining things to talk about the entire way through. It's really difficult. Uh, so... 
doing that on top of like you know having to do all the editing after the fact and whatnot it, it, it's rough is what i'm trying to say so i think the format that i'll be using going forward is at least for the for the alliance run and potentially another horde run i do which i may or may not do um this felt pretty conclusive i could definitely refine this a little bit but i'm gonna be completely real here i'm not super interested in refining this route I want to get enough testing done to the point where, like, I can make a guide that will work for new players, right? But the reality is, you know, this is something that even new players are going to use once, and then they're going to use my regular leveling guide, right? So my regular leveling guide is a much more important thing to do, like, extensive testing on to make sure it's really good. This is kind of like, I want to at least have something working where I can say, like, yeah, new players, use this guide. This will teach you, like, what you need to know to level on your first way through um and i think so far what i showed here is serviceable for that and you know I, I wanted to at least give the entire thing showcase to people i think more importantly that you don't need to do bfa the entire way through that you can do the whole non chromie time old world zones that is something that works because a lot of people just don't realize that um but going forward right you get it. You get that this works. It's not, you know, complicated. You understand how the zones scale and whatnot. Um, we've gone through that already. You don't need me to explain to you once again that for Alliance, surprise, you can do um, uh, Lock Modan and Duskwood. The only thing for Alliance I might do... What I might do is I might record, like, a little section at the beginning showcasing the order in which you want to do the zones. Because one of the other things is I recommend doing Lock Mode On at level 40. But obviously, I've said before, Lock Mode On is one of the most efficient zones in the game. So, as you might imagine, you're going to want to do Lock Mode On before level 40. Because even though it is faster at level 40 with flying, it is still faster than Duskwood, um... Uh, let me let me do this poll. This might be a little bit tricky uh, because I need to blade flurry. Ooh, come on! My damage is fucking crazy now. Yeah, Outlaw Rogue when it has all of its shit is like wild. Still, really fucking squishy. Like my health is just a fucking seesaw. But I was able to shred those three mobs really, really nicely. Um, so I like this. This feels good. Um, it's just a shame that their survivability is so low. I don't really know if Blizzard can do something about that while leveling. Feels like it, it could probably use a nice little bump. I push this guy into the pot, right? Shoulder ch Yeah, you push him into the pot. I remember that. Uh, it's been a while since I've done these quests. Uh... But yeah, uh, what's it called? What I might do is just explain how that works. Like, I won't show all of Lock Mode on, but the, I'll at the very least say something to the effect of like, hey, you know, if you want to, um, uh, if you want to level through these zones, this is the order you should do it. I haven't really figured out how I want to handle that yet. Uh, what I'll probably do is, um, do a little bit of testing. Uh, obviously, you want to do the entirety of Lock Mode on, but I think you would probably start Lock Mode on at level 20 because there is still a decent amount of running. So I think you would do something to the effect of like, I don't know how you would handle it. Maybe like Red Ridge into Duskwood and then you would abandon Duskwood ASAP or maybe you just start Duskwood, honestly. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I, I might have people do that. I might have people start off in Duskwood or something like that. And then uh, you do Duskwood up until like a certain point, and then when it starts to get really inefficient, then you swap to Lock Mode On. I'll figure it out. I'll, that'll obviously be in the Alliance video, but I'll probably include like a blurb at the start, maybe like 30 minutes showcasing like that entire thing. Uh, and the main part of the Alliance run, whenever I get around to it, which mind you probably won't be anytime super soon, just because I have all of these other videos that I need to record, uh, but when I do get around to it, it would mostly be from level 40 onwards. It would showcase the BFA stuff, uh, how to do all of that, and all of the stuff that is exclusive to the fresh account part of the run. Do I... Okay, kick, yeah. Well, like here, you know, 
technically speaking, Silver Pine and Hillsbrad were nothing new. It was mostly BFA that was new stuff. Um, so, eh. What the? Oh, did I, like, barely miss time? Oh, yeah, I barely missed time that. Oh, well. Uh, where is Zul? Does he... Oh, he just takes time to run. Alright. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to continue along with the Zul quests for now. I feel like these ones, I vaguely remember them being good. Obviously, like, one quest at a time is bad. Um, so this isn't great. But... I mean, this isn't too bad if I just need to kill one mob and then... Oh yeah, there's a third quest. So it is like three quests at a time. Th that's like standard. I think if you have three quests at a time, that's like enough for it to be considered decent by most standards. And I don't feel too bad because I'm killing things relatively quickly at the moment. Especially with Fan the Hammer. God, that feels so good. If I get all those procs. And right now with Buried Treasure proc. Ooh. Oh my god, that's just an immediate... Fan the hammer into between the eyes into fan the hammer. Oh, that was only a single shot. All right, still really good. God. The animation is cool too, where you just like fire off a bunch of pistol shots all at once. I dig it. Maybe I will play rogue more. That said, I don't have a max level rogue, so if I were to play rogue more, I would have to um, I would have to level it uh, or swap it to like my main account or something because. You know, I'm using this account for testing purposes, but obviously if I'm actually going to play the game, it wouldn't be on this particular account. I would want it to be on my main one. Uh, let me stealth here, and then we can exit stealth, and then do ambush, ambush, ambush. Ooh. And then... Ooh, that, that is... It, it is just so nice, just immediately getting all those fucking... Sh just fuck it! Ooh! Just deleted that guy. Alright. Let me just Crimson Vial to top myself off real quick. I can... What do I do? This Mind Slaves. I have to be close to them. So I can do that. And then break these guys out. There we go. I think I killed the other ones. Maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. Um... Yeah, let me go free these guys, because I do this, and then that would complete the quest. Yep, yeah, alright. I think I accidentally killed the first three. So, oops. And then I have to get these Gemboni stockpiles. Uh, I'll stealth open on this guy like that. Buried treasure, let's go. Oh wait, these are Mind Slave guys. Technically, I could have broken them out. Oh, never mind. The Berserkers are here to help me out. Here's the treasure... Treasure chest. Is that in this hut? Treasure chest is... Right there. Ah, oh, it's like hidden along the wall. And then this should get me to 59. I'm gonna go at least a little bit into 59, because I don't want to, like, stop immediately. But I also want to be really careful, because, like, I'm, I'm not going to go right up against, like, one bar left, because if I do that, then I might risk, like, getting exploration XP and, like, fucking myself over. And that would be really, really, really bad. I don't want that to happen. Uh, Count the odds requires level 60, then why the fuck can I put a point in it right now? Stupid game. Um, Alright. Um, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, I think pretty much covered everything. So future runs would be like that. I mean, if you would want to watch that type of run, like, let's say somebody were to say, I guess I feel like enough people would be interested in watching that that I don't really need to ask. But, like, if that is a format that you would enjoy watching for future runs, it's probably what I'm going to do anyway, just because I think it's, you know, in the interest of time, it's like the best option for me to do. Um... So, it's not like I would really change anything, but I guess if that is something that you would be interested in watching, just like the 40 to 60 alliance side of things, only that, just to show how the route changes, and of course it would still include commentary and stuff, uh, let me know. More so just that I know that people would actually be interested in watching that, and I wouldn't be wasting my time. I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to die... Ooh. 
I need to I need to vanish. I'm gonna die if I keep fighting. Um mm. Yeah, I just gotta heal up here. Don't want to lose my Darkman Fair buff. That would just be a fucking shitty way to end the run with just one more death. And what do I need to do? The Urn of Voices adjusted. Can I do Distract Sap? Fuck, well, I still got into combat. Potion swapped. Blind you. And then turn in the quest. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember this quest. I'll do this one, maybe one or two more, just to get the bar up to, like, here. And then you can just add, like, I don't know, two, three minutes onto the end of the run. And that would be how long it takes. Twelve hours, all in all. Long run. Uh, expectable time, I guess. This is kind of what you would expect for something like this. Especially not being able to level through the really fast zones, but could have been worse, I think. But if people were expecting it to take less time than this, I know I'm going to get a bunch of people like in the comment section like, ha ha ha, I knew it. Uh, you're, you can't actually level in three hours, even though I've literally done it before. Just because like, you know, ah, uh, but what, without all your fancy consumables, it takes you like, you know, 12 additional hours. And, you know, I knew that your runs were fake or whatever. I, I don't know. I just, it's one of the reasons why I don't love doing this stuff, because a lot of people, instead of actually watching the run and understanding why things take, you know, the amount of time they do, they just like fucking spew their idiotic thoughts into the comment section. And it's just a fucking pain in the ass to deal with I like, could just ignore it I probably should just ignore it uh but yeah turn to King Rastakhan oh, and then I can turn in one or two more quests probably do like false prophecies and so how much does this give this gives oh barely any XP okay so that's like nothing I should at least do Maybe, how, how much does the flight to Nazmir give? Also, barely anything. Eh. I'll see what the follow-up quest from this one is. I don't think it is anything. I think it's just going to send me to do uh, the other little subzones. Which, honestly, I might just end it here, right? Like, we all know that this would just take another 5-10 minutes tops to get, like, three bars of experience. I would do, like, four quests, and then I would ding. Um, but, you know, we gotta stop here, so... I don't want to risk it, I don't want to, like, miscalculate and hit 60 and, like, fuck myself for the future, and honestly, I'm just kind of okay getting five more minutes of rest before I have to work on editing this stuff. So, back to King Rastakhan, and then, yeah, the follow-up would be to go somewhere here. So we're just gonna stop the timer here. We know it takes a little over 12 hours. Um, that's the end of the run. Hopefully I manage to edit this to not be completely unwatchable. And I'm going to try to just, like, stop now before I make editing even longer. Because, like, let's say I talk for another 10 minutes. Then I, I'm going to have an even more difficult time getting all of this stuff together. So, uh, so yeah. Um, you know, hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, I, I hope that uh, some of my rants weren't a bit too crazy this time. And, you know, it, I, I hope you're looking forward to the challenge run. Because... You know, it's not going to be for a while. I still have a lot of work to put into it. I need to figure out how to code Lua, right? Like, I'm, I could probably build it in Unity, the thing that I have planned. But, you know, I, I want to make it an actual add-on that you can download. That would be the plan. So, you know, hopefully you're looking forward to that. I hope it's going to turn out as well as I have planned. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video, which will probably be in two days. And we'll cover all of the Aberus bosses, assuming the run later tonight doesn't go completely sideways. So thanks for watching again, and peace.